Hello guys, how are you all doing? So, hi Kishore, how are you? Vanilla, hi. So, I hope everyone is doing great. So today uh, we shall be we shall we shall wait for a few minutes, right? And then we shall uh, dive into the topics. Okay. So today, as you all know, I'm fine. Thank you so much, Atar. Thank you so much, Ankit. Hello. So today, what we shall be doing is that we shall be discussing the complete rapid review race on the microbiology. Okay. Before I start, before I start exactly entering into the topics and all, I just want to tell you that few um, few days are left for you, right? For your FMG exam, all of you know that. So right now, right now, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yes, definitely you can. So right now, what I'm telling you is that don't study anything which is new. Okay, so this is my personal request guys, don't study anything which is new. Right now, it is a crucial time for you to just revise the things which you have studied. Okay, if you didn't study, then purely and purely take the basis of the rapid revisions, completely depend upon the rapid revisions. Okay, so within the rapid revisions, most of the questions will be repeated because these are the rapid revisions which are made from the previous year sessions by all the faculties. Okay, and if you ask me personally, what subjects I have to be perfect, right, to definitely pass the exam, the four major subjects you need to be perfect is surgery, medicine, OBGY, PSM. Okay, so if you are really perfect with these four subjects, then definitely I'm telling you, you are going to pass the exam. And this is the truth. Okay, sir, so Baki subjects, I'm not telling you not to study the remaining subjects or I'm not telling you leave away the remaining subjects. I'm telling you, be perfect in these four subjects and start revising the remaining subjects as well. Now in the radiology, you won't study the theory. What you will study? You will study the image based questions. In uh, dermatology, right, there will be theory based questions, but mostly you will see image based questions. Right? Now when it comes to medicine, mostly theory based questions are seen. So that is what I'm telling you and and one one more important thing I want to tell you is that daily from today onwards daily spend one hour for images usually spend one hour in the night for images daily one hour whatever subject you want you just pick it up daily one hour for images I'm telling you most of the images will be covered and by the time the exam comes most of the images will be finished off okay okay so I will I will also tell you uh, thank you so much, Hermit. Thank you so much. I will also tell you uh, what is a preparation strategy. Okay. So in the last few days, how to prepare, what subjects you need to focus and what topics you need to focus also I will tell you. Now when it comes to sources of images, sources of images guys, my personal experience, hai, right? I, I, many students told me this thing, right? Uh, you know that there is a website called Radiopedia. There is a website called as Radiopedia. So most of the questions, right, they will be repeated. The image based questions, mainly the X-ray, CT scans and all, they will be repeated from the Radiopedia itself. They are directly picking up from Radiopedia and putting in the exam. Most of them, not all of them. So whenever you are studying any pathology, okay, so what you do is that you search for that particular X-ray or CT or MRI within that Radiopedia. So whatever it is, let us start the session. I will tell you everything about that. So regarding microbiology, guys, we are going to cover the entire microbiology right now. And most mostly it would take around four hours, four to five hours to finish up the entire microbiology. But one thing I can guarantee you, honestly, I'm telling you that once after, if, if you remember each and everything that I have taught you in this four to five hours of the session, if the ratio is around 14 to 15 questions in the exam, definitely more than 10 questions will be asked from the things which I'm teaching you today. So it all depends upon you, how well you remember, how well you cram the things, how well you keep it up in your mind. Okay. So again, uh, once the exam is done, we will even have a recall session and I will tell you how many questions got repeated from this. Okay. So, and regarding the PDF, Sana is asking the PDF. Regarding the PDF, today Sunday, hai, so there is no one to edit in the office. But most probably by tomorrow, I will send you the PDF in the group. Okay, in the Telegram group. So, chalo, shuru karte abhi. 
ऑल ऑफ यू आर रेडी नाउ एवरी वन ये सो नो एंड दैट्स वॉट आई टोल्ड ओसामा शेख एंड एंड वन मोर थिंग आइज माइक्रो मतलब आई डि नॉट ओनली इंक्लूड माइक्रो हियर माइक्रो के साथ मैंने पैथोलॉजी इंटीग्रेट किया आई हैव इंटीग्रेटेड रेडियोलॉजी ऑल्सो आई हैव इंटीग्रेटेड फार्माकोलॉजी एंड मेडिसिन एंड डर्माटोलॉजी ऑल दिस फाइव सब्जेक्ट्स ऑल्सो आई हैव इंटीग्रेटेड विद इन दिस माइक्रो बायोलॉजी सो दैट इट वुड बी लाइक अ रिविजन फॉर यू इफ यू हैव स्टडीड दो सब्जेक्ट्स ठीक है चलो लेट स्टार्ट लेट स्टार्ट फर्स्ट इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग वी शेल बी डिस्कसिंग इज द स्टेनिंग मेथड्स ठीक है द फर्स्ट इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग वी शेल बी डिस्कसिंग इज द staining methods now regarding regarding the staining methods there are two different types of staining now all of you just look here whenever you want to stain any bacteria pehle kya karte ho what will you do in the starting you take a agar plate you throw the bacteria into that now you will put a microscope and you look at the bacteria will you able be will you be able to study the bacteria no why because the bacteria keeps on moving hai na तो मुझे क्या करना चाहिए वॉट हैव टू डू इज दैट आई हैव टू फिक्स द बैक्टीरिया डाउन टू द अगर प्लेट कैसे फिक्स करना है बाय मेथड कॉल्ड एज फिक्सेशन सो द फर्स्ट स्टेप इन स्टेनिंग मेथड इज योर फिक्सेशन हाउ विल यू फिक्स दो तरीके वन इज यू हीट दैट पेट्री डिश राइट यू टेक दैट अगर प्लेट यू हीट दैट अगर प्लेट बाय दैट यू कैन फिक्स दैट इज कॉल्ड एज हीट फिक्सेशन और दूसरा क्या है वॉट यू डू इज दैट यू विल ऑल्सो एड मिथेनॉल एंड फिक्स द बैक्टीरिया so how many types of fixation are there heat fixation and methanol fixation so this is the basic thing which we do for all the stains okay and uh, and yeah i will also tell you i will also tell you what are the mcqs that were previously asked and what mcqs will be asked also i will tell you in this so look at the types of stains guys how many different types of stains we have got we have got three different types of stains okay how many types of stains we have got we have got three different types of stains now simple differential as well as special for example if for looking a bacteria right to study a bacteria if i am using only one color isko bolte hai simple stain to look at a bacteria if i am using more than one color it is called as a differential stain agar a bacteria vitera kuch bhi nahi i wanted to look at the flagella i wanted to look at the spores i wanted to look at the metachromatic granules hai na these are all the special structures to look at the special structures you use special staining okay so the first important thing is within this simple stain you use only one stain in differential you use more than one stain and in special you use this first looking at special structures okay स्पेशल स्ट्रक्चर्स क्या हो सकता है वॉट इड आई टेल यू वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट स्पोर्स हो सकता है स्पोर्स कैन बी द स्पेशल स्ट्रक्चर्स और द सेकेंड इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग इज फ्लैजला इफ आई वॉन्टेड टू लुक एट ए फ्लैजला एंड थर्ड इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग इज मेटाक्रोमैटिक ग्रैन्यूल्स मेटाक्रोमैटिक ग्रैन्यूल्स मेटाक्रोमैटिक ग्रैन्यूल्स ओके you know guys previously there was in an exam i don't remember the date but in that exam they asked metachromatic granules are composed of what metachromatic granules are composed of phosphate this is a very important question so metachromatic granules are composed of phosphate they are phosphate rich okay now what did i tell you i told you simple stain matlab only one stain uh guys i'll come back to you i'll come back to you in a minute i'll read all your comments so let me teach in the starting here so only one stain one stain matlab only one color either i use methylene stain which is violet color or i use saffronine stain which is pink color but i don't use both of them if i use both of them then what stain it is called it is called as a differential stain now look at this look at this and tell me is this a simple stain or differential stain very fast if this exactly if this image comes in the exam will you tell it as a simple stain or will you tell it as a uh, differential stain very very fastly viris thank you so much be fast guys very good very good so this 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 is your simple stain this is your simple stain why because there is only one color over here okay right now if you look at these simple stains simple stains are in turn divided into three different types 
one is called basic stain one is called acidic stain one is called as neutral stain how do you remember remember by a mnemonic ban okay basic stain acidic stain and neutral stain basic me i use a basic color basic color kya ho sakta hai green blue black hai na so basic color which i use over here is methylene blue what is this basic color methylene blue now you might get a question you might get a question that this methylene blue right you use this methylene blue to look at which bacteria we use this methylene blue to look at two bacteria one is called as streptococcus pneumonia one is called as streptococcus pneumonia another one is called as bacillus anthracis another one is called as bacillus anthracis so these are the two important things streptococcus pneumonia as well as bacillus anthracis so if you are using methylene blue for streptococcus pneumonia you call that medium as low flux medium if you are using methylene blue to look at bacillus anthracis you call that as polychrome medium okay good evening good evening daniel that is called as polychrome medium right so this is all you need to know about the basic stains now once the basic stains are done the next important stain we shall be discussing is the acidic stain of the simple variant okay now coming to the acidic stains how do you remember these acidic stains for example let us say uh, unfortunately okay you acid fell on your hand okay if acid fell on your hand will you leave it like that or will you care that wound you have to care that wound a lot so what i'm trying to tell you is that within this acidic stain use the mnemonic care okay use the mnemonic care now what do you mean by care c stands for congo red what does c stand for c stands for congo red a stands for acid fusion a stands for acid fusion so c stands for congo red a stands for acid fusion and r stands for rose bengal what does r stand for it stands for rose bengal and e stands for eosin so if you remember these these are very very easy so what is congo red congo red is an acidic simple stain rose bengal acidic simple stain methylene blue it is a basic simple stain clear all of you right now after discussing basic or acidic khatam ho gaya hai na abhi agla last one what is the thing the last one is your neutral stain now guys how do you remember this neutral stain how do you remember this neutral stains how do you remember this neutral stain is that you see in the medicine we have a branch that stands by name neu neu matlab kya neuro hai na ro matlab kya romanovsky stain what are the two types of romanovsky stain you have got one is called as a right and gimsa stain very good one is called as a right as well as gimsa stain so these are the two different types of stains which we have got so we are done we are done with the simple stains i want you to remember the examples of these simple stains clear all of you everyone is clear so far right perfectly clear can i move on to the next one very good thank you now after the simple stain is done the next important stain we shall do is that differential stain why are you calling it as differential stain kyunki isme we use two colors okay what are the two colors we'll see but there are two important examples of differential stain ek hoga the famous gram staining and the next one is called as gil niesel staining okay or zeden staining so there are two differential stains one is called as gram staining and niesel staining okay now in the exam in the exam they are going to ask you very very important questions over here so this is an exam asking thing very 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 important okay very very important i want you to remember the differences between the gram stain and gil niesel stain what are the ingredients we use over here and there okay now any stain you take there will be primary stain there is something called as mordant i will tell you what is that there is something called as decolorizer and finally we have got a counter stain okay so yahan pe primary stain jo hai first color counter stain jo hai second color we are using more than two colors that is why we are calling it as differential stain now when it comes to gram staining the first the primary stain which we use over here anyone any idea 
जी एम स्टेन जी एम स्टेन ऐसे याद रखो जी मतलब क्या होगा जेंटियन वॉयलेट जी स्टैंड फॉर वॉट जी स्टैंड फॉर जेंटियन वॉयलेट एंड एम स्टैंड फॉर वॉट मिथाइल वॉयलेट वेरी गुड मिथाइल वॉयलेट जो भी है जेंटियन वॉयलेट मिथाइल वॉयलेट है ना वॉट एवर इट इज इट इज वॉयलेट कलर नाउ वॉट इज द मॉर्डेंट यू यूज मॉर्डेंट यहां पर क्या यूज करते हो आयोडिन सोल्यूशन द मॉर्डेंट विच आई यूज इज आयोडिन सोल्यूशन सर मॉर्डेंट क्या होता है वॉट इज अ मॉर्डेंट इन द सेंस यू हैव टेकन बैक्टीरिया हियर है ना पहले एक कलर एड किया आइदर जेंटियन वॉयलेट और मिथाइल वॉयलेट Now you want to fix this color to the bacteria, है ना? If the uh, color has to fix to the bacteria, if the dye has to fix to the bacteria, I will use a solution called as mordant. So just write in the bracket here for your sake. It fixes the dye to the bacteria. It fixes the dye to the bacteria. Very good, Arbaz Khan. Perfectly right. Next. After that, the next important thing we use is decolorizer. This is all the time asked. Very, very, very important question. ये याद रखो. What is the decolorizer which we use over here? Either we use ethyl alcohol, ethyl alcohol, or you call it as a acetone. Okay. So these are the things which we use in case of decolorizer. And finally, the counter strain. क्या use करते हो? फिर से violet use करोगा? Will you use violet again for the counter stain? No, I will use another color that is called as saffronin. Either I use saffronin, either I use saffronin, or I use carbol fusion. Either I use saffronin or I use carbol fusion. ठीक है? But in the exam, what they ask you is that most commonly कौन सा dye use करते हो? The most commonly used dye is Saffronin. This is the most commonly used dye. Clear, all of you. Everyone is clear, right? So till here, all of you are clear. Now we'll go into the differences, right? Now, so gram strain, iodine solution, ethyl alcohol, restaurant saffronin, as well as carbol fusion. Now, when it comes to the zeal nation staining, things are completely different. things how how the things are different over here the first important thing what is the primary stain that is used in zeal nation staining that is carbol fusion that is carbol fusion and carbol fusion will promote which color that is the pink color carbol fusion will promote this dye will promote pink color now what is a mordant pehle hum to iodine use kiya ab yahan pe kya use karna chahiye what is a mordant you have to use over here that is your heat simply you heat the thing very good very good stv right perfect simply you heat the apparatus and obviously the dye will fix to the bacteria coming to the decolorizer this is an also another important question that is asked the decolorizer which we use is h2so4 that is your sulfuric acid in case of zn staining and finally yahan pe humne kya use kiya counter strain we have used saffronin or carbol fusion here we use methyl methylene blue we use methylene blue okay now guys you can call counter strain as secondary stain theek okay? hai counter strain as secondary stain also kyunki kabhi kabhi in the exam the question also will be asked what is the secondary stain used in case of zn staining tell me what is a decolorizer that is used in case of gram staining ethyl alcohol or acetone what is a, a decolorizer used in case of zn staining that is h2so4 clear all of you these are the two most important differences which you need to know and kaha se question aa sakta hai they can ask you first thing note it down first thing they can ask you is they will ask you the procedure hai na first primary stain uske baad secondary then decolorizer then finally uh, secondary stain okay these are the things that can they can ask you second important thing they can ask you is that what is the decolorizer that is used in both the cases ye pooch sakte hain and third important question which they can ask you is that you told me you are using h2so4 now tell me how much h2so4 percentage will you use in case of mycobacterium tuberculosis in mtb for zn staining i will use around 20% around 20% of h2so4 okay 20% of h2so4 plus 1 or minus 1 the value keeps on depending right the it depends uh, from textbook to textbook okay now when it comes to m lepre 
right? So how much percentage of H2SO4 you gonna use? Five percent. When it comes to spores, spore is having O in it. O stands for zero point two five percent. Okay. Now, how many? What is the percentage you use for uh, no cardia? Cardia in the sense heart. How many hearts you have got? You have only got one heart. Okay. So only one percent you use. Now, when it comes to sperm head, you use around 0.5% to 1%. So, from this also, there will be a question that will be asked. All of you, all of you are very good. You are answering perfectly right. Very good. Shuban, very good. Lydia Daniel, very good. Monali, perfect. So, these are the three areas from where the question can be asked, guys. Now, a question for you. Now, a question for you. Now tell me, let us say this is slide A and slide B. Okay? Is my gram positive consai, gram negative consai? Which is gram positive, which is gram negative? Okay, what is B? B batao, gram positive ki gram negative? Hai? Very good, very good. B is B is gram positive. B is what? Gram positive. B is Gram positive. Vindya, yes, yes, even in that contest also have prepared the PDF. So it is gram positive. And what is A? A is gram negative. You all, all of you know that gram positive bacteria love violet. Whereas gram negative bacteria loves pink. Okay. So just remember it as this is gram positive and this is gram negative. Okay. Right. Sir, how do you remember, how do you remember zeal nissen staining? Agar kal exam ko, if you get a stain of zeal nissen staining, how will you tell? Very simple thing, pink bodies with a blue background. Okay, pink bodies with a blue background. Why are you telling us pink bodies? Because we have added pink color. Add kiya. Why blue background? Last we have blue color. Add kiya. So pink bodies with a blue background is ZN staining. Pe dekho. All of you look at this. Yes or no? Pink bodies with blue background. Pink bodies with a blue background. Yeah, dekho. These are the pink bodies. Bodies matlab kya? Bacteria. Or peach background deko konsa color hai? Blue. Blue. Okay. So that gives you Z and stain. That gives you Z and stain. Clear all of you? Everyone is uh, fine with this? Right. Now, let us do these questions which were repeated previously. Okay? Let us see that you have understood or not. Who will tell me question number one? Tell me the answer. Gram staining iodine is used as. Tell me the answer fastly. Just tell me uh, the option here. No need to tell me the answer. Just tell me the option. Very good. Very good. Gram stain iodine is used as modern. Very good, Lydia Daniel. Very good. The most common stain that is used in gram staining is ye batao ab, kaun batayega ye? Who will tell me this thing? The most common stain that is used in gram staining is everyone, perfect. What is the most common stain that is used in gram staining? Any answer? See, most of you are telling crystal violet and carbol fusion, ye bhi answer hai. Crystal violet and saffronin, this is also an answer. But what did I tell you? I told you here that most commonly what do you use? You use saffronin. Right? Most commonly you use saffronin. So answer kya hoga? That will be B. Crystal violet and saffronin. Okay. Now, counter strain that is used in gram staining is. Counter strain kya use karte hai pe? What is the counter strain that is used? Again, here also there are uh, two options here. One is called saffronin. Another one is called as carbol fusion. Very good, Vidya. That is saffronin. Mishab, Mishab, nothing to worry. Nothing to worry at all. Right? Uh, Anuj, very good. Monali, Osama Sheikh, Janvi, Bist, Janvi, very good. Kusum, very good. Ajita, perfect. So, these are the things which you need to know regarding the staining, guys. So, abhi tak kitna stains discuss kiya We have discussed first is simple stain. And second we discuss is differential stain and in differential stain I told you four MCQs which will be asked. You remember those. Okay? So be perfect with these four MCQs. Now coming to the third strain that is called special strain. Jaha pe mene bola tha, flagella, spores, metachromatic granules. All of these you stain. That is called as your 
special strain. So, here you come across the special strain. So, within the special strain, within the special strain, there are three methods. One is called as uh, Albert staining. Another one is called as impregnation method. Or third one is negative staining method. Sir, isko kaise yaad rakhna hai? Just remember the mnemonic saint. Saint. S stands for what? S stands for your special stain. A stands for what? A stands for Albert staining. I stands for impregnation and N T stands for negative staining. Clear? Yeah? Now, first what we will discuss is that we will first discuss about impregnation staining. Impregnation staining matlab kya? What do you mean by impregnation staining? Batao? Making someone pregnant? No. What do you mean by impregnation staining? In impregnation staining, what do you use is that you basically use two methods. Okay? One is called as tannic acid impregnation method. One is called as tannic acid impregnation method. Or dusra kya hai? Silver salt impregnation method. Silver salt impregnation method. Sir, ye tannic acid impregnation kya hota hai? See, what did I tell you? What did I tell you guys? I told you special stains may you wanted to look at a flagella for example. Normally under a microscope, can you look at that thin flagella? Bacteria ko dekh sakte ho, but can you look at a flagella? You cannot look at a flagella. So what you need to do is that you will add a tannic acid. Tannic acid add karne ke baad, flagella kya hoga? Flagella will swell. Ye dekho. After adding tannic acid, you see the swollen flagella. Now, once the flagella is swollen, now you add a color. What is the color you add? Leaf sun and roux stain. Color add karne ke baad, aap microscope ke niche lagao and then you see, this is the picture. Clear? You see very clearly here, how swollen the flagella are. Yes or no? Ye pura flagella swell ho na? Why the flagella swollen? Because we used tannic acid impregnation method. In tannic acid impregnation method, what is the stain you add? That is called as leaf sun and roux stain. Very, very extremely important. Extremely important thing. Clear? So, two points. Tannic acid, right? Impregnation method. Third is leaf sun and roux stain. Okay? Now, coming to silver salt impregnation method. Tannic acid ke jaga, you are adding silver salt. Na? You are adding silver salt, but to visualize which bacteria you are using silver salt, two bacteria, one is called as Helicobacter pylori, another one is called as pyrochate. Okay, okay. I have taken Helicobacter pylori, I have added uh, uh, silver salt, silver salt add karne ke baad, pe flagella, whatever flagella is there, they are swollen, now I can see. Okay, but before you can see, you have to add a color also. To see, previously you have added leaf sun and roux stain, but here in H. pylori, what is the stain you add? Very good, Aditi Gupta has already answered. The answer is, you use a stain called as Varthin Starry Stain. Varthin Starry Stain. Varthin Starry Stain. Okay, and the stain which you use to visualize the spirochetes, spirochetes are spiral shaped organisms, right? you use is Fontana Stain. Fontana stain. Okay. Sir, how do you remember this? How do you remember matlab? Helicobacter. What is this? Helicobacter. So, helicobacter matlab kya? Helicopter. Right? In the helicopter, where do you go? You go to a shopping mall? No. You go for a war. War matlab kya? War thin starry stain. Okay. Remember like this. So, war thin starry stain. Thank you so much, Lillian. Thank you so much. Right. Now, now for spirochetes, now for spirochetes, there is also one more microscopy method which we use, a dark field microscopy. Okay. Apart from that, when we are discussing about the stain, the stain which we use is Fontana stain. How do you remember this? How do you remember this as? Remember it as FO. FO stands for foreign. SPI stands for spy. Foreign spy. Okay. So, let us look at Warthin Starry stain over here. See, this is leaf sun and roux stain. Now, all of you just look at this picture. This is the normal epithelium of your gastric rugae. This is the gastric epithelium. These are your rugae. Okay. 
So now what I'm telling you is, now what I'm telling you is, whenever the H. pylori bacteria will enter over here, whenever the H. pylori bacteria will enter over here, this particular H. pylori bacteria will completely damage this epithelium. Damage karne ke baad aise dikhega. Look at this. This is also a question that was asked in pathology also if you remember. Now look at the epithelium here. Ye this is the gastric ruge, but yaha pe gastric ruge or yaha pe damage ho gaya. And you see all these black color structures here. Ye dekho. These black color structures are nothing but called as your H. pylori bacteria. Or ye stain jo hai na, jo mene use kiya yaha pe abhi, this is called as Varthin stain. I mean your Varthin starry stain. Varthin starry stain. Okay? When we go on to the spirochetes, I told you spirochetes may fontana stain. Ye dekho. This is a stain for spirochetes. Organisms dekho yaha pe. How are they? Spiral shaped. Yes or no? So if they give such pictures in the exam, tell me will you be able to answer now? Yes or no? Be fast. Jaldi batao. Thank you so much Vikas. Right. So we, we are done with the first important thing that is called as impregnation staining. Now, after this impregnation staining is done, the second important thing we will go is Albert staining. Okay? Albert staining kya ho sakta hai? What is Albert staining? Okay? Albert staining we mainly use to uh, visualize what? Albert staining we mainly use to visualize metachromatic granules. What is the other name for metachromatic granules? Volutin granules. What is the other name for volutin granules? Babes Ernest granules. Okay, babes, earners, granules. Now, uh, either it might be Albert stain or Ponder stain or Nesser stain. Sir, isko kaise yaad rakhna hai? Pan. P-A-N, Pan. P stands for Ponder stain, A stands for Albert stain and N stands for Nesser stain. These three stains are different only. But in these three stains also, what are you exactly staining? You are staining metachromatic granules. Sir, kaise dikhta hai metachromatic granules? Ye dekho. This is how the metachromatic granules see. So this is the bacilli, this is the bacteria and on top of it you see a brown color thing like that, that is called as your metachromatic granule, okay. So ye hoga metachromatic granule, ye hoga metachromatic granule, okay. Now itself I am telling you that sir ye kiska slide hai, which bacteria, this slide belongs to which bacteria, anyone, yes. This belongs to C. diphtheriae. Very good. Very good. C. diphtheriae. Okay. So, this is an image based question which was asked multiple times. Okay. In C. diphtheriae, what is the shape of the bacteria? It is Chinese letter shaped. It is Chinese letter shaped. So, Chinese letter shaped bacteria is your C. diphtheriae. That is this one. Everyone is clear with this. Yes or no? Perfectly clear. Right. Sir, you told Albert stain. TK. Jo scientist jo invent kiya tha stain ko, iska naam hai Albert. Fine. But in Albert staining, what is the name of the color which you are using? The name of the color is ATM. A stands for Albert stain. What is T and M stands for? T stands for Tauludin blue. Tauludin blue. Plus M stands for Malachite green. Malachite green or you can call it as Malachite green, whatever it is. Okay? Malachite green, Malachite green, jo bhi hai. Clear? Right. Now, three important things I want to write it here. What are those three important things? What are those three important things? Give me three important examples. Hai na? Give me three important examples where you find metachromatic granules. Ek example to all of you know. What is that? Corinibacterium diphtheriae. We also read it as C. diphtheriae. Corinibacterium diphtheriae is the first important thing. Second important thing is Corinibacterium xerosis. Corinibacterium xerosis. And third important thing, third important thing is Gardnella vaginalis. Gardnella vaginalis. Once it happened to me like this, I think I have shared this thing too with my students already. So, ek bar ye pucha ki, what is Gardnella vaginalis? 
you know, like this I was teaching and I asked them, what is Gardnella vaginalis? So they have to tell that it is a bacteria, right? So what they told is, vagina in the garden. Even he is right. Fine. According to him, he is right. Right? Chalo, these are the Albert strains which you know. Now, after this, after this, after discussing Albert strain, after discussing impregnation strain, the last important thing is the negative straining method. Okay? Now, what is negative straining method? Remember one thing that negative staining we use only to stain a capsule. If you know some of the capsules, some of the bacteria have capsules which are called as encapsulated bacteria, which do not have capsules is called as unencapsulated bacteria, right? So you can you stain a capsule? Will the capsule take the color? No. Capsule will never ever take the color. Just remember, bacteria will take the color. Background jo hai, that will take the color, but the capsule will not take the color. Okay, so if you look at this picture, you will understand very clearly. Ye dekho, bacteria has taken the color. Piche jo background hai, background has taken the color. But surrounding the bacteria, the capsule did not take any color. That is why it is looking white. So that is why this staining method is called as negative staining, where capsules do not stain. The capsules do not stain. We stain the background only. Okay. Okay, is negative staining may within this negative staining, what are the two important stains you use within this negative staining? What are the two important stains you use? Any anyone? One is called as Indian ink, and second one is called as Negrosin. Okay, one is called as Indian ink, and second one is called as Negrosin. Okay. So, out of these two, which is cheap? Cheap is Indian ink. And which is the best one? The best one is Negrosin. So, this was also a one-liner question which was asked previously. And most of you guys are answering here, Cryptococcus, Cryptococcus, and yes, very good. This is a picture of Cryptococcus neoformans. And when I start discussing the mycology part and all, there I will tell you uh, clearly about all the different bodies. Okay? So, till here, Yes, Kusum. Kusum is right. Mostly we use Indian ink only. Yeah, mostly we use the ink that is Indian ink. Okay. So, we are done with three types of staining. Okay. Egg ho gaya, Albert staining. Another one is called as uh, negative staining. And finally, uh, we also discussed about impregnation method. So, all the special stains are done. So, these are the important things you need to know. Okay. So, from where the questions are asked? One is Leibstein and Roos staining. From here, the question is asked. And the next question that can be asked is Vathin Starry stain. Yahan se bhi question aa sakta hai. And third important thing, third important thing, they can ask you about Albert staining. In Albert staining also, they might give you this bacteria, this slide that is uh, Corinibacterium diphtheriae and ask you this thing. Clear all of you? Everyone is clear? Now, after you, you, if you, if you have, if you give me a green signal, then I'll go to the next part. Be fast, everyone. Very good. Now, now just look at, look at these two structures which I've drawn over here. Ek hoga gram positive, ek hoga gram negative. What do you know, guys? You know that gram positive bacteria is having a thick peptidoglycan layer, whereas gram negative is having a thin peptidoglycan layer. Yaha pa size dekhe bata sakte ho ki ye gram positive hai aur ye gram negative bacteria hai. Okay? Now, sir, will this thing come in the exam? Why are you teaching? I am going to develop one clinical point over here. Okay? So, this structure over here is called as plasma membrane. ये क्या होगा ये होगा प्लाज्मा मेम्ब्रेन सो पेप्टिडोग्लाइकन लेयर के ऊपर जो है दैट इज कॉल्ड एज आउटर मेम्ब्रेन व्हाट इज दैट आउटर मेम्ब्रेन प्लाज्मा मेम्ब्रेन और आउटर मेम्ब्रेन के बीच में व्हाटएवर एरिया यू हैव दिस इज कॉल्ड एज पेरीप्लाज्मिक रीजन दिस इज कॉल्ड एज योर पेरीप्लाज्मिक रीजन Sir, why periplasmic region is very important? The reason is that periplasmic region has got a very important enzyme that is called beta-lactamase. This was a question that was asked in pharmacology. All of you have to remember. In pharma, they have asked, periplasmic region is having beta-lactamase. 
Okay. What was the question that was asked in pharma? Now, penicillins. Guys, all of you know penicillins and cephalosporins. You know penicillins and cephalosporins. What are they? They are beta-lactam ring containing antibiotic. For example, if I get gram-negative infection, you give me these antibiotics, what will happen is that within my body right now, beta-lactamase, yeah, beta-lactamase kya karega? This will break down this beta-lactam antibiotics. So, penicillins and cephalosporins do not work in gram-negative infections. So, what do we need to do? First of all, we need to do the enzyme of beta-lactamase. For that, what I use? I use beta-lactamase inhibitors. For example, sulbactam, tazobactam, clavulanate, these are the things which you use as gram-negative infections. All of you understood? Everyone is clear with this? So, this was... Uh, the link, the pharma link, which was asked previously. So, this is the thing which you need to remember. Right. Coming to the exotoxins and endotoxins. Bacteria releases only two types of toxins. Ek hoga exotoxin or dusra hoga endotoxin. Okay. Who are releasing endotoxins? Only gram negative bacteria. Only gram negative bacteria release endotoxins except. Listeria, which is gram positive, also releases endotoxin. Okay, AK organism is listeria, which releases endotoxin. Baki sub, all the gram negative release endotoxin. Whereas exotoxin is released both by gram positive and gram negative. But what you have to remember is gram negative bacteria release endotoxins, gram positive bacteria do not release endotoxin except listeria. Clear, all of you? Everyone is clear? Everyone is clear, right? Sir, will they ask this question? Will they ask this question in the exam? They won't ask you this question. Pata ye kya in the exam mein, which was already asked, I'm telling you. What is endotoxin? Kya hai? Endotoxin kya hai? This was the question that was asked. Endotoxin. What is endotoxin? Look at this. By looking at this picture, what is the thing that is coming into your mind, guys? Batao ye gram positive hai ki gram negative hai. This structure, look at this structure and tell ye gram positive hai ki gram negative hai. Ek hi cheez yaad rakhna chahiye ki in gram negative, you will have an outer membrane. Ye dekho yaha pe outer membrane hai na? Right. Above this, above this outer membrane, you see that blue color structures which I have drawn. These blue color structures are called as lipid A. These are called as lipid A. Okay. Next, above this lipid A, these, this structure is called as core polysaccharide. What is this? This is called as your core polysaccharide. Or core polysaccharide ke upar jo hai, that is called as O antigen. O antigen. Ab ye deko, lipid A, core polysaccharide, O antigen, three of them together, you call it as lipo polysaccharide you call this as lipopolysaccharide okay now important thing is lipopolysaccharide is a previous year question yes this was a question that was previously asked actually what question was asked is that two questions were asked uh, two questions were asked one question was lipopolysaccharide ka constituents kya hai right o antigen core polysaccharide and lipid a Okay? But is my endotoxic component kya hai? What is the endotoxin in this? The endotoxin is the lipid A, which is a very, very toxic component, which you also call it as endotoxin. Most important question hai guys, ye, ye bhi, two questions, two questions are, uh, yes, Maharshi, they are, but I would like you to join, the, be in the session, so that agar, if you are asking doubts also, so that I can answer it to you. So, these are the two questions that were asked from this particular unit here. Okay? So, let us go back to the questions which were previously asked. Endotoxin is an important constituent of. Kaun batayega? Thank you so much, Hamza. Endotoxin is an important constituent of. Who will answer? Be fast, Kusum. Arbaz Khan. Very good. Important constituent of gram-negative bacteria. Okay? gram negative bacteria the association the association of endotoxin in gram negative bacteria is due to the presence of 
Association of endotoxin in a gram-negative bacteria will be due to the presence of what? Just now I told you. Very good. Gokul, perfect. Lipopolysaccharide. Due to the presence of what? Lipopolysaccharide. Now the next important uh, question asking box. This is a very, very important box. Gram-positive cell wall, whatever is there, what is it containing? One, only one thing you know so far, that gram-positive cell wall is thick, gram-negative is thin. Gram-positive cell wall contains two important things. One is called as peptidoglycan, another one is called as T-coic acid. What is that? T-coic acid. Right. Next, gram-negative cell wall. Guys, I request you, I request you, as I'll be, uh, as I'm teaching this, right? Agar if you already uh, have seen this question in any one of the exam paper, just mention the year and uh, in which batch it was asked, whatever it is. Or just mention it that this is a previous year question and all, so that the viewers, whoever are not sure about this, right, they will get to know that this part is the important part to concentrate on, okay? So, gram negative cell wall, within that, what do you see? You would see peptidoglycan and lipopolysaccharide. Abhi bola tha lipopolysaccharide. Three parts, O antigen, core polysaccharide and lipid A. Coming to MTB. MTB, mycobacterium tuberculosis has got three important things. Peptidoglycan, mycolic acid and lipoarbinomanin. This is called as a lipoglycan. It is a lipoglycan which is called as lipoarbinomanin. So, these three things you just have to mug it up guys. You just have to remember this and this is very very important. And yes, uh, Jackson is telling that regarding the t -coic acid, a previous year question was asked. Thank you so much, Jackson. So, regarding this t -coic acid, let us put it here. The previous year question was asked. Clear? Right. Now, let us enter into the complete questionnaire, which were all the time repeated. Okay? Now, what are the important stains I have written here? Ye, ye important stains na tum ratlo, kuch bhi karlo, right? Every day, right? Even early morning, suddenly if I wake you up and ask you, which is not possible as anyways, pata na chahiye ki what is the uh, stain and where are we using this? Okay? You have to practice it so good. Aditi Gupta, very good. Masson's Fontana, M stands for Masson, M also stands for Melanin. Melanin as well as Argentafin cells. Okay, so what do you need to remember mainly here? M stands for Masson, M stands for Masson, M stands for Melanin. Okay, so this is the first important thing. Second important thing, second important thing is that uh, Gomori Mithaminine Silver. Where do you use this Gomori stain? So how do you remember? Go have fun. Let me use green color to write down the mnemonics. Go have fun. Go stands for what? Go stands for Gomori stain. F stands for fungus. That is what? Pneumocystis. Zero VC. Pneumocystis zero VC is an opportunistic, opportunistic uh, fungal infection. We will discuss about that later on. But for now, what do you need to know? Gomori stain you use in case of fungus. Now, Luxol Fast Blue you use in case to look at the myelin. To look at what? To look at myelin. So, how do you remember this? How do you remember this is that? Remember it like this. Myelin me kya hai? Myelin me kya hai? MY. My luxurious fast blue car. My luxurious fast blue car. My stands for myelin. Luxurious in the sense luxol. Fast blue in the sense fast blue car. Okay. Remember it like this. Next important thing. What about Musi Carmen? Musi Carmen, the name itself says it is used to stain mucus. Eginai. The name itself stays, it is used to stain mucus. Not only mucus, it is even used to stain cryptococcus capsule. Cryptococcus capsule. Okay. So, how do you remember this? Mu C stands for mucus. Car stands for cry. Okay. Car cry. Mu C is mucus. C stands for cry cryptococcus capsule. Clear? Yeah? 
Next, coming to toilet in blue. Where do you use toilet in blue? Toilet in blue is useful for mast cells. All of you know what is mast cells. How do you remember this? Remember it by a mnemonic. Tom. Okay, Roy, the old gamer, you are finally here. Yes, uh, we will discuss about the CD4 count also. Regarding the Tom. T stand, TO stands for what? Toilet in blue. M stands for mast cells. Okay. Next important thing is Van Giesen stain. Where do you use Van Giesen stain? To look at collagen fibers. To look at collagen fibers. Now, important thing, important thing you need to know here. How do you remember this Van Giesen collagen fibers? Now, when you are in a when you are in your childhood to the school, basically, you know. So you used to go on bike to the school or you used to go in a school van. You used to go in a school van. So what you used to say? Van may college jayenge, right? Okay, not not uh, school, let us say college. Okay. So van may college jayenge. Van in the sense van geesen, college in the sense collagen. Okay. College in the sense collagen. Uh, Aditi Gupta, we also use that. We also use that. You are right. But most commonly, we stain it for melanin. Okay, so keep that thing in mind. More commonly, we stain it for melanin. Thanks for remembering me. Right. So, Aditi Gupta is reminding that for collagen, don't we use Manson's trichome? We use that Manson's trichome, but we mostly use melanin over here. Okay. Uh, Lydia Daniel, Levy bodies, Parkinson disease. I will tell about those bodies in a minute. In a minute. Okay. So, hope everyone understood all the things still here, guys. Everyone, perfectly clear. Everyone, Aditi Gupta. Nandi, Lydia, Roy, the old gamer, Rangesh. Everyone understood over here. Very good. Now, yeah, they both are different. Fontana is different and trichome stain is different. So, regarding those stains, I will discuss it later on, okay? Regarding those stains, I'll discuss it later on. So, when I'll be discussing that particular bacteria or the fungus and all, so there I'll be discussing these things. So, overall, completely I'll put everything in a box over here. Right. So, so all of you just look here. Coming to the next important thing that is inclusion bodies. What are the different inclusion bodies which you have got? So the first inclusion body is Levy's bodies. Where do you find these Levy's bodies? Levy's bodies are seen in Parkinsonism. Where do you find these Levy's bodies? They are seen in Parkinsonism. Sir, how do you remember this? How do you remember this is P-A-L-E. What is P-A-L-E? Pale. PA is Parkinsonism, where we use uh, Lewis bodies. Okay. Next, Russell bodies. Where do you see these uh, Russell bodies? You see in case of multiple myeloma. You see in case of multiple myeloma. Okay. Now, how do you remember this? Remember it as my, are you in the sense rum, my rum. Okay. Remember it as my RUM. My stands for multiple myeloma and RUM is Russell bodies. Now, Warthen Finkedly gain cells. Where do you use this? Tell me. Where do you usually see this Warthen Finkedly gain cells? I'm waiting for your answers. Very good. Measles. You use this case. I mean, you see this case in case of measles. Next important thing is Leishman Donovan bodies. Where do you see this? You see in case of Kala Azar. Kala Azar. So, how do you remember this Kala Azar? Remember it as Kale Dawn. Okay, Kale Dawn. Black color Dawn. Ka Kale. K stands for Kala. Le stands for Leishman. Dawn is Donovan bodies. Okay. Now, where do you see councilman bodies, guys? Tell me, where do you see councilman bodies? Any answer? Councilman, very good. Very good. You see in case of yellow fever. Councilman bodies, you see in case of yellow fever. Not only councilman bodies, even Tories bodies also you see in case of yellow fever. Okay? Yellow fever. 
सर हाउ टू रिमेंबर दिस हाउ टू रिमेंबर दिस इज दैट रिमेंबर इट एज ये तो काउंसिल है ये तो काउंसिल है राइट वॉट इज ए ओवर हियर ये इन द सेंस एलो फीवर तो तो वॉट तो रिज बॉडीज काउंसिल वॉट काउंसिल मैन ये तो काउंसिल है राइट so these are the things which you need to know and finally we have got the granulo corpuscles where do you see you see it in a case of venerum lymphogranuloma venerum lymphogranuloma venerum okay so how do you remember this you remember it like my granny left ye dekho my that is miyagawa right my granny is granulo corpuscles left in the sense l stands for lympho granuloma venerum so till here all of you are clear guys everyone 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 is clear with this everyone is clear yes or no guys again i'm telling you uh, from this from these stains important stains a question can be asked na and also these inclusion bodies also a question can be asked so all of you are clear with the things which i have told you yes or no be fast helping brains thank you so much aditi gupta you understood uh, lydia daniel you understood this thing everyone is clear very good now let us enter into the next important thing that is called as your culture media okay so the first important question i want to ask you is sir culture kyu karte hai why do you culture this okay culture media mein aaya yes there are a lot of things with uh, you know lot of memory part you have to use so i request you not to write down the notes just focus kar lo yahan pe so culture media is culture media mein na there are two important things you define culture media based upon the physical and based upon the ingredients let us say let us say your friend is preparing a dish okay give me a minute your friend is preparing a dish the moment you go inside the kitchen will you take the lid put your head inside no you don't do that what you do is that the moment you open the lid two things come into your mind by looking at that what is the consistency is that that dish whatever is making is it is it like a solid मतलब फ्राई इज इट लाइक ए सेमी सॉलिड मतलब लेट अस से ग्रेवी टाइप और इज इट कंप्लीटली लाइक अ लिक्विड सो दिस क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ कल्चर मीडिया इज बेस्ड अपॉन द फिजिकल स्टेट ओके नाउ बेस्ड अपॉन द इंग्रेडिएंट्स व्हाट मसालास हैव ही एडेड इनटू दैट केटल डिड ही ऐड ओनली पेपर सिंगल मसाला दैट इज कॉल्ड सिंपल मीडिया ही एडेड मोर देन वन मसाला यू कॉल इट एज कॉम्प्लेक्स मीडिया he brought masalas all the way from the market those are called synthetic masalas right so you called as synthetic media or he brought mas you are in india cooking right now and your friend parcel masalas from united states or london right they are called as special media okay why do we use this culture media is to grow the bacteria very simple thing okay now the next important thing you need to know is first we shall discuss about solid media okay so first we shall discuss about solid media सर सॉलिड मीडिया में वाई द मीडिया इज सॉलिड सी फॉर एग्जाम्पल दिस इज ए बॉटल ऑफ वॉटर और इसके अंदर जो मीडिया है इट इज लिक्विड है ना नाउ आई विल एड समिंग इन टू दिस वेन आई एड समिंग इन टू दिस ये पूरा जो लिक्विड है इट विल बिकम सॉलिड राइट दैट इज वे यू कॉल इट एज सॉलिड मीडिया सो वॉट इज देर इन सॉलिड मीडिया यू हैव गॉट अगार ओके वॉट इज दिस अगार अगार इज नथिंग बट अगार इज ए सॉलिडिफाइंग एजेंट agar is a solidifying agent okay so agar is made up of what agar is made up of polysaccharides agar is usually made up of polysaccharides okay now at which temperature will the agar melt the agar will melt at 98 degree centigrade and it will become solid at 42 degree centigrade okay 98 degree centigrade and it will become solid at 42 degrees centigrade What are the two common agars? ये देखो ये picture देखो ये है agar. It looks like a jelly uh, thing, jelly cubes. Okay. So what are the two different types of agar we have got? 
एक अगर जापान से और एक न्यूजीलैंड से ठीक है सो वन इज कॉल्ड एज जापनीज अगर जापनीज अगर दिस इज कॉल्ड जापनीज अगर टू परसेंट और दूसरा क्या है अनदर वन इज कॉल्ड एज न्यूजीलैंड अगर न्यूजीलैंड अगर और ये है वन पॉइंट टू परसेंट न्यूजीलैंड अगर वन पॉइंट टू परसेंट ओके सो आउट ऑफ दीज विच वन वी यूज वी यूज बोथ ऑफ देम आइर वी यूज जापानीज अगर और वी माइट यूज न्यूजीलैंड अगर बट मोस्ट कॉमनली ना नंबर वन ओनली वी यूज दैट इज जापानीज अगर राइट सो टिल हियर ऑल ऑफ यूर क्लियर राइट सर यू आर टेलिंग मी दैट बेस्ड अपॉन द फिजिकल स्टेट वी डिवाइडेड इट इंटू सॉलिड सेमी सॉलिड एंड लिक्विड क्यू When will you use solid media? When will you use semi-solid media? And when will you use liquid media? Now all of you look at this. अगर मुझे colony characteristics पढ़ना है, there are a a colony of streptococci bacteria, a colony of staphylococcus bacteria, a colony of enterococci. Or if I have to study the entire colony characteristics, then I use a media called as solid media. Okay? If I want to, why do you use back? बैक्टीरियल uh, मोटिलिटी के लिए कौन सा मीडिया यूज करोगे यू विल यूज सेमी सॉलिड मीडिया सेमी सॉलिड एंड फाइनली फॉर फर्मेंटेशन वी यूज लिक्विड मीडिया ओके नाउ स्विमाक परफेक्टली राइट स्विमाक नाउ यू माइट आज सर बैक्टीरियल मोटिलिटी के लिए लिक्विड मीडिया यूज कर सकते ना बैक्टीरिया विल मूव वेरी नाइसली देर दैट इज ओनली द प्रॉब्लम इफ बैक्टीरिया इज मूविंग वेरी फास्टली कैन यू फिक्स यूर आई ऑन द बैक्टीरिया नो so you use semi solid media so that the bacterial motility is in a slow motion okay you see this is a semi solid media what is this this is a picture of semi solid media semi solid media okay now give me one example of liquid media liquid matlab broth hai ki nahi so nutrient broth सर ये क्या है व्हाट इज न्यूट्रिएंट ब्रॉथ आई विल टेल यू इन अ मिनट बट अब फॉर नाउ जस्ट रिमेंबर इट है ना सो लिक्विड मीडिया यूजफुल फॉर न्यूट्रिएंट ब्रॉथ द एग्जांपल इज न्यूट्रिएंट ब्रॉथ कमिंग टू द इंग्रेडिएंट्स कमिंग टू द इंग्रेडिएंट्स सो वी डिस्कस्ड ऑल दिस थ्री इसका यूजेस क्या है अभी बेस्ड ऑफ ऑन इंग्रेडिएंट्स वी विल डिस्कस द फर्स्ट इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग दैट इज योर सिंपल मीडिया ओके नाउ लुक एट द सिंपल मीडिया सिंपल मीडिया में तीन चीजें है एक है पेप्टोन वाटर न्यूट्रिएंट ब्रॉथ न्यूट्रिएंट अगर सो नथिंग टू वरी नथिंग टू वरी वेरी वेरी इजी थिंग्स दिस आर पेप्टोन वाटर मतलब क्या यू टेक ए ग्लास ठीक है मैंने ग्लास लिया ऐसे नाउ विथ इन दिस ग्लास आई विल एड वॉटर आई विल एड वन परसेंट पेप्टोन तो अभी क्या हो गया ये पेप्टोन वॉटर ये सो नो सो वॉट इज द थिंग आई डू आई हैव एडेड वॉटर I have added one percent peptone. उसके साथ साथ you will also add NaCl also zero point five percent on in into every medium you add this uh, NaCl guys okay. So this is called as peptone water. ठीक है? अभी now I am taking this peptone water into this. Additionally, what I am doing? What I am doing additionally is that let us say that this is your meat piece. Okay? ये देखो ये these are your meat pieces. 1% meat extract I'm adding into this. 1% meat extract add करने के बाद ये क्या हो गया? This is called as nutrient broth. So what do you mean by nutrient broth? Nutrient broth मतलब peptone water, peptone water plus 1% meat extract. 1% meat extract is called as nutrient broth. Okay? अभी ये nutrient broth हो गया? है कि नहीं? अभी इस न्यूट्रिएंट ब्रॉथ के अंदर आई एम ऑल्सो एडिंग टू परसेंट अगर टू परसेंट मतलब जापानीज अगर आई एम एडिंग टू परसेंट अगर नाउ दिस इज कॉल्ड एज न्यूट्रिएंट अगर व्हाट इज दिस कॉल्ड न्यूट्रिएंट अगर सो व्हाट इज न्यूट्रिएंट अगर न्यूट्रिएंट ब्रॉथ न्यूट्रिएंट ब्रॉथ मतलब ये सारा कुछ प्लस यू आर एडिंग टू अगर दिस इज कॉल्ड एज न्यूट्रिएंट अगर From this previously a question was asked. I want you to just remember it. ठीक है? ये देखो यहाँ पे ये picture देखो. This is the picture of simple media. Okay? All of you understood? Everyone? Be fast, be fast, guys. Everyone understood? We'll move on to the next one. So in this I have added only one uh, masala, so I call it as a simple media. ठीक है? If I add more than one, then I have to call it as complex media. 
सो कॉम्प्लेक्स मीडिया का एक एग्जाम्पल अदिति यू अंडरस्टूड वन एग्जाम्पल ऑफ कॉम्प्लेक्स मीडिया इज ब्लड अगार वॉट इज इट इट इज ब्लड अगार वन एग्जाम्पल ऑफ सिंथेटिक मीडिया इज पेप्टोन वॉटर सर पेप्टोन वॉटर यू ऑलरेडी डिस्कस्ड I why did I discuss it in simple media because only peptone is only one ingredient so I discuss but peptone kya hai by nature what is peptone peptone is a synthetic substance so you are calling it as synthetic media okay next coming to special media there are two different types of special media what are those two different types one is called as enriched media one is called as enriched media another one is called as selective media another one is called as your selective media so two types enriched media as well as selective media you have to know guys the differences between enriched media kya hota hai enrichment media kya hota hai and what is selective media enriched media in the sense let us say let us say that this is an agar plate theek hai ye agar plate ke andar i have added sodium potassium calcium phosphorus whatever things i got i have added now some bacteria love sodium some bacteria love potassium i mean hypothetically i'm speaking some bacteria love calcium some bacteria love potassium so all the different types of bacteria are growing here why because i have provided provided all the different types of nutrients that medium you call it as enriched media okay that medium is called as enriched media so what is enriched media the media contains all nutrients required for the growth of wide variety of organisms next important thing is enrichment media in enrichment media one example is liquid media where this media allows growth of only one particular organism okay when it comes to selective media what i'm doing is that i'm killing down all the organisms and i'm concentrating on only one organism for example what i will do is that if i wanted to grow neisseria i will grow only neisseria and kill down the remaining organisms how are you going to kill down the remaining organisms by using an inhibitory substance either it might be a dye either it might be an antibiotic or it might be a chemical clear right so now we shall discuss another important thing look at this what is this agar over here this is called as blood agar okay this is called as your blood agar so how do you make a blood agar just now i told you what is nutrient agar if you remember right this nutrient agar plus 5% sheep rbc 5% sheep rbc if i'm heating at 45 degrees centigrade then i will get an agar that is called as blood agar okay now if this blood agar i'm heating at 70 degrees centigrade then this blood will turn to chocolate and this is called as chocolate agar okay but actually there is no chocolate in it so it is called as chocolate agar clear all of you so at which temperature blood agar is formed 45 degrees and at which temperature chocolate agar is formed 70 degrees centigrade very important next important thing is regarding the enriched media as i told you so one example over here is blood agar blood agar is an enriched media next media is dorset agar dorset agar is also an enriched media third important thing is chocolate agar chocolate agar is also an enriched media and finally we have got loafler serum loafler serum is also an enriched agar clear all of you sir any mnemonic to remember this mnemonics don't use everywhere okay Nemo to to remember this mnemonics only we should frame one more mnemonic again so yes all of these are in the enrichment media every everything is in the enrichment media patel so blood agar dorset agar chocolate agar and loafler's medium all of them are in the enriched media let us look at the examples of what bacteria what organisms you are growing in this media first coming to blood agar within this blood agar mainly you grow streptococcus species so this is the most common agar used the most common agar that is used to grow a uh, streptococcus is your blood agar second important thing is chocolate agar 
Now, chocolate agar we use for two important organisms. One is called as Haemophilus influenzae. Haemophilus influenzae. Another one is called as Neisseria gonorrhea. Neisseria gonorrhea. So these are the two important things. Sir, how do you remember this? How do you remember this? Is that chocolate influences girls? Chocolate influences girls, right? So if it is uh, if it is wrong, don't shout at me. I know it is wrong. Okay, this is just for a mnemonic. I have uh, written it here. Chocolate influences girls. Chocolate in the sense chocolate agar influence in the sense influenza girls is gonorrhea. Okay, don't take me back. Now next important thing coming to dorset agar. Okay, dorset agar you mainly use for mycobacterium. Okay, mycobacterium. And finally, low flour serum. How do you remember this? Low flour serum is mainly useful for C. diphtheriae. C. diphtheriae. Corinibacterium diphtheriae. Okay, so how do you remember this? Lodi. What is LO? Again, don't take me bad. LO is low flour serum. DI is diphtheria. So this is how you remember LO DI. Okay, right. So these are all the examples of the enriched media. Now coming to the selective media, jaha pe maine bola tha, we will select only few organisms. Okay. The first selective media which you need to know over here is Thayer Martin media. So how do you remember this? Thayer Martin, right? Martin is having two important diseases. One is called as gonorrhea, another one is called as meningitis. He is having two important conditions. One is gonorrhea, another one is meningitis. So, if I wanted to grow gonorrhea and I wanted to grow meningitis, uh, I wanted to grow meningococcal organisms, I use this media called as Thayer Martin media. Okay, Thayer Martin media. So, but guys, there is a little explanation which I have to give it to you, which is very important here. See, this is Neisseria gonorrhea, this is Neisseria meningitis, right? But fungus is growing, gram positive is growing, gram negative is growing, proteus is growing, all of these are growing. So you have to kill down all of this. How will you kill? You will kill by using an antibiotic over here, that is your vancomycin. So for, for convenience sake, name vancomycin as vanconiprim. Vanconiprim kya hota hai? Van in the sense vancomycin. Vancomycin is used to kill gram positive bacteria. Co in the sense cholestin. Cholestin is used to kill all gram negative bacteria except Neisseria gonorrhea and Neisseria meningitis. Next, NY in the sense nistatin. Nistatin is used for what? To kill down the fungi. So, fungus is also dead. Gram positive, gram negative, gaya, fungus. Bhi gaya. And finally, prim in the sense, prim in the sense, trimethoprim. Prim in the sense trimethoprim, we use it for proteus. We use it for proteus. Clear all of you? So now you understood this covers your pharma part also. Very important thing. And this is also an important thing. Micro link that is Thayer Martin media is used for gonorrhea as well as meningitis. Okay. Right. Next important thing is Campylobacter agar. The name itself says Campylobacter jejuni is used to grow in Campylobacter agar. Now, Baki organisms, how are you going to kill? You will use by using the first three letters C, A, M. C stands for what? Charcoal. A stands for Cephoperazone. And M here stands for Amphotericin B. Okay. By using these three important things, you are going to kill the remaining organisms. Now, another important question. Uh, which was asked in medicine previously, he, amphotericin B is used in three most common infections. In which common infections do you use this Tejasvi? Arbaz Khan, Aditi, Patel, Patao. Amphotericin B is used in three more common infections. This is out of the box. I mean, not the micro part. I am discussing about the medicine part. Very good. This is used in invasive Candidiasis. Yaad rakho. This is used in invasive candidiasis. It is used in aspergillosis. It is also used in 
Cryptococcal meningitis. Cryptococcal meningitis. Yes, even mucormycosis also, but that was not given in the option, basically. So that is why I haven't mentioned it. So invasive candidiasis, aspergillosis, and cryptococcal uh, meningitis. In these three, we basically use amphotericin P. Okay. Next important thing is the Lovenstein Jensen media. How do you remember this Lovenstein Jensen media? Whenever you get Whenever a patient gets mycobacterium TB infection, right? So the treatment period will go for about six months. You know that. You know? First four months, all the four drugs you use. Next two months, you use another drugs. So six months, the treatment is like Till then, the patient immunity is low. That is why you called as Lovenstein. Okay? Lovenstein Jensen Media. And in this, what antibiotics you use to kill down the remaining organisms? Penicillin and uh, dye called as Melachite Green. Okay? Coming to the differential media. Differential media are to differentiate. Okay. Ye lactose fermenter hai, ye non lactose fermenter hai. Okay. To differentiate both of them, we use differential media. You can use the mnemonic here. My car totally stopped. My stands for McConkey agar. Uh, car stands for CLED agar, which means cysteine lactose electrolyte deficient agar. Next, uh, T stands for TCBS agar, which means thiosulfate citrate bile salt agar. And XLD, X matlab stop, xylose lysine deoxycholate. Sir, humko ye abbreviations yaad rakhna padega, not needed at all. Okay, but examples you have to remember it. Let us see what are the examples. Look at McConkey agar. Mene kya bola tha? To differentiate between lactose fermenter, right, which is lactose fermenter, which is non-lactose fermenter. To differentiate that, we use McConkie. And remember one thing, remember one thing that, remember one thing that lactose fermenter, they look pink color and non-lactose fermenters, they look colorless. Colorless. Now you gonna tell me, if I've divided this region into two halves, telling it as A and B, but how which is lactose fermenter? Be fast, A or B? Where are the pink color colonies over here? Very good, very good. So B is your lactose fermenter. B is your lactose fermenter. So lactose fermenter is pink. Subhajit, it is B, that is pink. Ye colorless hai. Compare both of them. Ye jada pink hai na? Next important thing. Next important thing. Thank you so much, Jackson. Thank you so much. Jackson is telling that uh, McConkey Agar uh, was a previous year question. Okay, let us put it here. Thank you so much, Jackson. So, this was a previous year question which was asked. So, you can know on which things you have to concentrate more. Okay. Next, coming on to the XLD Agar, xylose lysine deoxycholase to differentiate between Salmonella and Shigella. Okay. So, how do the colonies of Salmonella look? These colonies are red color colonies. These are red color colonies with black centers. Red colonies with black centers are Salmonella. Only red colonies are Shigella. Only red colonies are Shigella. Now, ye dekke batao. Ye dekke batao. This is A, this is B. Which is Salmonella here? Which is Salmonella over here? Batao. Very good, very good. B is Salmonella. You see, Salmonella here and this is Shigella over here. Clear? Right. So, just remember these pictures, guys. These pictures are very, very important. Next, coming to CLED agar, that is cysteine lactose, electrolyte deficient agar, which we mainly use for an urinary tract causing organism that is Proteus. Proteus, you know, it causes UTI. All of you know. And remember this thing, Proteus also is responsible for formation of special type of stones. These stones are called as struvite stones. These stones are called as struvite stones. Okay. Now, just look at these medium here. What is the colony uh, color of this Proteus? This is translucent blue colonies translucent blue colonies so translucent blue colonies are over here okay 
And uh, one more important thing, uh, Lydia is telling that this Proteus is also responsible for swarming motility. Very good. Swarming motility. Okay. Right. Next important agar which next important medium which you need to know over here is TCBS, which means thiosulfate citrate bile salts. So within this, uh, we differentiate between Vibrio cholera and para hemolyticus. So these are the colonies here. These are called as flat yellow color colonies. Okay. So what are these colonies over here? These are flat yellow colonies. Where do you see flat yellow colonies? You see in case of TCBS agar. Clear all of you? Right? So if you are clear with this, let us go to the questions over here and let us see how much you have understood over here. So these were the questions again repeated previously. The solidifying agent used in microbiology laboratories to solidify medium. Batao. Very, very simple question. Very good. Agar. Agar. If I ask agar, what agar? Either I use Japanese agar or I use New Zealand agar. Japanese agar is 2%. New Zealand agar is 1.2%. Blood agar medium. Batao. Blood agar counts a medium. Hai? Very good. Blood agar is an enriched medium. Okay. When it comes here, peptone water and nutrient growth. Where did we discuss peptone water? Didn't we discuss it in case of simple media? Simple media, you also call it as basal media. Okay. Simple media or basal media. So, C will be the answer. And finally, this thing I haven't discussed. I wanted to discuss it in the MCQ itself. Most commonly used solidifying agent agar is obtained from. It is obtained from red algae. It is obtained from red algae. And it contains what? It is made up of polysaccharides. It is made up of polysaccharides. Clear guys? Now, now let us concentrate on the next important thing that is your sterilization as well as disinfection. Okay. From sterilization and disinfection, what things you have to remember, I will tell you. Just focus on those points only. You mostly, most probably a question pucha jayega. Mostly, hardly one question will be asked. So first important thing you need to know, what is sterilization? Sterilization matlab all organisms are removed. This is called sterilization. Then what is disinfection? Here also all pathogenic organisms are removed except spores. Spores show ke baki sab if you are removing them, killing them down, that is called disinfection. Okay. There are two methods of sterilization and disinfection. A ke physical method or dusra kya hoga? Chemical method. Physical method may be kya hai? One is heat, filtration, radiation. These are physical methods. Right? First, we will discuss about heat. First, we will discuss about heat. Now, within the heat, there are two different types of heat. Ek hoga dry heat. Ek hoga dry heat. Another one is called as moist heat. Okay? So, in dry heat, how are you going to kill the organisms? And in moist heat, by what mechanisms the organisms are going to die? In dry heat, we use mainly three important mechanisms. The first important mechanism is... You heat it so that all the bacterial proteins will be denaturated. There is denaturation of bacterial proteins. Second thing, kya hoga? when the bacterial proteins are denaturated, when the, all the bacterial ATP pumps, jo bhi hai, all of them are gone, do you think the electrolytes will be there? Electrolyte imbalance will happen and finally oxidative damage. Just remember this one as DO. Right? DO. Coming to the moist, only not DO, this is DCO. What is DCO? D stands for denaturation. CO stands for coagulation of proteins. Coagulation of what? Coagulation of proteins. Okay. So these are the two important things. Let us see what are the methods you use in case of dry heat. In case of dry heat, I use three methods. A ho gaya flaming. Flaming. Another one is incineration. And third one is hot air oven. Hot air oven. These are the three important things. When it comes to uh, when it comes to moist, how do you remember? Remember it as meta. M stands for moist heat. M stands for moist heat. And ITA. I stands for inspissation. 
I stands for what? I stands for inspiration. Uh, T stands for tindalization. T stands for tindalization and A stands for autoclave. A stands for what? Autoclave. So these are the three important things that are used in case of moist heat. Abhi ye flaming kya hai? Ye dekho. This is what is called as flaming. Now, why do we use flaming method? We use flaming method for these things. Okay? Kaun sa material use karta hai pe? Inoculation loop or wire. Right? You know what is the use of this? I hope you have seen this. Hai na? You take this with the help. You, with the help of this inoculation loop or wire, you take the, on the content on the agar plate, you spread it on the agar plate and all. For all this, you use this. So, this we sterilize karna padega. For that, we use this method called as flaming. Now, within the flaming, three different temperatures are used. Three different temperatures kya hai? Yaan pe dekho. First important temperature, you see this particular color called as blue flame. Okay? What is this flame? Blue flame. And after that, you see this color flame here. This is called as yellow flame. And this is called as a red flame. So, how many flames are seen? There are three important colors which you see. Okay. Blue flame, you will get at a temperature of 400 degrees centigrade. Yellow flame, you will get at a temperature of, let us say, 1200 degrees centigrade. Whereas, uh, this uh, reddish reddish yellowish flame you will get at a temperature of 800 degrees centigrade out of all these in flaming what is the most common temperature that is used this one this is the most common temperature we use okay clear all of you so three colors boy remember it as boy b o y b stands for blue o stands for orange y stands for yellow okay and what is the material that you use the material you use over here is inoculation loop and wire used to remove the colonies, which is used to move the colonies. After, after flaming, the next important thing is incineration. Incineration, matlab, meaning kya hota hai? what is incineration? Incineration is burning anything into ashes. Okay? Now tell me, what are the things that you burn into ashes? If you are burning into ashes, will you use a temperature below 1000 degrees or above 1000 degrees? Always you use your temperature above 1000 degrees. Matlab 1000 to 1200 degrees centigrade. Okay. So which, which things which things you use to burn? Dead materials. Right. All the things that are located within the yellow bag. BMW matlab biomedical waste. Jaise ki dressings. Will you reuse the dressing again? No. Swabs. Wipes. Iodine. And, uh, will you use these things again? Will you wash it and again put it on the patient? No, you just have to finish it up. So anything that is located in the yellow bag, which is highly infectious clinical waste, you will burn them to ashes at 1000 to 1200 degrees centigrade. Uske baad aapka hot air oven. The third one, last one, hot air oven. Now, Hot air oven is most commonly used secondary to autoclave, which means autoclave is used first. If autoclave is not available, then you use this hot air oven. Within this hot air oven, three different temperatures are there. What are those three different temperatures? One is 160, add 10, 170, add 10, 180. Right? You see the temperature is increased. When the temperature is increased, the timing has to be decreased. Keep this thing in mind. Temperature is increasing, timing is decreasing, 120 minutes, 60 minutes and 30 minutes. Okay, these are the three different temperatures and these are the three different timings which you basically use. Now, what is called as efficacy of hot air oven? Efficacy matlab kya? Efficacy matlab, agar ye machine sach mein kaam kar raha hai ki nahi, na? whether this machine is working or not. So to know that, what I will do, I will use three methods. One is called physical method, chemical method and biological method. Physical chemical, physical method matlab, physical method matlab, I will see machine ke upar, on the surface of the machine, display teak se kaam kar ki nahi. The temperature recording jo uh, tape hota hai, is that working or not? The timer is working or not? That things I will see. Chemical method matlab, what I will do is that I will put a tube called as brownies tube. A test tube jaysa hoga, brownies tube, I will put it inside. After putting it inside, I will raise maximum to 180 degrees centigrade. 
at high temperatures what will happen is that this brownish tube will turn to brown color if it is turned to brown color it means kya this machine has achieved 180 degrees which means this machine is working third important method i use is biological method where i inoculate bacillus subtilis bacillus atrophius spores these spores are highly heat resistant these spores are going to denature only at 180 degrees centigrade if these spores are denature it means machine is working that is what is called as efficacy last me ek table me maine likha tha sara efficacies i will uh, teach you that thing next important thing what are the materials you use basically in hot air oven glass materials to just sharp surgical instruments or tisra chemicals glass material matlab petri dish test tube flask scalpel scissor forceps liquid paraffin glove dust powder so these things i can't explain it to you because you just have to cram it okay the memory part right so we are done with dry heat coming on to the moist heat moist heat mein i told you two mechanisms three important things within this moist heat three different temperatures we use one is less than 100 degrees dusra 800 degrees tisra more than 100 degrees less than 100 degrees there are four methods pasteurization you use below 100 degrees serum bath vaccine bath inspiration all of these you use below 100 degrees only dusra what is this 800 degrees what is the method you use tindalization अभी से याद रखो टिंडा मतलब अंडा ओके अंडा इज व्हाट एग ओके कीप दिस थिंग इन माइंड मोर देन 100 डिग्रीस ऑटोक्लेव क्लियर ऑल ऑफ यू सो व्हाट आर द मेथड्स पैश्योराइजेशन सीरम बाथ वैक्सीन बाथ इंस्पिसेशन टिंडलाइजेशन एंड ऑटोक्लेव इफ यू रिमेंबर दिस टेबल गाइस डेफिनेटली यू कैन गेट अ क्वेश्चन बिकॉज़ टेंपरेचर रिकॉर्डिंग्स आर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट ओवर हियर ओके रिमेंबर दिस टेबल एट एनी कॉस्ट नाउ लेट अस डिस्कस अबाउट पैश्योराइजेशन pasteurization matlab kya from your childhood onwards you are studying pasteurization we use to sterilize the milk pasteurization of milk okay disinfection of milk pasteurization mein two methods we use in the first method we heat the milk at 63 degrees centigrade for 30 minutes aise heat karne ke baad all the microorganisms within that milk will die except one microorganism that is called as coxiella burnetii okay so it means you are holding one microorganism and killing down all of them that is why this is called as a holders method dusra method jo hai that is called as flash method flash matlab like a flash okay ye dekho 20 seconds matlab kya like a flash like a flash at 72 degree centigrade you heat the milk ho gaya next method is serum bath serum bath you have to use 56 uh, degree centigrade for 1 hour vaccine bath to sterilize the vaccines serum bath to sterilize the serum vaccine bath is 60 degrees 1 hour and inspiration guys ye dekho inspiration the words itself tells you inspiration matlab intermittent sterilization ko inspiration bolte intermittent sterilization matlab this sterilization process will continue for 3 days every day Every day, 30 minutes. That what will you do? Every 30 minutes, 80 to 85 degrees, you will heat it. Okay. Day one is finished. Next day, फिर से 80 to 85 degrees for 30 minutes. Day two is finished. Third day also the same. So intermittently you are doing sterilization. So you called as inspiration. So where do you do this? Serum and egg containing culture media. Okay. Serum and egg containing culture media. You use this inspiration method. Clear all of you. Next important thing, tindalization. What did I tell you? Remember tinda as anda, right? Tinda or anda. Why? Because in tinda or anda, you use serum and egg containing culture media. You also do the sterilization for serum and egg containing culture media. Clear all of you. And in tindalization also, hundred min hundred degrees centigrade for twenty minutes every day like that for three days you have to use. So in the exam they are going to ask you what are the two methods where you use intermittent sterilization? One is called inspiration and the next one is tindalization. Clear? And now comes the exam asking point, very 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 important. That is about this autoclave. Now regarding this autoclave, just uh, remember here three important temperatures: one twenty one, next one twenty six. 
नेक्स्ट यू हैव गॉट 133 ओके द टेंपरेचर इज इंक्रीजिंग हियर ये याद रखो टेंपरेचर इज इंक्रीजिंग व्हिच इज डायरेक्टली प्रोपोर्शनल टू प्रेशर व्हिच इज इनडायरेक्टली प्रोपोर्शनल टू टाइम इनडायरेक्टली प्रोपोर्शनल टू योर टाइम व्हाट डिड आई टेल यू इन द स्टार्टिंग आई टोल्ड यू द हायर द टेंपरेचर द लेसर द टाइम ये देखो 121 को 15 20 मिनट्स टेंपरेचर बढ़ गई टाइम कम फिर से टेंपरेचर बढ़ा अगेन यू हैव रिड्यूस्ड द टाइम टू 3 मिनट्स बट लुक एट द प्रेशर 15 पर स्क्वायर इंच पीएसआई इज 15 पाउंड्स पर स्क्वायर इंच 15 20 एंड 30 ओके रिमेंबर दिस टेबल एट एनी कॉस्ट आई एम टेलिंग यू रिमेंबर दिस टेबल एट एनी कॉस्ट ओके राइट सो व्हाट आर द मटेरियल यू यूज हियर वी यूज कल्चर मीडिया एक्सेप्ट एग एंड सीरम कंटेनिंग मीडिया क्यों एग एंड सीरम कंटेनिंग मीडिया हम ऑलरेडी टिंडलाइजेशन और इंस्पिसेशन में यूज किया नाउ ऑल अदर सर्जिकल इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स अदर देन शार्प प्लास्टिक एंड रबर फोली स्केटर ग्लव प्लास्टिक सीरेंज यू नो दिस थिंग्स ओके नेक्स्ट द नेक्स्ट इंपॉर्टेंट मेथड विच वी यूज हियर इज फिल्टरेशन ठीक है विद इन दिस फिल्टरेशन देर आर टू टाइप्स ऑफ फिल्टर्स What are these two types of filters? Just I'm drawing one small picture. You'll understand it. For example, let us say uh, this is a box-like thing. This is another box-like thing. Okay. So what do you mean by deep filters? मतलब यहाँ पे ना filters ऊपर होगा और नीचे भी होगा. Okay. Membrane filters मतलब यहाँ पे filters सिर्फ ऊपर होगा. Only present on the top. So these are the two differences. एक हो गया deep filters, एक हो गया membrane filters. Now deep filters are the one which filter on the surface, which will also filter throughout the depth of the pore. Okay? Uh, Jackson about this uh, streptothermal bacteria, right? Thermophilus, which we use in autoclave. I'm going to uh, tell you down over here. Just pin that comment there. So filter on the surface and throughout the DBA. देखो surface और deep. When it comes to membrane, filter only on the surface. Okay. So candle filters or asbestos filters. These two filters are your deep filters. When it comes to membrane filters, HEPA filter, ULFA filter. ये दोनों last time they have asked this. Very important. HEPA filters. What is the efficacy of HEPA filters? They have a filtering capacity of about 99.97 percent. ULFA filters. They have a filtering capacity of about 99.99 percent. You are COVID masks. Whatever COVID masks are there, right? So in within these COVID masks, you use these filters only. Okay. Now don't think you use these filters in air conditions. No. Right. Now uh, in the in the next method we will discuss what about this radiation radiation mein kya hoga radiation mein nucleic acid damage hoga so from this radiation questions were not asked previously if you want to remember it or else just leave it okay two types of radiation we have got ionizing radiation non ionizing radiation ionizing radiation kya hoga this radiation it means it has got an increased penetrating power it can penetrate deep inside non ionizing radiation matlab it has a decreased penetrating power so for example ionizing radiation what are the things we basically sterilize here is cat gut sutures and non ionizing radiations we just need to uh, completely sterilize the entire ot theater and bio safety cabin we use non ionizing andar tak penetrate hone ki zarurat nahi hai okay so what are the examples x rays and gamma rays x rays are most commonly used you know they deep penetrate deep inside and uv rays are the non ionizing rays clear all of you the next important thing we shall be discussing is alcohol so regarding the chemical methods only few questions are asked repeatedly only those i will repeat it now uh within this the most commonly used is most commonly used method is alcohol with the help of alcohol we sterilize a lot of things you know Alcohol may be most commonly used. Alcohol is ethanol, or dusra isopropyl alcohol. Ye MCQ hai. Keep this thing in mind. Okay. Next, you also use another uh, substance called Cydex. Cydex kya hota hai? Exam mein na they won't mention it as glutaraldehyde. They will directly mention it as Cydex. So Cydex kis liye use karte ho? Any kind of fiber optic materials jo bhi hai, like cystoscope, bronchoscope, all the scopes. Scopes matlab jante ho na endoscope, all these scopes. All these are fiber optic scopes. 
for all the scopes you use glutaraldehyde very very important question very 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 important question next uh, easy things formaldehyde f for formaldehyde f for fumigation okay etvo 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 is your ethylene oxide you use ethylene oxide for heart lung machine you know there are in a pulmo departments you will have heart lung machines so to sterilize that we use so these are single uh, you know uh, single use questions which are all the time asked when it comes to sporicidal agents there are four important sporicidal agents eto is one among them formaldehyde is one among them glutaraldehyde is one among them these three things humne abhi discuss kiya iske sath sath halogens also you know in the periodic table the last part the halogens so halogens are also used here okay so what are the structures this was asked previously what are the structures that are more resistant to antiseptics antiseptic that are prions most sensitive to antiseptic is enveloped virus most resistant to antiseptic is prions most sensitive to antiseptic is enveloped virus now if you remembered all those things right now coming to the real part if you don't have time studying all these things and uh, at least at least at least remember that temperatures and remember this part this part is very 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 important what are the biological controls for the sterilizing methods in case of in case of let us say autoclave the bacteria which we used to check whether this autoclave is working or not is this particular bacillus thermophilus bacteria right so it is bacillus sterothermophilus bacteria this is a repeated question just now jackson is also telling in 2018 december they have repeated this question previous year question next hot air oven i just now told you hot air oven how do you remember this just remember the name first bacillus subtilis so bacillus subtilis is used as a uh, biological control over here i hope all of you understood what is biological control right how do you remember this how do you remember this is that whenever you visit a subway you know you go to the subway to eat whenever you go and eat the subway what they do they put all the stuff within the bread and they put down where do they put they'll put it in the oven you know hot oven so remember like that that subway is subtilis hot oven is the place where we put the things okay eto eto for eto the bacteria which we check is bacillus globigii okay bacillus globigii now how do you remember this how do you remember this remember it by this all of you yes 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 i will come back to that you are right vishu vishu you are perfectly right very good so how do you remember this is remember by mnemonic globe okay g l o b is bacillus globigii and e stands for e t o stands for e t o finally ionizing radiations whether these radiations are perfectly working or not we basically use bacillus pumilus the bacteria is bacillus pumilus how do you remember this remember it as r i p r and i stands for ionizing radiations p stands for pumilus and next important thing for filtration two types of filters i told you superficial membrane filters and deep filters for that we use ceratia marcescens what is that ceratia marcescens okay ceratia marcescens and also diminuta ceratia marcescens as well as diminuta okay sir how do i remember this remember it like this remember it as mars filter mars filter okay mars filter so remember it that way and remember one one more mcq over here this particular ceratia marcescens whatever is there right this ceratia marcescens is having colonies these colonies are called as red colonies okay why because this bacteria releases a red pigment red pigment okay all of you type in the internet and see ceratia marcescens the colonies are completely red because it releases a pigment called as the red pigment clear all of you 
एवरी वन इज क्लियर विथ ऑल द थिंग्स वी हैव डिस्कस अभी यहां से वॉट आर द क्वेश्चन दट आर आज आई एम गोइंग टू टेल यू सो द फर्स्ट इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग इज बायोलॉजिकल कंट्रोल फॉर स्टेलाइजिंग मेथड यहां से क्वेश्चन आएगा एंड फ्रॉम दीज ऑल्सो देर कैन बी क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम दीज पार्ट थर्ड इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग आई एम टेलिंग यू ग्लूट्राल डिहाइड साइड एक्स मोस्ट ऑफ द टाइम आस्ट uh from filters it is not asked any time filtration autoclave autoclave ka temperatures they asked it all the time most commonly you use is autoclave and kahan pe use karte ho ye yaad rakho culture media other surgical instruments plastic and other rubber materials okay tindalization is not asked any time inspiration is not much asked but ye pucha gaya tha holder method mein what is the organism you hold That is Coxiella burnetti. This was an MCQ that was asked previously. Okay. And dusra, this thing, this entire table, I want you to just remember it. Okay. And 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 yeah. Coming to the hot air oven also, this is very very important. The three temperatures. One key concept: temperature bada reduce the time. Temperature is inversely proportional to time. Temperature is increasing, time is decreasing. Okay. And that's it and yeah the this is also asked once about what is the mechanism of action of dry heat and moist heat in killing the organisms okay so that's it these are the so far questions which are asked previously guys if you understood these two files which i have discussed right now okay so i'll go on to the next important one that is your bacteriology right so the general part we have finished in 2 hours bacteriology virology right mycology and parasitology our target is to finish within 2 and half to 3 hours okay so totally as i promised you 4 to 5 hours we'll finish up the micro so all of you batao you understood all of these things before i move on to the next important part पी डी एफ वही बोला था टूडे इज संडे राइट सो इन द ऑफिस द टीम इज नॉट देर टू एडिट द पी डी एफ एंड ऑल सो आई विल एडिट द पी डी एफ टूमोरो आई विल गिव टू द टीम एंड सेंड इट इन द ग्रुप ओके राइट कमिंग टू द नेक्स्ट इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग कमिंग टू द नेक्स्ट इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग we are going to discuss many 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 important things in case of bacteriology see this is what i was telling you this is what i was telling you uh regarding the bacteriology part i was telling you this thing right so i have included even the x rays also so that uh, even your derma part even your uh, every part will be covered okay not only derma even your pharma part will be covered your uh, uh radio part will be covered and all these things will be covered over here right chalo let us discuss right now now coming to i will aryan i will tell you very clearly at the end of the session how to revise and all coming to this gram positive bacteria okay we are not going to discuss about each and every bacteria we will be discussing only those bacteria which are asked till date okay so most expected questions also we shall be discussing right now and i will also make you to do the questions gram positive bacteria is of three different types ek ho gaya bacilli cocci and branching filaments theek okay? hai most of the cocci are aerobic kyunki anaerobic cocci they don't live aerobic cocci are di divided into two different types one is called as i will come back to your comments guys let me just finish up this part this is a lengthy part aerobic is of two different types some aerobic species release catalase some do not release catalase so they are called catalase positive catalase negative usually staphylococci are the ones which are catalase positive and most of the streptococci are catalase negative now we will discuss about staphylococci so yahan pe ek mcq you understood that staphyl catalase positive organisms are what one example is staphylococci within the staphylococci there are two important things some release an enzyme called coagulase some do not release an enzyme called as coagulase so coagulase positive ek hai coagulase negative ek hai coagulase positive is staph aureus staphylococcus aureus you know how important this staph aureus is 
your entire orthopedics is based upon staph aureus only coming to coagulase negative we again divide into two types novobiosin sensitive novobiosin resistant abhi ye novobiosin sensitive resistant kya hai i'm just going to tell you one small concept and that concept will apply for everything ye dekho i have taken an agar plate in this agar plate what did i do is that uh, one half of the agar plate ye dekho one half of the agar plate i have added staph epidermidis and on the other half i have added staph saprophyticals okay add karne ke baad what did i do i have added an antibiotic tablet wo antibiotic tablet ka naam hai novobiosin so when i add this tablet antibiotic will kill the bacteria abhi yahan pe dekh sakte ho surrounding this blue color antibiotic you see a white zone matlab surrounding this uh, antibiotic all the bacteria are dead so it means staph epidermidis is responding to novobiosin so i am telling you that it is novobiosin sensitive but yahan pe dekho there is nothing that has happened no zone of inhibition so staph saprophyticus is novobiosin resistant i hope you understood this concept the same thing will apply for everything now what we will do is that the first organism which we shall be discussing right now is staph aureus if i ask staph aureus what will you tell it is gram positive cocci which is aerobic catalase positive and it is also coagulase positive right ये देखो लुक एट दिस दिस सेंटर टैबलेट वॉट एवर आई है एडेड ओवर हियर इज दैट टैबलेट एंड वन साइड देर इज अ जोन ऑफ इनहिबिशन इफ यू कैन वेरी क्लियरली सी हियर ये देखो ये जोन ऑफ इनहिबिशन है दिस इज स्टाफ एपिडर्मिडस एंड दिस इज स्टाफ सैप्रोफिटिकस विच इज रेसिस्टेंट ओके राइट लेट एस डिस्कस अबाउट स्टाफ और यस स्टाफ और यस कॉलोनीज आर गोल्डन एलो कॉलोनीज ये चीज याद रखो कैसे क्योंकि और मतलब और यस मतलब गोल्ड इन लैटिन यू कॉल इट एज गोल्डन सो द कॉलोनीज आर ऑल्सो गोल्डन येलो कलर कॉलोनीज रिमेंबर दिस वर्ड विच आई टोल्ड यू द इंग्लिश विच आई स्पोक राइट नाउ गोल्डन येलो कॉलोनीज गोल्डन येलो कॉलोनीज आर सीन इन स्टाफ और यस नाउ इफ दिस बैक्टीरिया एंटर्स इन टूर बॉडी हाउ विल दिस बैक्टीरिया एवेड यूर इम्यून सिस्टम एंड अटैक your host cells they say by a process called virulence factors what are the virulence factors that are located surrounding the bacteria thorn shape mein kya hai yahan pe hai na you see this protein a over here this protein a the main function of this protein a is it prevents phagocytosis the macrophages now cannot come and eat okay always and always remember guys protein a jo hai aur dusra capsule Bacteria will have capsule. These are the two things which are anti-phagocytic. Yad rakho. These are the two things which are anti-phagocytic: capsule and protein. A. Now coming to the toxins released by Staph aureus, guys. Ye topic hai na Staph aureus. Neat PG ke liye, USMLE ke liye, FMG ke liye, bahut bahut important hai. Very very important. And especially. Toxins released by Staph aureus is extremely important. You can remember by a mnemonic: rest. आर क्या होता है रैपिड ऑनसेट ऑफ फूड पॉइजनिंग व्हिच इज कॉज्ड बाय अ टॉक्सिन कॉल्ड एंटीरो टॉक्सिन ऑब्वियसली एंटीरो इन द सेंस इंटेस्टाइन टॉक्सिन कॉजेस फूड पॉइजनिंग ई स्टैंड्स फॉर एक्सफोलिएटिव टॉक्सिन एंड कहां पे देखते हो ये एक्सफोलिएटिव टॉक्सिन एस एस स्टैंड्स फॉर स्टेफाइलोकोकल स्किन स्कार्लेट सिंड्रोम दिस थिंग यू विल आल्सो स्टडी इन पीडियाट्रिक्स स्टेफाइलोकोकल स्किन स्कार्लेट सिंड्रोम एस 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 so in this the toxin is released that is called as exfoliative toxin and t matlab kya toxic shock syndrome causing toxin wo hai toxic shock syndrome toxin number 1 so what are the four toxins that are released r e s t okay that are released by staph aureus abhi isme se what are the toxins that are called as super antigens i will tell you what are super antigens in a minute but usse pehle ye cheez dekh lo ki what are super antigens two important things are super antigens toxin shock syndrome toxin number 1 ye super antigen hai aur dusra super antigen ye hai ki exfoliative toxin these two toxins are these two toxins are considered as super antigens these two toxins are considered as super antigens within this exfoliative toxin there are two components ak exfoliative toxin a aur ak exfoliative toxin b yahan tak yaad rakho bas nothing more than this 
ओके नाउ वी विल डिस्कस व्हाट इज सुपर एंटीजन ये देखो ऑल ऑफ यू पुट योर पेन्स डाउन इफ यू आर राइटिंग राइट जस्ट लिजन टू वट एवर आई एम टेलिंग जस्ट स्पेयर टू मिनट्स विथ मी वॉट इज सुपर एंटीजन मतलब यू कैन सी हियर टी सेल है T cell, T cell is having two important parts. One is called as an alpha subunit and beta subunit. Now, this part will also come in your pathology. Now, this is macrophage. This macrophage is having uh, MHC class two molecule. अब ये क्या करेगा? This macrophage will take this antigen. Okay? This macrophage will take this antigen. Go fit it within the T helper cell. अभी जब ये T cell activate होगा what will happen this t cell is going to release interferon gamma and this interferon gamma will activate what your macrophage ek bar macrophage activate ho gaya then macrophage will start releasing three important things interleukin 1 interleukin 6 and tnf alpha what are these three cytokines responsible they are responsible for causing fever in your pathology the question that is asked is fever is mainly responsible by interleukin 1 Next, interleukin six and TNF alpha will cause hypotension and desquamation. Desquamation means what? Removal of the skin. Ye dekho. This is called as desquamation. And the, in the exam, the question that is all the time asked is: Ye desquamation painful hoga ki painless hoga? Ye hoga painless desquamation. What kind of desquamation is this? This is your painless desquamation. Clear? Now. Now, what is the question I am asking to you is that? Now, you tell me, this antigen which is circular form, will it go and fit in uh, type two cell? It will not fit. Will this go and fit in type three cell? It will not fit. Type two cell के लिए rectangle चाहिए. Type three cell के लिए triangle चाहिए. So it means what I am telling is only one group of T cells are infected here, right? Now, what is super antigen? ये देखो सुपर एंटीजन ये होता है दिस इज सुपर एंटीजन सुपर एंटीजन पता क्या करेगा इट विल नॉट गो एंड फिट इन दिस इट विल गो एंड अटैक एंड एक्टिवेट फ्रॉम द साइड ये देखो फ्रॉम द साइड इट इज एक्टिवेटिंग द बीटा सब यूनिट ओके नेक्स्ट इट इज एक्टिवेटिंग द बीटा सब यूनिट देर नेक्स्ट डाउन हियर ऑल्सो फ्रॉम द साइड इट इज गोइंग एंड एक्टिवेटिंग यूर सेल नंबर टू डाउन हियर इट इज फ्रॉम द साइड गोइंग एंड एक्टिवेटिंग यूर सेल नंबर थ्री रिसेप्टर से और रिसेप्टर की शेप से कोई मतलब नहीं है इट इज गोइंग एंड एक्टिवेटिंग ऑन द साइड इन एम्स एग्जाम दे आस्क दिस क्वेश्चन दैट सुपर एंटीजन बाइंड्स टू विच यूनिट ऑफ टी सेल टी हेल्पर सेल टी सेल रिसेप्टर इट विल गो एंड बाइंड टू बीटा यूनिट ऑफ टी सेल रिसेप्टर दिस इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन विच यू नीड टू रिमेंबर विच वॉज प्रीवियसली आस्ड ओके सो ऑल ऑफ यू अंडरस्टैंड so it means super antigen is activating type 1 cell type 2 cell type 3 cell ab iska matlab kya hai there is excess amount of interleukin 1 6 and tnf alpha is released it means the fever hypotension and desquamation will be too severe in a patient when this happens this condition you call it as toxic shock syndrome okay in this patient there is toxic shock syndrome clear all of you now once the discussion of toxic shock syndrome is done once the discussion of super antigen is done let us now discuss let us now discuss for for your exam guys don't write all these things now okay exam ke liye yahi cheez yaad rakho ki super antigens kya hai these two and exfoliative toxin mein kitne components hai a and b bas ye kafi hai ye sirf explanation maine diya hai aap logo ko theek hai don't write these things and uh, write this thing also very important ab ye dekho exfoliative toxin the name itself says exfoliation right you are completely removing the layers of the skin kaise how in your dermatology the moment you start studying dermatology the first thing you study is in the first chapter layers of epidermis what are the layers of epidermis guys stratum basale uske upar spinosum uske upar granulosum aur uske upar corneum ab ye dekho स्पाइनोजम और ग्रैनुलोजम के बीच में यू हैव दीज लाइन्स विच आर होल्डिंग बोथ द सेल्स टूगेदर विच आर कॉल्ड एस डेस्मोजोम्स है ना सो दीज डेस्मोजोम्स आर मेड अप ऑफ वॉट दे आर मेड अप ऑफ डेस्मोग्लिन वन डेस्मोग्लिन थ्री ये सब कुछ यू हैव स्टडीड इन यूर डर्मेटोलॉजी ओके सो वन इज डेस्मोग्लिन वन एंड डेस्मोग्लिन थ्री ओके 
नाउ दिस एक्सफोलियटिव टॉक्सिन जो है ना यू नो वॉट इट विल डू इट विल गो एंड डैमेज डेस्मोग्लिन वन एंड डेस्मोग्लिन थ्री अगर डैमेज हुआ इफ दीज टू थिंग्स आर डैमेज डू यू थिंक ऑल द सेल्स विल बी लाइक दिस और विल द सेल्स गेट सेपरेटेड फ्रॉम ईच अदर ये देखो सेल्स आर सेपरेटेड फ्रॉम ईच अदर एंड वंस द सेल्स आर सेपरेटेड क्या होगा नीचे से जो पानी है ऑल द वॉटर विल कम एंड एक्यूमुलेट ओवर हियर ये देखो ऑल द वॉटर गॉट एक्यूमुलेटेड एंड वेन द वॉटर गेट्स एक्यूमुलेटेड दिस इज हाउ ए बुल्ला इज फॉर्म ओके दिस इज हाउ ए बुल्ला इज फॉर्म If you see this picture, then straight away put the option as exfoliative toxin. What will you put? Exfoliative toxin. Okay. You put the option as exfoliative toxin. Now, when the bulla will rupture, this is how it is seen. Okay. So the first important question that is asked is: Patient will have Nikolsky sign positive. In which case, it will be in Staph aureus. Okay. Why? Because in Staph aureus, this kind of bulla you call it as bullous impetigo. क्या बोलते हैं इसको? You call it as bullous impetigo. Bullous impetigo. Later on, I will discuss what is non-bullous impetigo. याद रखो ये नाम. Non-bullous impetigo अलग है. This is bullous impetigo. Okay? So Nikolsky is kind positive मतलब in derma you might have studied. There is a bulla, right? You will be able to push the bulla, and the bulla will move forward. Okay? If it is moving forward, it means it is Nikolsky sign positive. And last toxin is enterotoxin. We have already discussed kiya, which is responsible for causing food poisoning. Abhi enterotoxin lene ke baad, after two to six hours, I will have this food poisoning. All of you are understanding, guys. Whatever I am teaching, everyone. I know I am little bit fast, but you know. in a short time i have to complete lot of things that is why i have to be little bit fast anyways na jab i'll give you this pdf it will be dead easy for you to just revise the things okay right coming to what are the common causes of food poisoning again i'm telling you again i'm telling you this question can be asked and this this is a this is a part which i have taken from infectious disease okay From infectious diseases, these are the questions that are most commonly asked. ये चीज याद रखो. First thing, serious मतलब क्या? Cereals. Cereals मतलब rice, है ना? So bacillus cereus is caused by eating fried rice. Incubation period one to five hours. ठीक है? Incubation period is within one to five hours. After five, what is after one? What is the next number? Two. ये देखो नीचे two है. Okay. Thank you so much, Prashant. After five, क्या है? The next number is six. Okay. After five, the next number is six. Now, next important thing is staph aureus. मैंने just now बोला था staph aureus का two to six hours से incubation period. Okay. After reading what? Meat, fish, and milk. Sir, कैसे याद रखना है? Staph मतलब क्या? You are working in an office. ठीक है? If you are working in an office, you will have a staph. कभी कभी स्टाफ को पार्टी लेके जाना पड़ेगा यू विल टेक देम टू पार्टी इन द पार्टी व्हाट विल यू ऑफर यू विल ऑफर मीट यू विल ऑफर फिश यू विल आल्सो ऑफर मिल्क ओके यू विल ऑफर मीट यू विल ऑफर फिश यू विल ऑफर मिल्क ओके नेक्स्ट इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग इज क्लॉस्ट्रेडियम परफ्रेंजेस इंक्यूबेशन पीरियड इज एट टू ट्वेंटी फोर आवर्स ओके ऑलवेज रिमेंबर क्लॉस्ट्रेडियम इज कोल्ड हाउ डू यू रिमेंबर दिस यू रिमेंबर दिस बाय एनिमोनिक दट इज क्लॉस्ट्रीडियम इज कोल्ड कोल्ड इन देंस कोल्ड मीट डिशेस विच यू नॉट हीटेड इट एनफ ओके नेक्स्ट इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग नेक्स्ट इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग क्लॉस्ट्रीडियम बोटोलिनम राइट क्लॉस्ट्रीडियम बोटोलिनम द इंक्यूबेशन पीरियड इज ट्वेल्व टू थर्टी सिक्स आवर्स ओके सो वॉट यू डू ट्वेंटी फोर एड विथ ट्वेल्व इट विल बी थर्टी सिक्स ओके सो इन क्लॉस्ट्रीडियम बोटोलिनम You use canned meat, okay? Which meat you use? Canned meat, okay? Now, next important thing is uh, salmonella. Salmonella is mainly contracted with the help of undercooked poultry meat as well as milk, okay? Just remember it as a uh, twenty-four hours incubation. Coming to Vibrio parahemolyticus, incubation period is four hours and seafood, okay? So how do you remember this? What is this C? C मतलब what do you mean by C? C is nothing but seeing. 
how do you see see with your eyes right surrounding the nose how many eyes are there on right and left two eyes you have got it means can i tell if i am taking nose in the center para on other sides on either sides para sides i have got eyes para in the sense para hemolyticus okay and finally campylobacter jejuni 1 to 7 days that is raw milk ingestion of raw milk will lead to this important thing clear all of you so there is nothing to explain here you just need to remember this cram this away okay so that it would be easy for you next important thing is that there is another important concept which is asked nowadays about staph sepsis for example in a hospital there are a lot of patients who are having staphylococcus infections there is sepsis that is widespread in the hospital now you you have to also check the hospital staff also yes or no in case of outbreak you even have to do a test for hospital staff now the test which you do is called a screening test right sir will these questions come why are you telling why am i telling is that you should know important thing where does this staph aureus lies this staph aureus most commonly it lies in the anterior nasal cavity okay this is a very important thing anterior nares it mainly lies where it lies in the anterior nares this is a very important thing so you take a swab from here and do a rapid antigen testing and after doing a rapid antigen testing if it is positive then you give two important antibiotics one is called as chlorexidin and mupirocin okay these are the things you apply topically okay one is mupirocin another one is chlorexidin so i just want to tell you this thing that in case of an outbreak of staph sepsis what medis medications you use is mupirocin and chlorexidin much more details will be discussed in pharma clear all of you so overall what diseases i get by staph aureus okay so this is an uh, mnemonic which i found in the internet that is soft pains okay what is soft pains soft tissue infection o stands for otitis media otitis media is infection of your middle ear third is food poisoning with the help of enterotoxin i told you tss in the sense toxic shock syndrome by the help of the toxin toxic shock syndrome toxin number one next p in the sense pneumonia acute endocarditis infective arthritis necrotizing fasciitis and sepsis so these are the things which you just need to remember them okay uh, these are the overall uh, diseases that are caused by staph aureus how do you treat them how do you treat is that you treat by using two important things one is called as methicillin another one is called as nephicillin okay penicillins like nephicillin and as well as methicillin okay you have given but still the patient is developing the disease it means these organisms are resistant to methicillin and nephicillin so in case of mrsa methicillin resistant staph aureus what is the drug of choice vancomycin sometimes strains are also resistant to vancomycin also so in case of vancomycin resistant staph aureus what is the drug of choice linezolid okay drug of choice would be what linezolid clear all of you remember these things we will be doing the questions right now these things will be repeated there so these are the one liners most common cause of acute endocarditis is uh, staph aureus most common cause of early prosthetic valve endocarditis there are two endocarditis here after replacing the prosthetic valve one is early one is late early is cons cons matlab kya what is cons coagulase negative staphylococci we discussed above there coagulase negative staphylococci late prosthetic valve endocarditis is streptococcus viridens okay subacute endocarditis is also caused by streptococcus viridens okay see this is cons cons has got two things staph epidermidis staph saprophyticus okay right the next important thing is the questions which you will be doing right now guys tell me the answers very fastly very 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 fastly and we are not going to do all the questions here we don't have time so we will put some questions there so that you will answer in the chat box later on okay skin scalded syndrome is caused by exotoxin produced by very very simple question very simple question the answer is staph aureus okay 
Staphylococcus aureus is most often associated with bean. What is this? Is it a cops or cons? Is it coagulase positive or coagulase negative? Batao jaldi. Be fast. Very good, Lydia. It is coagulase positive. Prashant, very good. Anuj, perfect. Abhi ye dekho. Look at this question. 63 year old female uh, recovering from total shoulder arthroplasty completed 6 days ago. Presence complaining of joint pain in her repaired shoulder. Temperature how much? 39 degrees centigrade which means febrile. Physical examination demonstrates erythema and significant tenderness around the incision site. Wound cultures reveal, look at this one. Wound cultures reveal gram positive cocci, gram positive cocci, which is resistant to nephicillin. See, what is the strain that is resistant to nephicillin? That is MRSA strain, right? Which of the following organisms is most likely the cause of this patient? Very, very easy. That is, what is the answer here? Staph aureus. Only this can be resistant to nephicillin. Clear? Very good and I am leaving, I am leaving this particular question for you, okay, you need to comment down later, comment down later, okay. Let us go on to the next important group now, this is the Staphylococci, just now we discussed COPS, CONS, COPS is coagulase positive, CONS is coagulase negative, we are done with Staph or yes. Now we will discuss about these two, Staph Epidermidus as well as Staph Saprophyticus. Coming to Staph Epidermidus, coming to Staph Epidermidus, where do you find Staph Epidermidus? The name itself says Epidermidus. Skin ke upar agar stitches hai, if there are stitches on the skin, the infection which will develop into that stitches is Staph Epidermidus. So it can cause stitch abscess. Second important thing. Grows on implanted foreign bodies. Implanted foreign bodies matlab kya ho sakta hai? Can I tell prosthetic valves in the heart? Right? Can I tell uh, catheters which you are putting inside Foley's catheter wo jo urine pipe lagate ho? Can I tell uh, uh, intubation tubes which you are putting inside? So all these are the implanted foreign bodies. Right? All these implanted foreign bodies mein catheters bhi aayenge. Right? You even put the surgical, uh, this one, the OT mass, the Hudson mass, all these masks also, they come under this. So, important thing you need to know is that it is surrounding this bacteria, Staph epidermidus, there is a jelly layer. This particular jelly layer is called as glycocalyx or slime layer or biofilm. Okay. It is because of the jelly layer, the bacteria will very easily stick to the surface of the needle, stick to the surface of the urinary pipes or prosthetic wells or whatever it is. So, stick to the prosthetic devices or artificial walls and cause endocarditis. Okay. Now, next important question. Most common cause, most common cause of UTI in the females. Kya ho sakta hai? E. coli. Most common cause of UTI in sexually active females. Sexually active matlab kya ho sakta hai? 18 to 45 years hai na? 18 to 45 years. If you are too much romantic enough, you can take it to 50 years also. So, 18 to 45 years is sexually active, where Staph saprophyticus is the main cause of UTI. Most common cause of UTI in indwelling catheter. Pata hai indwelling catheter matlab kya ho sakta hai? Foley's catheter. One example I will give. Foley's catheter matlab wo jo urine pipe dalta hai na andar, that is Foley's catheter. So, Pseudomonas aeruginosa will be the cause. So, you have to look in the question, is the age of the female between this age group, is the patient admitted in the hospital with a Foley's catheter not changed for more than one week? So, based upon the question, you have to change your answer. Okay? Very good. So, let us do uh, this question here and I will leave this question for you. Let us do this uh, simple question over here. 25 year, 25 year old woman, 25 year is a sexually active age, presents to the clinic with complaints of dysuria and increased urinary frequency, okay, her urine, it means, it means what, 
dysuria increase urinary frequency in medicine if you see this question put this as urinary tract infection okay our urine analysis results are negative for nitrites urine microscopy findings show urine microscopy may kya dika grape shaped organisms what are these grape shaped organisms these are staphylococci but we don't know which is staphylococci right so he is telling which is the most likely underlying her symptoms what will be the answer look at the age 25 sexually active second important thing she is having uti most common cause of uti in sexually active females badao what will be the answer here be very fast be quick very good very good multi star very good it is staphylococcus saprophyticus okay and i'm leaving this particular question for you just do this question and answer me later on okay right once i put the pdf there or in the comment section whatever it is answer it later on so coming to the gram positive bacteria the next group we are discussing right now bacilli cocci branching filaments maine already bola tha right within this within this aerobic organisms mein do i told you staphylococci most of the time is catalase positive streptococci most of the time is catalase negative staphylococci we are done discussing it coming to streptococci there are three important types alpha hemolysis beta hemolysis gamma hemolysis write it down now itself alpha hemolysis ko you call it as green hemolysis beta hemolysis is called as complete hemolysis gamma hemolysis is called as incomplete hemolysis okay incomplete hemolysis now you are dividing this alpha hemolytic bacteria based upon optochin ab ye kya hai optochin starting mein yaad hai i told you novobiosin put a tablet in the center zone of inhibition same concept change that tablet that is called as optochin instead of everything now put optochin tablet optochin sensitive that is streptococcus pneumonia optochin resistant that is viridens streptococci clear all of you just you need to remember this table streptococcus pneumonia right is encapsulated which has got a capsule viridens streptococci does not have a capsule it is unencapsulated this is a very important question streptococcus pneumonia if you learn this right now your pathology part will be completed and your medicine part also will be completed guys here just pay focus on this part here coming to streptococcus pneumonia just now i told you it is an encapsulated bacteria okay encapsulated when in the staining methods i told you one thing if you remember capsule cannot be stained bacteria will stain background will stain but capsule cannot be stained that kind of staining method you call it as negative staining method you remember i told you negative staining method wahan pe do colors use karte hain hum one is called as indian ink another one is called as nigrosin indian ink is the cheap nigrosin is the best right now i'm telling you one more thing after this indian ink i am also telling you quilling reaction quilling reaction matlab kya very simple throw the bacteria into the agar plate after that add some serum serum contains what antibodies if capsule is present for this bacteria these antibodies will attach to the capsule cause swelling of the capsule okay if swelling is happening this reaction is called as quilling how do you remember quilling sounds like swelling okay quilling sounds like swelling of the capsule all of you look at this picture you see capsule is swollen bacteria this is bacteria surrounding this capsule is swollen but here there is no capsule that is the reason why there is no swelling so if you see this picture will you put in the exam as this is the uh, test that is done for capsule and this is called as quilling reaction yes or no jaldi fada fad very good what is the shape of streptococcus pneumonia so streptococci is in a pair right so pair matlab kya diplococci yes or no and this this is the shape like this what is the shape the shape is lanceolate diplococci this shape is lanceolate shape and it is lanceolate diplococci compare this picture with this picture yahan pe bhi dekho you see this how is this 
it is lanceolate diplococci here lanceolate diplococci if they give this picture in the exam please i'm telling you put the answer as streptococcus pneumonia don't confuse here sir how will you cultivate how will you culture this streptococcus pneumonia i will culture on the blood agar okay you know right remember that blood agar i told you so when you cultivate this on the blood agar what kind of colonies you see extremely important extremely important rotsman or carom coin appearance rotsman or carom coin appearance even in the medicine in the respiratory part when you study the pneumonia there you will see carom coin appearance seen on the blood agar okay very 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 important so you wanted to re uh, remember what are the virulence factors that are released by this streptococcus pneumonia remember as topi t stands for what t coic acid okay o stands for what otitis media it even causes otitis media you know pneumonia causes otitis media whenever patient is having pneumonia he will also have a link with the uh, middle ear infections also third is pneumolysin o it is releasing a toxin called as pneumolysin o and fourth is iga protease with the help of iga protease it will colonize in the pharynx kaise within the mouth you have got iga yes or no within the mouth you have got iga bacteria will enter this iga will attack that bacteria agar attack nahi hona chahiye if attack should not happen what should the bacteria do bacteria should release iga protease this protease will kill down the iga and so the bacteria can live peacefully colonization of bacteria in the pharynx this was a question asked which virulence factor will help that is iga protease okay next medicine link over here what is the medicine link that is what what is the diagnosis you look at the sputum you see a rusty colored sputum in case of pneumonia ye cheez yaad rakho what is this rusty colored sputum now sir you are telling that um, streptococcus pneumonia causes meningitis yes because of what because of t coic acid it causes meningitis okay now here itself in a single box over here i am going to mention meningitis is caused by what all microorganisms isko rat lo kuch bhi kar lo i am telling you just remember this at any cost okay meningitis in children meningitis in adults meningitis in elderly in children mainly meningitis is caused by sin s i n sin s stands for streptococcus pneumonia i stands for haemophilus influenza and n stands for neisseria meningitis these are the three infections um, that are causing meningitis in children these are the three things that cause meningitis in children coming to adults adults may meningitis is caused by streptococcus pneumonia and neisseria meningitis coming to elderly in elderly the meningitis is caused by streptococcus pneumonia staph aureus and these three important organisms so what i'm trying what i'm pushing one point into your mind is that streptococcus pneumonia whether it might be child adult elderly all of them it causes meningitis ye cheez yaad rakho all of you are clear with this everyone everyone is clear guys so let me stop for a while and ask you if you are all clear or no then i can go to the treatment part aditi gupta didia clear very good um Prashant, very good. Very good. Now, what is the treatment which you give for streptococcus pneumonia? The treatment is there are two different types of strains. Good strains, ah, right? they are sensitive to penicillin. Some strains are not at all sensitive to penicillin. So these are called as penicillin susceptible. Other strains are called as penicillin resistant. पेंसिलिन ससेप्टेबल को क्या देंगे हम पेंसिलिन देंगे राइट विल गिव यू विल गिव पेंसिलिन लाइक पेनिसिलिन और थर्ड जनरेशन सेफेलोस्पोरिनस यू विल गिव ओके आई एम नॉट गोइंग इनटू मच डिटेल ऑफ फार्मा आई एम जस्ट डेवलपिंग अ स्मॉल लिंक हियर दैट्स इट ओके 
when it comes to penicillin resistant you use vancomycin vancomycin you remember you also use in case of mrsa strains the drug of choice is vancomycin sir you also told otitis media uske liye kaun sa dawai otitis media you give amoxicillin patients with otitis media in case of streptococcus pneumonia you give amoxicillin right let us make out the differences between pneumococcus streptococcus pneumonia and streptococcus viridens see here here streptococcus pneumonia is there viridens streptococca is there right optogen sensitive and resistant let us make the differences between both of them these differences were previously asked that is the reason why i have kept it here so if you look at the bile solubility pneumococcus is pneumococcus takes the positive advantage in all of them viridens is negative in all of them bile solubility is seen here it is not seen here inulin fermentation done here it is not seen here optogen sensitivity this point we have discussed in the starting itself this is optogen sensitive streptococcus viridens or viridens streptococca is optogen resistant resistant okay right let us do this question now let us do this question 60 year old man presents with fever listen fever productive cough of rusty colored sputum pata hai ye question maine kahan se uthaya i have directly uh, picked up this question from medicine part so fever cough productive sputum of rusty colored sputum remember and is diagnosed with community acquired pneumonia the causative organism is isolated and a gram stain is shown in the figure 1 ये देखो ये ग्राम स्टेनिंग मेथड है नाउ इन दिस ग्राम स्टेन व्हाट आई कैन सी आई कैन सी डिप्लो ये देखो डिप्लो आई कैन सी राइट सो ही इज आस्किंग व्हाट आर द फीचर्स ऑफ दिस ऑर्गेनिज्म बताओ कौन सा फीचर्स है यू विल टेल मी व्हाट विल बी द फीचर्स एवरीवन विल आंसर नाउ वेरी फास्टली जस्ट राइट डाउन द ऑप्शन very good very good it is catalase negative it is alpha hemolytic it is optogen sensitive this is nothing new in that uh, logarithm whatever in the table whatever i have given exactly it is present in the table if you practice the table you will answer this question okay so it is catalase negative alpha hemolytic as well as optogen resistant sensitive now let us discuss about a question that will be 100% asked just remember this it will be 100% asked that is the differences between neisseria meningitis and neisseria gonococci pakka it will be asked just uh, follow the things which i am telling you this is these both neisseria n stands for negative that is why it is gram negative bacteria okay and it is a diplococci based upon maltose if it ferments maltose it is maltose fermenter it is non maltose fermenter if It, if it doesn't ferment maltose look at meningococci and gonococci meningococci is having letter m and g m matlab kya maltose fermenter g matlab kya glucose fermenter but whereas gonococci is having only g it means only glucose fermenter not maltose fermenter like this you remember this okay second important point second important point if you look at the differences meningococcus is a capsulated gonococcus is a non capsulated meningococcus is lens shaped very important very very important lens shaped whereas gonococcus is kidney shaped kaise gonococcus g g looks like a kidney so kidney shaped organism meningococcus ferment maltose and glucose just now discussed very important question only glucose okay what is the vaccine which you have here capsular type b vaccine and here there is no vaccine why there is no vaccine in case of gonococci kyunki gonococci ka antigens whatever are there these antigens they keep on changing that is why you cannot prepare a toxin so you called as antigenic variation again an important point okay you are telling me gonococci is having a polysaccharide capsule but what is meningococci uh, sorry you are telling me that meningococci is encapsulated so what is the capsule made up of capsule is made up of polysaccharide capsule but whereas in gonococci no capsule clear so this is a picture of uh, meningococci 
this is a picture of gonococci where where you can see a kidney shape over here you see a kidney shape right so this is a kidney shaped organism i don't think so it will be difficult for you to identify these organisms right so previously itself i told you where do you cultivate these organisms where do you culture these organisms they are martin martin got two infections one is gonorrhea one is meningitis so the medium which you use over here is Thayer Martin medium, selective media, right? So Vanco Niprim, you remember Vanco Niprim? Right. Coming to another important thing that is virulence factors. What are the virulence factors? So this is a bacteria which is Diplococci. It has got five important virulence factors. The first is pili. This is called as pili. Second important thing is OPA protein, OPA protein. OPA protein is of two types. One is OP pro, OPA, one is OPB. Sorry, OPA and OPC. OPC. OP matlab kya? OP matlab opacity protein. Opacity protein. Third important thing here it is having is a capsule and ye wala capsule mein just now I told you this is polysaccharide capsule. This is polysaccharide capsule. Fourth important thing is that this is having an endotoxin called as lipo oligosaccharide. Lipo oligosaccharide, not, not lipo polysaccharide. It is lipo oligosaccharide. Lipo polysaccharide endotoxin, hai, I can agree. But lipo oligosaccharide is a stronger endotoxin. It is a strong endotoxin. And finally, you will have in the mouth, what did I tell you? IgA. Protease. Where did we see IgA protease? Batao. One is here, Neseria. Two other places also we see IgA protease. Those two other places are one is your Streptococcus pneumoniae, which we discussed right now, and second is Haemophilus influenza. In these two places also you see this infection. All of you are clear, guys. Before I go to the clinical manifestations. Very good. Coming to the clinical manifestations, uh, you need not to draw this picture. Just for the explanation purpose, I have kept it here. May, uh, just remember through the picture, it will be easy. See, Neisseria meningitis, what does it cause? The name itself says meninges. So, meningitis is definitely caused. That is why meningitis is the most severe uh, problem. Most common problem is rashes. These two are the two questions which were asked. Most severe uh, most severe clinical manifestation you see is meningitis. Most common manifestation you see is rashes. Next important thing, if you look at these bacilli, uh, sorry, this cocci, these bacteria from, from the mouth, they will enter into the bloodstream. From the bloodstream, they go to the brain. Okay. Second important possibility is that from here, they enter into the bloodstream and they are coming down all the way. They enter and end up in your adrenal gland. Once they deposit in the adrenal gland, they are going to damage your adrenal gland and this would lead to a condition called as Waterhouse Fredrickson syndrome. Okay, Waterhouse Fredrickson syndrome. So both the sides, bilateral adrenal gland hemorrhage is seen. Suddenly adrenal gland will blast out like anything. Okay, it will be damaged. So next important thing what did i tell you it is having it is also releasing endotoxin endotoxin cuts only three actions are there disseminated over coagulation shock and fever these are the three important actions of endotoxins so meningitis why you know waterhouse syndrome why now you know rashes more common next lipo oligosaccharide ki vajah, there will be shock okay if you remember these four important points, the topic here is done. Clear? Thank you so much, Sharad. Right. Now, how many pathogenic strains are there here? That is very important. Polysaccharide capsule. It is made up of polysaccharide. You know that it is having 13 zero groups. Out of these 13 zero groups, how many Neisseria meningococci are actually causing infection? Only five groups. What are these fry? A, B, C, W, Y. Okay. A, B, C, W and Y. These are the five zero groups that are responsible to cause the disease. 
Now, what should I do? I have to make toxins, I have to make vaccines against these five groups, right? Now, how many, what is a vaccine that is present against this meningitis is that quadrivalent meningococcal polysaccharide vaccine. Why quadrivalent? Because I am able to make a vaccine against zero group A, C, W, Y, but not B, but not B. So, no vaccine against zero group B. Leaving zero group B, A, C, W, Y, against this four zero groups, quadrivalent meningococcal polysaccharide vaccine uh, is basically present. And where it comes to gonococci, I cannot prepare a vaccine because of antigenic variation. Ye word yaad karako, antigenic variation. Okay? So, you told me most common kya hai? Rash. How does a rash look? This is a rash. This is... This is characteristic rash for meningococcal septicemia. Yaad rakho is rash ko. Whenever you look this rash with a large purpura, this is hemorrhagic rash. All of you understood this. Everyone is understanding. Clear everyone? Right. So all of you look here now. Look at this particular question over here. A 15 year old female is brought to the emergency room with high fever and confusion. See, 15 years, high fever, confusion. Hai. She complains of chills and myalgia and physical examination reveals a petechial rash. There is some rash on the body. Petechial biopsy reveals gram negative diplococcus. The patient, gram-negative diplococcus, matlab, either it can be Neisseria meningitis or it can be Neisseria gonococci, right? But she is also having rash. Rash is characteristic for gonococci or meningitis, meningitis. So, she is at a greater risk of developing what? Batao, who will tell me the answer? Greater risk of developing what? Prabha, very good, very good Prabha. It is bilateral adrenal gland destruction, which you also call it as Waterhouse Fredrickson syndrome. Okay, Waterhouse. This is also the question that I have lifted from the medicine part. Okay, so we are successfully covering all the subjects here as much as I can. Okay, so uh, just remember these things. This would be mostly useful for you. Okay. So, coming to the gonococci, gonococci will cause infections in men, it will cause infections in women, it will cause infections in neonate. In the men, what infections does it cause? Look here. If gonococci will enter into the urethra, it will cause urethritis. This is the most common infection that is caused. First thing. How will you tell that this patient is having gonococcal urethritis? If you see pus discharge that is coming out of the urethra. Second, agar infection thoda upar gai, if it went little bit above, that will infect the prostate causing prostritis. If it will go little bit above into the urinary bladder, this would cause a condition called as cystitis. So, three important things. One is urethritis, prostritis, cystitis. These are the three infections caused in men. Okay. When it comes to women, in women, what are the infections that are caused? Now, this is the part that I have taken from the surgery. Okay, so this will be useful for you. So, what are the three infections that are caused in women? One is perianal abscess or water can perineum. Ye dekho, anus ke surrounding abscess hai, right? But when I, when I have removed these abscesses, you see there is a tunnel like thing inside, right? So, this is what is called as water can perineum or perianal abscess. This is caused by what? Neisseria gonococci. It is a gonococcal infection. Second, Perihepatitis or fitz huck cutis syndrome. This is also a surgery point. So, any patient who is having PID, pelvic inflammatory disease, the infection from here can spread to the uh, liver. Once it will spread to the liver from even your uh, fallopian tubes also, that would result in perihepatitis. Perihepatitis means surrounding the liver. You see these structures, right? Pata ye surgery mein or OBGY mein bhi hai ye question. You know what they asked? What are these strings? These strings are looking like violin strings. So, where you see this violin string appearance, you see in case of gonococcal, gonococcal infections in females, that is perihepatitis. Right? 
And in the neonate, what is the infection you see? In the neonate, you come across an infection called as ophthalmia neonatorum. Very commonly, you can see. That is the reason why if mother is having uh, gonorrhea, immediately after the delivery, this is a point which they tell you in pediatrics. Immediately after the delivery, mother vaginal lips will touch to the eyes, which would result in ophthalmia neonatorum. So immediately after delivery, you will give topical erythromycin, tetracycline or silver nitrate. Okay, so you give that subset. Ho gaya. Okay, kya ho gaya? set. Set stands for what? Silver nitrate, E stands for erythromycin, T stands for tetracycline. Okay, but if you are using a silver nitrate drops, that method you call it as Creed's method. Ye yaad rakho. This is a question that was asked from your pediatrics. Okay, question that is asked from your pediatrics, Creed's method. Guys, are you all okay with the interlink which I'm doing with other subjects or you're not okay with that? So I'm also teaching micro also along with the other subjects. Clear all of you, right? Right. Second important thing over here is Second important thing over here is most common cause of pelvic inflammatory disease worldwide. Worldwide kya hoga? Worldwide it is gonococci, but India mein TB. TB causes PID? Yes, TB causes PID. This was a point which this was a point which will be taught in OBGY that in India the PID cases most of them are because of TB infection. Next most common cause of septic arthritis in adult is gonococci. Keep this thing in mind. So, regarding the treatment, uh, Neisseria meningitis and Neisseria gonococci, initial therapy, the pharma link, initial therapy, what is the drug of choice which you give? That is cefotaxim or ceftriaxone. These are what? Third generation cephalosporins. Anna? But for profile axis, what do you give? You give rifampicin. Next, Neisseria gonococci. Initial therapy, kya again the same, Cep third generation cephalosporins you give. Agar resistance, if the patient developed resistance to this, you need to switch the antibiotic to penicillin. Okay, so this is all the discussion about Neisseria meningitis and Neisseria gonococci. Right, so just do these questions fada fad guys, very fastly. Only bacteriology part is lengthy part. Once if we finish up this, Right, uh, 20 more pages are there. Once you finish up this, Baki parts are very easy, very simply, we can finish it off. Okay. A 22 year old man presented with a high grade fever and purputic rash. Yeah, they go high grade fever and purputic rash. Abhi, in dono mein, the thing which is uh, tempting me is purputic rash. CSF shows gram negative diplococci, which is the most probable. Batao? Very good, very good. Neisseria meningitis. A patient presents with urethral discharge. Urethral discharge ka pe dekoge, you will see in urethritis. That is gonococcal urethritis in males, right? Gram strain me smear is made. From this I can see uh, kidney shaped organisms. So the answer would be what? Neisseria. Neisseria what? Neisseria meningitis or Neisseria gonococci. Batao. Neisseria meningitis or Neisseria gonococci? Very good, Neisseria gonococci. Right. Next important thing that in the textbook it is also given that gonococci is also caused, uh, sorry, urethritis. Urethritis is also caused because of some other organisms. So this is called as non gonococcal urethritis. Okay. What are non gonococcal urethritis? It is also called non-specific urethritis. What are the organisms that are caused are ye pneumonic yaad rakho. My classmate can trigger herpes. Okay? My classmate can trigger herpes. My matlab kya hoga? Mycoplasma hominis. Classmate matlab kya hoga? Chlamydia. Cla cla chlamydia. Okay? Can is what? Can is candida albicans. Trigger. What do you trigger over here? Trigger is trichomonas vaginalis. Okay. What do you trigger over here? You trigger trichomonas vaginalis. Herpes is herpes virus. Very clear, right? My classmate can trigger herpes. These are the structures. Uh, sorry, these are the organisms 
विच कॉज नॉन गोनोकोकल यूरेथराइटिस बस याद रखो इसको काफी है नेक्स्ट इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग इज कैटेलिस नेगेटिव ऑर्गेनिज्म इन दिस कैटेलिस नेगेटिव ऑर्गेनिज्म we done with alpha hemolysis right we will discuss about beta hemolysis beta b for beta b for base iteration what is base iteration again you know what is novo biosin wahan pe discuss kiya tha tablet dal do right optoch in the same remove both of them add a new tablet that is base iteration sensitive resistant sensitive is group a streptococci people who are sitting in the first benches are always sensitive right so group a streptococci okay so that causes what streptococcus pyogenes next group b who are in the back benches they are resistant to everything and the organism is streptococcus a galactaceae okay let us discuss about both of this coming to streptococcus pyogenes so far the question which was asked is what are the virulence factors very 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 important question okay how do you remember homes homes matlab ghar होम्स केडीएच मतलब किल द हाउस एंटर इनटू द हाउस एंड किल द हाउस आई मीन किल द पीपल ऑफ द हाउस ठीक है डोंट टेक इट सीरियसली होम्स केडीएच एच स्टैंड्स फॉर हायलुरोनिक एसिड कैप्सूल ठीक है ओ स्टैंड्स फॉर स्ट्रेप्टोलाइसिन ओ इफ आई गेट कॉफ टुडे बिकॉज ऑफ स्ट्रेप्टोकोकस पायोजिनेस आई गो एंड डू ए टेस्ट स्ट्रेप्टोलाइसिन ओ एंटीजन टाइटर सुल बी एलिवेटेड ओके M stands for M protein. K stands for kinase. Kya kinase? Streptokinase. D H D stands for dornis. Streptodornis. And H stands for hyaluronidase. Ye yaad rakho. Abhi iska actions. What are the actions of this? Hyaluronic acid capsule is antiphagocytic. I have been telling this from the starting onwards. Wherever you see capsule, put the option antiphagocytic. Streptolysin O will destroy the WBC and RBC within your body. M protein is responsible for molecular mimicry, which will later on cause acute rheumatic fever. Okay, streptokinase. What does it do? It will convert plasminogen into plasmin. And what will plasmin do? Plasmin will dissolve the blood clots. It means it will promote the bleeding. So this bacteria will promote the bleeding in your body. स्ट्रेप्टोडॉर्नेस क्या करेगा स्ट्रेप्टोडॉर्नेस इज नथिंग बट कॉल्ड एज डीएनएस बी एंजाइम कॉल्ड एज डीएनएस बी व्हाट डज इस डीएनएस बी एंजाइम डू इट विल ब्रेक डाउन द डीएनए इन योर बॉडी हाइलोरोनिडेस पीएसएस द डीप लेयर्स अभी नाउ लुक दिस मेनी एक्शंस आर डन हियर डोंट यू थिंक दिस इज टू मच सीवियर इंफेक्शन यस और नो दिस इज अ सीवियर सीवियर इंफेक्शन व्हाट आर द डिसीजेस दैट आर कॉज 1 2 right here we have got 3 and here we have got 4 and finally we have got 5 five. five important diseases conditions clinical conditions you see here first is streptococcus pyogenes today i got infected with streptococcus pyogenes i will have a cough that is called as streptococcus pyogenes now i will go to the hospital and i have no time i wanted to i want the diagnosis very fastly so you do a rapid antigen detection within minutes you will get a result second is throat culture so this is high specificity and this is highly sensitive okay what is highly specificity they will ask you sometimes they will ask uh, the diagnosis which is highly sensitive in case of streptococcus pharyngitis is throat culture next coming to the skin infections the skin infections for all skin infections here i give a drug called as flucloxacillin okay flucloxacillin per oral od for 7 days Remember this pharma point flucloxacillin per oral OD for seven days you give. What are the infections? One is folliculitis. You know what is folliculitis? You know cellulitis. Cellulitis mainly causes to the legs, है ना? ये है cellulitis. और तीसरा क्या है impetigo. What is the third infection? Impetigo. Folliculitis, cellulitis and impetigo. I told you if you remember streptococcus aureus, uh, sorry staph aureus. The impetigo there was called as bullous impetigo, है ना? अब यहाँ पे मैं बोल रहा हूँ, this impetigo is called non-bullous impetigo because there are no bulla, there are no swellings. So these lesions over here are called as honey-crusted lesions. Very very important. All the time they are asking this. Honey-crusted lesions are characteristic for what? Non-bullous impetigo. Will you remember this? Yes or no? 
right third important thing is patient is having sandpaper like rash okay sandpaper like rash first important thing second is fever and third important thing is strawberry tongue so if you see if you see a uh, scarlet fever scarlet red rash fever strawberry like tongue together you call it as scarlet fever scarlet fever you see in streptococcus pyogenes coming to rheumatic fever all of you know streptococcus pyogenes group a bacteria is responsible for causing rheumatic fever in the rheumatic fever how do you diagnose a patient based upon jones criteria this is discussed everywhere right so even in the medicine part also it is discussed i'm just discussing it right now two major criteria either two major sahi hona chahiye nahi to ek major do minor major criteria kya hai jones j stands for migratory polyarthritis uh, o stands for heart that is carditis or valvulitis nodules matlab subcutaneous nodules under the skin okay e stands for erythema marginatum this is a type of rash which is circular okay it keeps on increasing its size that is why it is called erythema marginatum s stands for sindenem chorea sindenem chorea matlab patient will be doing this is a medical medicine link patient will be doing jerking and flinching uh, jerking and flinching you see this is flinching of the fist right and this is the jerking movement this is sindenem chorea when do you see sindenem chorea after 2 to 3 weeks post pharyngitis another important question after 2 to 3 weeks post pharyngitis you see this sindenem chorea minor criteria just remember the mnemonic fame fame kya hota hai people people who are considered minor right minor criteria in the sense um low state uh, socio economic status people they wanted to get famous not all of them but most of them right so fame f stands for fever first degree heart block also yaad rakho first degree heart block also this is a right now statement that is given in davidson medicine first degree heart block also is included under minor criteria a stands for arthralgia m stands for minor criteria e stands for elevated markers har ek infection mein ye do elevate hoga these two things will be definitely elevated and fifth important thing is post streptococcal glomerulonephritis okay post streptococcal glomerulonephritis will you remember for me these all these five important points guys very 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 important points and i am leaving these questions nothing difficult if you if you understood this part these questions will be dead easy okay remember thing and these are the questions that i have taken from the path part the pathology i have taken these questions next important thing we will discuss is legionella pneumophila it is a gram negative organism this is a also question asking uh, point transmission mostly air conditioning if you are all the time sitting in an ac or if you are all the time bathing in the hot tubs swimming pools cruise ships right why are is this really necessary to know these are the risk factors that are given in the questions patient returned to home after a cruise ship function he went on a cruise ship for about 3 4 days so after that he developed these conditions so these are the questions two diseases you will get because of this uh, pneumophila one is called as one is called as legionellaire's disease another one is called as pontic fever okay legionellaire's disease matlab there are three important symptoms one is atypical pneumonia another one is gastrointestinal symptoms third is neurological symptoms atypical pneumonia matlab dry cough hoga but normal pneumonia mein in normal pneumonia which cough you will have you will have wet cough and here sob and bilateral crackles are seen gi symptoms only one symptoms diarrhea okay i am telling you right now if you don't remember this nothing is going to happen but remember one thing any patient any patient who is having a history of exposure any patient who is having a history of exposure exposure matlab air conditioning hot tub swimming pool cruise ships plus diarrhea plus atypical pneumonia symptoms 99.999% go put the option legionellaire disease okay go put the option legionellaire's disease freeze did it freeze let me know did it freeze guys 
no fine so that would cause what legionnaires disease clear all of you and pontic fever what is pontic fever pontic fever is nothing but flu like symptoms without pneumonia is called pontic fever right now let us enter into the diagnostic part the first important thing is legionella urinary antigen test you take an urine within that urine you will find the legionella antigen okay so the results are coming in within 15 minutes okay a uh, high specificity and high sensitivity very good test next you do pcr pcr takes hours next legionella culture is a gold standard which are directly looking at a legionella there right uh, next important thing is that remember this mnemonic <coughs> remember this mnemonic called as charlie charlie legs okay charlie ka legs okay what do you what do you mean by charlie legs char in the sense kya what is char char is charcoal yeast ek extract agar charcoal yeast extract agar you use for what lee lee for legionella you use it for legionella keep this thing in mind okay charlie legs or just remember it as charlie now what do you mean by uh, in legs l e e l e g stands for legionella and what do you mean by s s stands for silver stain someone already told here i think lidia told yeah very good but the stain which we use over here is silver stain so just single mnemonic charlie's legs you can finish it down clear yeah? right so two important uh, drugs we give fluoroquinolones and macrolides fluoroquinolones you know lefloxacin ofloxacin right and macrolides that is azithromycin and uh, these are the questions in these question in in this question here just look at this question over here uh, don't worry we are about to finish bacteriology 69 year old man is brought to the emergency department by his wife because of fever cough diarrhea and confusion fever cough diarrhea and confusion okay for two days he recently read ye dekh he recently returned from a cruise to the caribbean what is the exposure factor here cruise ship he has a history of copd chronic obstructive pulmonary disease he has smoked one packet of cigarettes a day for 40 years temperature is 39 pulse is 83 blood pressure is 111 by 65 right he is confused oriented uh physical examination shows crows crackles throughout both the lungs what did i tell you you remember i told you one thing bilateral crackles are seen in the patient right so here bilateral crackles are seen so what is the most likely organism uh which re require the following mediums so where can you grow this organism very good charcoal yeast extract agar okay now here few more points i wanted to write here guys mekongki agar jo hai mekongki agar why do you use mekongki agar i told you to differentiate between lactose fermenter and non lactose fermenter lactose and non lactose fermenter ko differentiate karne ke liye we use mekongki agar next eosin methylene blue agar where do we use where do you use eosin what is eo eo is e coli okay so to look at e coli we use this eosin methylene blue agar next chocolate agar what did i tell you chocolate will influence what will influence girls right so chocolate agar is used in influenza also hemophilus influenza as well as girls that is gonorrhea right again don't take me bad i didn't mean that okay please girls i did not mean that ye mnemonic aise bana hai theek hai so mannitol salt agar mannitol is always a mass organism okay mannitol is like a mass okay m a stands for mannitol and s stands for staph aureus staph aureus okay next eaten agar eaten matlab kya eat eaten matlab eat eat matlab kya eat my pneumonia eat my pneumonia my matlab kya mycoplasma pneumonia mycoplasma pneumonia okay for mycoplasma pneumonia we use eaten agar 
clear all of you yes or no be fast right next important all the time the question which is asked is regard in the infectious diseases and in microbiology is your typhoid para typhoid okay so typhoid remember here salmonella enterica typhoid causes typhoid salmonella enterica para typhi causes para typhoid okay if you look at typhoid four important things you need to know salmonella typhi is gram negative rod iska flagella jo hai na flagella is all over the body so any flagella which is all over the body you call it as peritrichous flagella second point ho gaya third point uh, it releases h2s hydrogen sulfide gas on tsi agar tsi matlab triple sugar iron agar okay you take three different test tubes and do this test basically so h2s gas is released on tsi agar and it cannot ferment lactose so it is a non lactose fermenter okay now para typhi mein how many parts are there para typhi a b c and cholera so is this is also another part of para typhi okay even if you don't remember this nothing is going to happen but remember these four important points very important okay now transmission is fecal oral route obviously typhoid is fecal oral route only right very important thing is very important thing is the pathogenesis so this part they can ask you what is this part is that first you take the bacteria inside this bacteria will go all the way down till the distal ileum in the distal ileum you will have pears patch this bacteria will damage the pears patch then this bacteria will enter into the macrophage damage the macrophage then it will enter into the blood stream from the blood stream it will in the blood stream it will cause an infection called septicemia from the blood stream again back it is going into the intestine from the intestine it is getting excreted out ye dekho yahan pe ek bar first is oral uptake uske baad it will enter distal ileum pears patch infects macrophage septicemia intestine and excretion in the feces these are the steps which you need to know okay these are the steps which you need to know incubation period is 5 to 30 days incubation period is 5 to 30 days now whenever a patient is having typhoid this symptoms part is definitely asked in the exam ye yaad rakho either it, if they didn't ask in micro they will ask you in infectious pakka they will ask so week 1 kya hal hoga week 2 week 3 Week one only the temperature is increased, and that temperature remains same for week two. Okay, and from there the week three also the temperature will continue the same. Clear all of you? Next in week one patient will have bradycardia. Very 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 important thing. Patient is going to have bradycardia. In week two patient will develop rashes around the navel. Yaha pe you can't see the rash that clearly. but basically you see small rose spot rashes that are seen around the navel very 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 important again okay very important and week 3 is the one where there will be gastrointestinal perforation agar perforate hua there will be bleeding and there will also be hepatosplenomegaly so only two questions are asked right rose spot colors are seen in typhoid ye purana question hai previous question now they are asking in which week do you see rose colored spots week number 2 in which week do you see intestinal perforation that is week number 3 all of you are clear next important thing is that how do you diagnose this case every week you do the diagnosis diagnosis is done by mnemonic basu b a s u basu okay this is a famous mnemonic which is even uh, given in the textbooks also first week you concentrate on concentrate on blood cultures or bone marrow culture but patient generally don't accepts for bone marrow culture we use we use blood culture only week 2 we do agglutination test called as vidal test week 3 we do stool culture and week 4 urine culture okay keep this thing in mind this is very important some of you already know that this is important you know that you will keep it in your mind so this is very very important so the pharma part over here what is the first line drug which you give the first line is fluoroquinolones that is ciprofloxacin for example if patient is uh, the bacteria is resistant to that then you give azithromycin 
if there is severe infection third generation cephalosporins like uh, ceftriaxone you give okay this is the thing next important thing is that some patients will have this uh, typhoid salmonella typhi within the body but no symptoms right you check this patient even after 12 months he will be positive stool cultures for after 12 months also such patients are called as chronic salmonella carriage patients kahan pe rahega ye bacteria this bacteria will sleep within the gall bladder and it will not only sleep within the gall bladder patients of this category will have a higher risk of developing gall bladder cancer ye yaad rakho this is an important thing so for those patients who are chronic salmonella uh, carriers for them we use basically ciprofloxacin for one month this is a treatment ciprofloxacin for one month okay sir are there any vaccines yes there are two different types of vaccines ek hai live vaccine aur ek hai inactivated vaccine inactivated vaccine is given intramuscularly and live is given orally okay so inactivated vaccine example is virulent polysaccharide vaccine keep this thing in mind important question over here all of you are clear till here right next important organism which we shall be discussing is e coli e coli you will have gram negative bacilli right what did i tell you i think i have given you this point previously in neisseria gonococci only right most common cause of uti in the women is e coli transmission three ways catheter urethral ascension urethral ascension matlab urethra se the bacteria will ascend up this is called urethral ascension and fecal oral look at this bacteria this is of the bacteria is there where you see the bacteria having flagella only on one side so can i call this bacteria as lopotrichus bacteria right next coming to the pathogenic strains there are three important pathogenic strains mano ya nai mano this question will definitely be asked okay this question is definitely asked definitely this will be asked keep this thing in mind so three strains these are enterotoxigenic e coli e h is is entero hemorrhagic e coli e i is is entero invasive e coli very good sharad you are right entero invasive entero toxigenic hemorrhagic and this one toxigenic causes what diarrhea question what is the diarrhea watery diarrhea entero hemorrhage hemorrhage matlab kya khoon blood so bloody diarrhea entero invasive invasive matlab till the time it did not invade it will cause watery ek bar invade kar liya tissues ke andar then it will cause blood plus pus discharge bloody diarrhea and pustular discharge now uh, ehec ehec is associated with this is very important all of you just focus here ehec is associated with hus syndrome hemolytic uremic syndrome in medicine you will study hemolytic uremic syndrome has got three important triad one important triad acute renal failure hoga hemolytic anemia and thrombocytopenia these three together form a triad that is called as hemolytic uremic syndrome and which strain of e coli is associated o157 h7 okay o157 h7 is associated with hemolytic uremic syndrome okay so coming to this coming to this what are the diagnosis which we do e coli we do sorbitol mekonkey agar elisa pcr you remember this if you don't nothing is going to happen but remember point number 1 mekonkey agar we use sorbitol mekonkey agar you def definitely use this part okay next eiec you do a test called as siren test pata hai ye siren test kya hota hai in this siren test you put the bacteria in the gunia pig's eye you take a gunia pig you put the bacteria in the eye if the eye becomes red with conjunctivitis and keratitis it means it is positive test right so that is called as siren test you do in case of what entero invasive e coli you do in case of entero invasive e coli hope all of you are clear with this now the next important thing is vibrio cholera comma shaped organism here itself you can see it is comma shaped like this right and gram negative oxidase positive okay so you see only one flagella monotrichus only one flagella single polar flagella is there transmission cholera how 
थ्रू फीकल ओरल रूट इफ यू आर रीडिंग रॉ सी फूड कंटामिनेटेड वाटर ट्रेवलिंग राइट सो इन दीज केसेस ऑल्सो यू विल गेट दिस डायरिया ओवर हियर राइट एवरी वन इज क्लियर टिल right next important thing next important thing is that pathogenesis how vibrio cholera will cause diarrhea vibrio cholera will release a toxin called as cholera toxin which has a subunit b subunit yaad rakhna hai nahi just remember it has cholera toxin now with this cholera toxin will activate cyclic adenosine monophosphate called as camp this camp what will it do it will cause it will throw all the chlorine out into the lumen ओके, सो इंक्रीज क्लोरिन सेक्रीशन सो क्लोरिन के साथ साथ क्या आएगा वॉटर ऑल्सो विल कम वॉटर क्लोरिन एंड ऑल सो टूगेदर बोथ ऑफ देम यू कॉल इट एज सेक्रेटरी डायरिया इन दिस इफ यू लुक एट द पेशेंट स्टूल्स द वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन दैट इज आज इज राइस वॉटर इज टूल्स आर सीन इन राइस वॉटर इज टूल्स सो वेन वॉटर इज गोइंग अवे पेशेंट विल हैव वेरी सिवियर फॉर्म ऑफ डिहाइड्रेशन इज ऑन नो हाउ डू यू प्रिवेंट दिस यू गिव ए वैक्सीन कॉल्ड एज लाइव वैक्सीन live is always taken orally live attenuated oral vaccine which you do okay right <clears throat> next important thing next important thing is that the initial test what you do in vibrio cholera the initial test which is guys remember one thing har jagah initial test rapid test hi hoga okay if once if rapid is positive then you will go to the remaining part initial test is dipstick test okay dipstick test So, कैसे याद रखना है वॉट विल यू डिप बेसिकली वॉट इज अग यू डिप बेसिकली यू डिप चॉकलेट है ना स्टिक्स होते हैं ऐसे डिप दैट इन द चॉकलेट एंड यू ईट दैट स्टिक्स चॉकलेट मतलब क्या चौको सी एच वो वॉट इज दिस सी एच वो स्टैंड फॉर कोलरा सो रिमेंबर लाइक दिस फॉर कोलरा यू यूज डिप स्टिक टेस्ट विच इज अ रैपिड टेस्ट बट कंफर्मेटरी टेस्ट इज ऑलवेज टूल टेस्ट ओके coming to pseudomonas very 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 important question what kind of pigments does the pseudomonas release how do you remember this remember by a mnemonic cv raman remember by a mnemonic cv raman what is cv raman over here c stands for cyanin pyo cyanin right which color blue v stands for pyo verdin verdin matlab kya green R stands for pyor rubin rubin is what red and n stands for m and n stands for melanin that is brownish black these are all the five pigments that are released by pseudomonas aeruginosa okay pseudomonas aeruginosa releases all these five important things you see this uh, picture right this is a picture which i have taken from my hospital so wahan pe ek patient aaya tha with ulcers to his leg and uh, proper treatment nahi kiya so later on it went up uh, ended up having this infection you see the green color thing here right so all this is a pseudomonas infection <clears throat> right if you look at pseudomonas aeruginosa what are the virulence factors virulence factors you can remember by a mnemonic peep peep p stands for what phospholipase c phospholipase c matlab kya bacteria andar aane se pehle it will first degrade the cell membranes by releasing phospholipase c second endotoxin uh, abhi see from now onwards i'm telling i already told you endotoxin matlab only three actions fever hypotension disseminated intravascular coagulation these are the three functions okay next another e stands for exotoxin a this box is 1000 times very important ye dekho this one very 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 important exotoxin a how does it inhibit the protein synthesis in our body by decreasing or by inhibiting elongation factor number 2 ef2 matlab elongation factor number 2 okay next important thing p for pigments humne already discuss kiya what are the conditions that are associated with pseudomonas p stands for pneumonia s stand for sepsis E stands for ectema gangrenosum. ये देखो ये वाला है ectema gangrenosum. U stands for UTI. I told you UTI. You remember? D stands for diabetes, osteomyelitis, nosocomial infections, skin infections. What kind of skin infection you get in case of pseudomonas aeruginosa? You get hot tub folliculitis. A last you have is cystic fibrosis. What do you have? Cystic fibrosis. 
जस्ट द निमोनिक इट सेल्फ सूडोमोनास ओके ऐसे याद रखो काफी है ये नाउ कमिंग टू द इन्फेक्शियस डिसीज पार्ट गाइज ऑन डायरिया नवे डेज मेनी क्वेश्चन आर आस्ट देर आर टू डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ डायरिया बेसिकली सेक्रेटरी वो भी है बट मेनली यू हैव गॉट वॉटरी डायरिया ब्लेडी डायरिया क्या डायरिया है वॉटरी डायरिया एंड ब्लेडी डायरिया वॉटरी डायरिया इज कॉज बाय बैक्टीरिया वायरस एंड प्रोटोजोवंस थ्री ऑफ दम नाउ आई एम आस्किंग यू वॉट बैक्टीरिया कॉजेस वॉटरी डायरिया हु विल टेल मी बिफोर आर राइट डाउन द निमोनिक बताओ right so look here for example let us say you are sitting in the class it is raining water is falling down right you see some of the water gets sprinkled from the window so what will you tell you will tell please first excuse me excuse me please close the window na excuse me please close the window excuse me matlab kya e coli e coli please please क्लोज द विंडो प्लीज मतलब क्या पर फ्रिंजेस वॉट इज प्लीज प्लीज इज नथिंग बट पर फ्रिंजेस क्लो मतलब क्या क्लो इज क्लॉस्टीडियम विंडो डब्ल्यू आई विंडो इज विब्रियो विब्रियो कलरा दीज आर द फोर इंपॉर्टेंट बैक्टीरिया दैट कॉज इज वॉट वॉटरी डायरिया वॉटरी डायरिया नाउ ई कोलाई ई टी सी एंटीरो टॉक्सीजेनिक ई कोलाई रिलीज एस टू डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ टॉक्सिन एक है हीट लाइबल एंड अदर वन इज हीट स्टेबल ठीक है वॉट आर द टू टॉक्सिन वन इज कॉल्ड एज हीट लाइबल एंटर टॉक्सिन एंड अदर वन इज हीट स्टेबल टॉक्सिन ओके हीट लाइबल एंड हीट स्टेबल टॉक्सिन वेर एज क्लॉस्ट्रीडियम डिफिसाइल राइट रिलीज एस टू टॉक्सिन टॉक्सिन ए टॉक्सिन बी ए इज एंटीरो टॉक्सिन बी इज साइटोटॉक्सिन क्लॉस्ट्रीडियम परफ्रिंजेस ऑल्सो विल रिलीज टू टॉक्सिन heat liable enterotoxin and alpha toxin coming to vibrio cholera releases cholera toxin ye cheez humne already discuss kiya e coli e coli causes watery diarrhea you know but which strain of e coli causes watery diarrhea that is etec strain of e coli causes uh, travelers diarrhea okay etec strain of e coli causes which diarrhea travelers diarrhea next Clostridium difficile causes pseudo membranous colitis. Clostridium perfringens will perforate deep inside your tissues. Bacteria under tak ja ke kya karega? It will release the gas. When it will release the gas, the gas will come up, causing swelling over here. So it will cause gas gangrene. And cholera causes cholera. You know that. Everyone is clear with this so far. Next important thing is regarding the viruses. Regarding the viruses. So bacteria is done. now let us discuss what virus causes watery diarrhea all of you know who is nora 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 is just a name okay nora is just don't swing your minds this night nora is just a name so n o stands for what nora virus noro virus r stands for what rota virus and a stands for what adeno virus these three viruses together cause what uh watery diarrhea out of this the most common cause of watery diarrhea viral cause of watery diarrhea is noro virus most common in children that is rota virus theek okay? hai so ye dono ye dono there were questions that were asked clear all of you coming to the protozoa there are two different types of protozoa okay what are those two different types one is called as gyardia lamblia another one is called as cryptosporidia Gyardia lamblia most common come in comparison with a cryptosporidia so gyardia lamblia where do you find mainly in case of hikers and campers hai na jo hiking karega jo forest mein camp right do those who go for camps and all you see this and these patients will have gyardiasis and you know how the question is asked you know how the question is asked in these patients the question is asked in this way that Gyardia lamblia, the patient will have a very severe abdominal pain, okay, for more than ten days. And second thing is very foul-smelling stools. Patient will complain of foul, smelly stools. Okay. Now, when it comes to cryptosporidia, causes cryptosporidiosis. 
it also causes two more important things that is cholangitis and cholecystitis okay we are done with we are done with watery diarrhea now we will discuss about bloody diarrhea bloody diarrhea the first important thing is e coli okay so e coli causes two important strains here what are those two important strains one is called as e i e c e h e c entero invasive entero hemolytic abhi bataya maine o 157 h7 causes hemolytic uremic syndrome yaad hai na next important thing still what are the things that cause bloody diarrhea how do you remember this aise yaad rakho remember that yersinia is a girl okay she is very shy cause she cannot come to the camp okay she is very shy to come to the camp yersinia is a girl who is very shy to come to the camp yersinia matlab kya yersinia enterocolitica shy matlab kya shigella okay cannot in the sense what not matlab non typhoidal salmonella come to the camp come to the camp camp matlab kya campylobacter jejuni so these are the bacteria which causes what bloody diarrhea ye cheez yaad rakho these are the bacteria which causes bloody diarrhea okay and entamoeba histolytica causes amoebic dysentery amoebic liver abscess in parasitology we will discuss now next important thing over here is uh, your clostridium so how many species of clostridium you have got you have got four important thing clostridium botulinum causes botulism clostridium difficile causes pmc which means pseudo membranous colitis clostridium perfringens i told you deeply it will perforate inside release the gas causes gas gangrene gas gangrene clostridium tetani causes tetanus tetani causes what tetanus okay next coming to clostridium tetani abhi ye clostridium tetani ka shape dekh ke batao what is the shape tennis racket shaped or drumstick shaped yes or no it is like a tennis racket or a drumstick next important thing ye most important point hai what are the toxins that are released by this clostridium tetani three important toxins one is tetanospasmin tetanolysin non spasmogenic toxin tetanospasmin lysin and non spasmogenic toxin abhi ye toxins what do they do basically what do they do basically is that normally guys ye cheez yaad rakho one neuron is releasing a neurotransmitter called gaba the other neuron is called alpha motor neuron normally alpha motor neuron is 24/7 active it keeps on contracting but aisa nahi hai ki mere body mein 24/7 there are contractions so whenever i want contraction i will contract whenever i don't want to contract my muscle i will relax so who is relaxing your muscle who is inhibiting your muscle your muscle is inhibited by this gaba gaba will inhibit your alpha motor neuron and alpha motor neuron will decrease the muscle contraction over here for example this tetanospasmin and tetanolysin they are damaging some proteins called as snare proteins ye snare proteins damage hone ki wajah gaba is not released if gaba is not released don't you think the muscle contraction here will be high because the alpha motor neuron will fire up right so when the muscle contraction is high this muscle will be contracted so much that would lead to tetany that would lead to what tetanus so there are four important things the there will be spastic paralysis paralysis as a spasticity aa jayega body mein second is rises sardonicus which you can see in this patient ye dekho pehle hua tha rises sardonicus uske baad after recovery the patient is like this locked jaw or trismus the jaw is locked because yahan pe mesenteral muscle hoga wo mesenteral muscle is not working and opisthotonus position matlab ye piche spine ke region mein na there are extensor muscles these extensor muscles they contract severely so this is what the patient is having here okay more than enough uh, surgery it would be more than enough so uh, coming to this this patient complications kya ho sakta hai one complication the patient can have is laryngospasm okay because of the spasm of the muscles so immediately you need to do airway management second if there are severe muscle spasms you need to give benzodiazepines to the patient if there are uh, 
infections the patient can also develop infections also sometimes so paraoral metronidazole is given and next you give is penicillin g clear all of you is there any immunization over here the immunization yes there is active immunization and passive immunization active immunization in the sense you give tetanus vaccine passive immunization in the sense you give htig what is this htig i am human tetanus immunoglobulin agar ye available nahi hai then you give ivig okay you give first i am if i am is not available in the market in your hospital then you give shift to iv okay these are the two important thing don't you think uh, tetanus is affected to the neonates also right so that uh, tetanus is called as neonatal tetanus how does the neonatal tetanus occur what is the risk factor of this neonatal tetanus that is infected umbilical stump is the um, risk factor of this neonatal tetanus if you understood all these things which i have told you you will able to you will be able to answer these two questions okay these two questions will be clear for all of you now moving on moving on to the next important concept clostridium tetani will have terminal spores whereas clostridium botulinum baki jo variants hai they will have sub terminal spores ye yaad rakho tetani ko kya hoga terminal spores and the remaining will have the sub terminal spores okay yes uh, travel destination it will be covered everything only after covering i am going to leave you guys by telling um, happy christmas okay ab ye mat sochna sir 12 baje tak no we'll finish it before that itself so if you look at clostridium tetani and clostridium botulinum ek bar differences dekhte hain clostridium tetani is drum stick shaped whereas clostridium botulinum is club shaped bacteria with flagella club shaped bacteria with flagella in clostridium tetani the problem is gaba release nahi ho raha hai the gaba is not getting released but whereas in botulinum the ACH, I mean acetylcholine is not getting released. Here GABA is not released, there acetylcholine is not released. Here if GABA is not released, then this neuron will fire like anything and cause very severe muscle contraction. If here ACT, ACH is not released, this neuron is not at all working, so there is no muscle contraction. So dono mein there is paralysis. But ek paralysis kya hai? Spastic paralysis. Dusra paralysis kya hai? flaccid paralysis the patient's body parts will be weak like this flaccid paralysis so yahan pe dekho spastic paralysis and next is flaccid paralysis next important thing rises sardonicus is seen here lock jaw ye abhi discuss kiya humne okay uh travel destination it is not covered yet i will cover virology now okay next coming to coming to this four d's you have to remember a d for diplopia d for dysarthria d for dysphagia d for dyspnea all these four d's you see in case of clostridium botulinum okay so clostridium botulinum mein muscle contraction nahi ho raha muscle is becoming paralyzed so can i use this medically medically how will i use i will use it in the uh, way of botox injection hai na agar muscle spasm ho raha I give Botox injection, paralysis हो जाएगा एच एल एशिया कार्डिया दिस इज ए क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम योर मेडिसिन नाउ यू कैनॉट टेल मी दट आप इंटीग्रेट नहीं कर रहे हो दिस इज एच एल एशिया कार्डिया विच इज नॉट सीन इन माइक्रो ठीक है यू नो एच एल एशिया कार्डिया राइट द नैरो टैपरिंग ऑफ द लोअर इज ऑफ एजल स्पिंटर वहां पे इफ यू गिव दिस इंजेक्शन द स्पिंटर विल ओपन एंड द फूड विल पास नेक्स्ट डिफ्यूज ईसो फेजल स्पैजम वेयर द ईसो फेजस इज डिफ्यूजली कॉन्ट्रैक्टेड लाइक दिस there also you can use botox injection okay after that moving on moving on moving on we will discuss the differences between clostridium uh, difficile as well as clostridium perfringens okay in clostridium difficile it is a facultative pathogen it is a club shaped bacilli yaad rakho clostridium difficile i have already talked here in this table if you remember टॉक्सिन ए टॉक्सिन बी है ना मैंने ऑलरेडी बात किया था सो आई है टॉक्सिन ए टॉक्सिन बी टॉक्सिन ए इज एंटीरोक्सिन टॉक्सिन बी इज साइटोटॉक्सिन दिस विल बी हेल्पफुल फॉर बोथ द एग्जाम सोमिया 
Perfringes, two toxins, alpha toxin and heat liable enterotoxin. This one also we have discussed. It causes pseudomembranous colitis. We have already discussed. It causes gas gangrene. Already discussed. The drugs which you use here, metronidazole or vancomycin or fidaxomycin. But here, pe, piptas, uh, piperacillin tazobactam along with clindamycin. Piperacillin tazobactam along with clindamycin. These are the two important things which you use over here. Okay. Now, another question that is asked is about the lab diagnosis of TB infection. TB infection ka lab diagnosis. Either this question they might give you in micro, they might give you in patho, they might give you in medicine. You know, in these three subjects, in any one of the subjects, they can give you definitely. Okay, so remember, remember these things which I am telling you right now. So any patient who is having micro TB, uh, sorry, uh, mycobacterium tuberculosis, what is the first thing you do guys? First thing you do is collect the sputum sample or directly you will take an x-ray. No, first I will do is collect the sputum sample. No, not AFs also, that is for active TB, but you are right, Shubang, very good. So, sputum sample is the first thing. How many sputum samples you have collected in medicine it is given? More than three sputum samples. This may say, ek sputum sample subay wala hona chahiye. This one sputum sample should be in the morning. Morning sputum sample. Okay. Second important thing. If sputum is not coming for the patient, zaruri nahi hai ki sputum aayega. If it is not coming, you have to induce the sputum by inducing hypertonic saline solution or isotonic saline solution, immediately the sputum will be formed. If that is also not working, then you do gastric lavage. You can take the sputum from there. If patient is afraid, right? If patient is afraid, then you do bronchoalveolar lavage and take the sputum. Whatever it is, sputum chaiye chaiye. Now, after taking the sputum in this patient, we do a test, very good, you are, you are all right. We do a test called as acid fast bacilli. Okay, AFB, you called as AFB staining. So, this AFB staining you are doing with the help of sputum. Counts as stain use kar rahe ho yaan pe. ZN stain or you use oramine rhodamine, uh, oramine, uh, rhodamine stain. Okay, now after using this stain, this is a rapid detection and it is completely inexpensive. If this is positive, AFB is positive, you go on for the next important thing that is called as CB naught, okay, which is called nucleic acid amplification test. This is also rapid and it is very highly specific, high specificity and sensitivity is present for this test, okay. If after doing this, the gold standard which you do is not CB naught here, the gold standard is the culture which you do, okay. You do the culture which is highly sensitive. But culture ka dikkat yehi hai ki it would take 2 to 6 weeks for the culture reports to come back. Okay. So it takes around 2 to 6 weeks. Right. Sir, can we do rapid molecular testing? Rapid molecular testing you only do for the patients who are at a higher risk. Higher risk matlab already patients who previously got TB. Deko, previously uh, treated TB case. Contact with multi-drug resistance TB. There is a there is a patient here of multi-drug resistance patient and I am talking to him, right? And I might contract that, okay? Next, HIV infection. KK is asking a very good question. Sir, two to six weeks lagega, but TB treatment start or not? TB treatment does not depend upon your uh, diagnosis over here. Immediately you start the TB treatment, okay? Very good question. So, these are the three important risk factors where you use rapid molecular, rapid molecular testing. Coming to x-ray, primary TB patient, matlab, for example, right now if I get a TB, I am called as a primary TB. Already I had a TB and again I am getting it. This is called post-primary TB or reactivation TB. In primary TB, in post-primary TB, if you look at an x-ray, in primary TB, if you look at an x-ray, there is consolidation. Matlab, Ill-defined borders. Ye dekho. Pura yaan pe ill-defined borders hai. Lateral x-ray mein bhi ye dekho. Pura ill-defined borders hai. You're getting it? So, if you, first thing you see is consolidation. Second important thing you see is unilateral hilar lymphadenopathy. Bilateral nahi, unilateral. Bilateral kaan pe dekho ge? Sarcoidosis mein dekho ge bilateral. Yaan pe kya hai? Unilateral. See? You see this hilar lymphadenopathy here? Unilateral. Ilar lymphadenopathy. 
थर्ड इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग यू सी इन प्राइमरी टीपी पेशेंट इज गॉन कॉम्प्लेक्स ये देखो वेर इज दिस गॉन कॉम्प्लेक्स ओवर हियर ये देखो हियर स्मॉल कॉम्प्लेक्स यू कैन सी लाइक दिस सीटी स्कैन में देखो ये देखो दिस इज कॉल्ड एज गॉन कॉम्प्लेक्स ओके नेक्स्ट इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग यू सी इज फ्लूरल एफ्यूजन ये देखो यू सी ए कर्व लाइक दिस इफ यू सी दिस कर्व दिस इज ए फ्लूरल एफ्यूजन सी ये पूरा फ्लूरली एफ्यूटेड एरिया है ओके सो फोर इंपॉर्टेंट फाइंडिंग्स ऑन प्राइमरी टीबी एक्सरे कंसोलिडेशन यूनिलेटरल हाइलर लिम्फर्नोपति गॉन्स कॉम्प्लेक्स एज वेल एज फ्लूरल एफ्यूजन इफ यू लुक एट रिएक्टिवेशन यू वुड सी द फर्स्ट इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग इन दीज पेशेंट फाइब्रोकेशियस कैविटी लीजन इन द अपर लो ये देखो can you look at a lesion that is located over here in the upper lobe here right ye dekho this is the lesion or lesion ke andar ye jo hai what is this cavity isliye isko bolte hai fibrocaceous cavity next important thing so this is the only x ray finding which you see over here next important thing is we will look at the chest ct okay in the chest ct प्राइमरी टीबी पेशेंट के अंदर चेस्ट सिटी का चेंजेस क्या है द फर्स्ट चेस्ट सिटी चेंजेस इज दैट इन लार्ज लिंफ नोट विथ सेंट्रल नेक्रोसिस यू कैन वेरी क्लियरली सी हियर लिंफ नोट इज एन लार्ज और सेंट्रल रीजन में नेक्रोसिस है दिस इज कॉल्ड एज एन लार्ज लिंफ नोट विथ सेंट्रल नेक्रोसिस सीन इन प्राइमरी टीबी पेशेंट नेक्स्ट इन पोस्ट प्राइमरी टीबी पेशेंट वॉट यू सी यू सी ट्री इन बर्ड पैटर्न ऑन द सिटी स्कैन यू सी ट्री इन बर्ड पैटर्न ये देखो यहां पर Can you see a tree with buds like this? ये देखो ऐसे This is called as tree in bud pattern. This is the second important thing which you see. Right? Is everyone clear so far? What are the changes of X-rays and CTs you see? For example, sometimes in patients of HIV whose immune system is too low, in these patients TB can be as a co-infection. Now in these patients, if you look at the CD4 count. If the CD4 count is less than 100, then you need to do a diagnostic test called as lateral flow urine lipoarbuminin assay. This is a test which you have to basically do. Clear all of you? Right. Uh, moving on to the next important thing, that is rickettsia. Rickettsia is an obligatory intracellular parasite. Rickettsia, three types are there. One is called as rickettsia rickettsii. Rickettsia provozeki and Rickettsia typhi. Okay, so a reservoir kya hai? Yahan se dekh ke padlo. Dog takes, body loves, and flees. Clear? Coming to the characteristic, uh, um, characteristics, all of them are weakly gram negative. All of them are visible on Gimsa stain. Okay, virulence. Virulence kya hai? Two virulence factors hai. One is called as T4SS. T4SS. The second is surface adhesion, like OMPA, OMPB. Okay, so OMPA and OMPB. OMPA B means outer membrane protein A, outer membrane protein B. T4SS means what? Type four secretory system. ये देखो ये bacteria है. Bacteria के ऊपर ये type four secretory system है. Injection जैसे होता है ये. This is going on to fixing onto the host cell. Through this injection. The DNA from the bacteria is transferred down here. That is called type four secretory system. So rickettsia, rickettsia is causing Rocky Mountain spotted fever. What is it causing? Rocky Mountain spotted fever. Next, what is rickettsia provozaki is causing? Spotted fever, and this is called as what epidemic typhus. What is this epidemic typhus? And what is causing endemic typhus? Rickettsia typhi is causing endemic typhus. Yaad rakho guys, what is the difference between epidemic and endemic? For example, if any disease that is spreading very quickly, that is epidemic. For example, COVID, बहुत ज़्यादा spread हुआ, epidemic. Endemic मतलब disease that is present in a region. For example, Africa region में क्या होगा? Which disease is more prominent? Malaria. That is endemic. Whatever it is, drugs, doxycycline, chloramphenicol. Chloramphenicol you will use in pregnancy patient. Again, pharma point. Okay. Coming to the last few topics of uh, bacteriology, syphilis. Syphilis is caused by what? Syphilis is caused by. After this, we will have a break for. After bacteriology, we will have a break for two three minutes. Okay.
देन फिर से फ्रेशली हम स्टार्ट करेंगे सो सिफिलिस वेर इज इट प्रेजेंट सिफिलिस इज कॉज बाई ट्रेपोनेमा पेलेडम ट्रेपोनेमा पेलेडम विच इज ए स्पायरो वॉट इज अ ट्रांसमिशन ट्रांसमिशन इज दैट सेक्शुअल कॉन्टेक्ट वर्टिकल वर्टिकल मतलब वर्टिकल सेक्स नहीं वर्टिकल मतलब मदर टू चाइल्ड ये मत सोचना ये अलग अलग पोजिशन है नो एनदर वन इज ब्लड डोनेशन ऑल्सो इंक्यूबेशन पीरियड इज फोर्टी टू टेन टू नाइनटी डेज हाउ मेनी टाइप्स ऑफ सिफिलिस आर देर एक होगा प्राइमरी सेकेंडरी टेरिशरी और लेटेंट चार फोर टाइप्स ऑफ सिफिलिस आर देर वन इज प्राइमरी सिफिलिस सेकेंडरी सिफिलिस टेरिशरी सिफिलिस एंड लेटेंट प्राइमरी में प्राइमरी लीजन होगा दैट इज कॉल्ड एस कैंकर वट इज दैट कॉल्ड कैंकर क्लियर पेनलेस लीजन बिल्कुल पेनलेस होगा अल्सर विथ इंड्यूरेटेड बॉर्डर्स द नेम इट सेल्फ दैट पिक्चर इट सेल्फ डिपिक्स दैट नेम ये देखो अल्सर है उसका बॉर्डर देखो इंड्यूरेटेड है राइट नाउ दिस प्राइमरी वन प्राइमरी कैंकर इट विल रिजोल्व विद इन थ्री टू सिक्स वीक्स फिर ठीक हो जाएगा and patients will have inguinal lymph nodes that is non tender lymphadenopathy okay this is about primary primary canker painless resolve within 3 to 6 weeks khatam next secondary in secondary two important things you see one is called as polymorphic rash one is called as polymorphic rash polymorphic rash where do you see you see this this is seen in palms and soles okay next is condylomata lata okay condylomata lata this is also a painless lesions papular lesions that you see here ye dekho white color hai white papular lesions you see on the genitals these are also painless that is condylomata lata okay coming to tertiary syphilis tertiary syphilis causes two important things okay tertiary syphilis causes two important things one is called guma Another one is called as cardiovascular syphilis. Gumma मतलब क्या? This is called as gumma. Okay? Granulomatous lesion with a necrotic center that tend to ulcerate. Okay? ये देखो, there is all granulomatous lesion here, completely granulomatous. और बीच में ये देखो, center में एक necrotic lesion है that tend to ulcerate. That is called gumma. Okay? Coming to cardiovascular syphilis, three important heart conditions you see: aortitis. सिफिलिटिक मीसो आयोटाइटिस आयोटिक रूट डायलेशन मतलब यहां पे जो दिस इज मेनली कॉन्सेंट्रेटिंग ऑन वॉट कॉन्सेंट्रेटिंग ऑन आयोटा ओनली आयोटाइटिस सिफिलिटिक मीसो आयोटाइटिस एज वेल एज आयोटिक रूट डायलेशन नाउ नेक्स्ट इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग आफ्टर दिस सिफिलिस इज द न्यूरोसिफिलिस इफ सिफिलिस इज एफेक्टिंग यूर ब्रेन दैट इज कॉल्ड न्यूरोसिफिलिस रिमेंबर इट एज टैन ठीक है वॉट डू यू मीन बाई टैन T stands for uh, two important conditions here. T stands for Tabes dorsalis. A stands for Erigel Robertsonian pupils, and N stands for neurosyphilis. Tan three important things: Tabes dorsalis, Erigel Robertsonian pupils, as well as uh, neurosyphilis. They are the CNS manifestations of treponema. अगर treponema invade हुआ brain के अंदर तो ये होगा. Okay, so. What do you mean by erigel Robertsonian pupils? Bilaterally, the pupils will be constricted. This is called erigel Robertsonian pupils. Okay? Tapes dorsalis मतलब क्या? Tapes dorsalis मतलब you see here dorsal columns and dorsal root ganglia. अब इस spinal cord के dorsal region, ventral region दो regions होगा. Dorsal region is completely sensory. Ventral region is completely motor. So if dorsal region is completely gone, do you think can you take the sensations? Will you feel any sensations? No. Why? Because there is a demyelination of dorsal root and dorsal root ganglia. Okay. So you won't have any kind of sensations. So patients specifically um, in the in the Davidson textbook it is specifically given that patient will lose uh, complete deep tendon reflexes and he will also lose all the sensations from the lower extremity. याद रखो लॉस ऑफ डीप टेंड ऑन रिफ्लेक्सेस एंड लॉस ऑफ सेंसेशन फ्रॉम द लोअर एक्सट्रीमिटी इज प्रेजेंट ओके राइट कमिंग टू द डायग्नोसिस दो टाइप्स ऑफ टेस्टिंग है नॉन स्पेसिफिक एक है स्पेसिफिक एक है नॉन स्पेसिफिक सीरोलॉजी टेस्टिंग इज 
VDRL testing and RPR testing. VDRL means Venereal Disease Research Laboratory testing. RPR means Rapid Plasma Reagent. Okay. Same way, specific serological testing bhi hai. That is called FTA ABS, Fluorescent Treponemal Antibody Absorption. Ye do tests ko hum compare karenge abhi. You see, I am comparing VDRL and FTA. If both the tests are positive, only then I will tell that this patient is having a right now, right now he is having active infection. VDRL is positive, FTA is negative, this is false positive. If one is negative and another one is positive, it means the patient is successfully treated. Successfully treated. So again, coming to the microscopy, dark field microscopy, right? I think I have told you this thing in the starting dark field microscopy. And uh, coming to two other things over here, uh, treatment, penicillin or doxycycline, penicillin tumari marji, agar primary or secondary syphilis, then you have to give IM penicillin. If it is latent syphilis, I bola tana. Primary syphilis hoga, secondary syphilis hoga, tertiary syphilis hoga, or latent syphilis bhi hoga. For that patient, you need to give penicillin G IV. Okay? What is latent syphilis? In latent syphilis, patient ko koi symptom nahi hoga. There is no symptom, no clinical symptoms. But this latent syphilis can progress to tertiary syphilis. See, it is progress to tertiary syphilis. Or is latent syphilis may there are only two stages. One is called early latent syphilis, another one is called as late latent syphilis. For early and late latent, the only drug which we give is doxycycline, early and late latent syphilis. Very good, yes. Right. So next important thing is next important thing. Very good, Sharat. Shabang, very good. Your comments are... Uh, Shabang, how will we know the latent hai? Uh, see, these things, if I if I keep on discussing, again, I'm purely entering into medicine. I cannot do that. Okay? So, in medicine only, you will study those things. And uh, so, in medicine, the medicine faculty will tell you much more clearly. It's not that I don't know this, but full information nahi pata mujhe. So, it would be better if you look at a medicine faculty so that purely you can discuss about that. And moreover, I slightly uh, forgot few things in the treatment, uh, sorry, in the latent syphilis part and all. So, but whatever are necessary for micro, I have perfectly told you, okay? Right. Next important thing, next important thing is that only one complication which you see in syphilis is jarish Herxheimer reaction. Right? Just remember it as JH reaction. Okay? Jarish Herxheimer reaction. What is this? If treponema pallidum is killed, that will release toxins and these toxins will cause flu-like syndrome and that is called as JH reaction. Bas. Okay? Now coming on to the next important thing that is lephrosy. That is what? Lephrosy. Lephrosy is also called as Hansen's disease. Pathogen is uh, Mycobacterium lepre. Okay? Transmission of leprosy is three ways. One is respiratory droplets, contaminated soil and nine-banded armadillos. Armadillo jante ho aap? Ek bar internet mein search kar lo. I can't, I won't draw this obviously. Armadillos karke ek hota hai, cocoon jaise hota hai. So from nine bands hota hai uske upar. So from that you get this infection. There are two different types of leprosy. LL leprosy, TT leprosy. LL kya hota hai? Lepromatous leprosy. TT kya hota hai? Tuberculoid leprosy. Guys, fir se bol raun. This part, 100 times more important. Mujhe lagta hai ki is bar pakka hai ga isme se question. From NEET PG also you got a question from this. That is why. So very very important. Just know the differences. Lepromatous is LL. Baaki kya hoga? Not TL, it is TT. In lepromatous leprosy, right, if a patient is having T helper cell 2 response, increased T helper cell 2 response, and here it will mainly affect the patients where T helper 1 cell response is high. And it will mainly affect those patients whose CMI is very weak, cell mediated immunity, if it is weak in me, this LL form will infect me. If CMI is strong, then TT form will infect the patient. Okay? Let us discuss about the cutaneous manifestations. First important thing, look at his face. Now in this face, look at the face and look at the text which I have written. 
मल्टीपल है ये देखो मल्टीपल है सिमेट्रिक मैक्यूल्स राइट लेफ्ट दोनों सेम प्लेग्स और नॉड्यूल्स आर प्रेजेंट ऑल दिस दे जॉइन टूगेदर टू फॉर्म ए फेस लाइन लाइक फेस कॉल्ड एज लियोनाइन फेस यू सी दिस फेस लुक्स लाइक अ लाइन राइट दिस इज नॉट समथिंग दैट यू नीड टू बी प्राउड ऑफ नेक्स्ट इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग ऑन द बैक साइड यू सी सम हाइपो पिगमेंटेड मैक्यूल्स हियर राइट यू सी हाइपो पिगमेंटेड मैक्यूल्स इन दीज पेशेंट हेयर लॉस ऑल्सो विल बी देयर एंड इन दीज पेशेंट हाइपर एस्थीसिया विल बी देयर हाइपर एस्थीसिया मतलब इंक्रीज सेंसेशन टू टैक्टाइल सेंसेशन ओके टैक्टाइल स्टिमुलस सो वॉट आर द थिंग्स यू सी लियोनाइन फेसेस हाइपो पिगमेंटेशन हेयर लॉस हाइपर एस्थीसिया ओके now the mcqs which are asked over here are nerve involvement most common nerve that is involved is ulnar nerve ulnar nerve injury will cause what ulnar claw ulnar nerve injury will cause ulnar claw you know this is your medial epicondyl here medial epicondyl ke piche se ulnar nerve jayega ise and it supplies to the this part if ulnar nerve is damaged patient will have a claw this claw is called as ulnar claw okay next peroneal nerve most commonly if it is injured that would result in food drop you know peroneal muscle down there common peroneal nerve so if that is cut down you will have food drop okay posterior auricular nerve and posterior tibial nerve all these nerves are involved over here clear all of you all these nerves are involved over here right now coming to lepromatous leprosy this is the one most of the time questions are asked here lepromatous leprosy is l l right l stands for lepromatous leprosy l also stands for leonine faces l stands for low cell mediated immunity l stands for lethal aisa yaad rakho l l l l okay how do you do the diagnosis a lesion jo hai na wahan pe skin scraping karunga or i will do sli uh, slit skin smear then if i do this test this uh, skin scraping test is usually positive in ll type negative in tt type okay it is usually positive in ll type lepromatous leprosy whereas in tuberculoid it is negative next what i will do is punch biopsy now when i do a punch biopsy of the lesion of a ll lesion what will i find very very important again i will find foamy histiocytes ye dekho All these blue color cells over here are histiocyte cells, or यहाँ पे red color dots जो है ना, these are increased number of lepra bacilli. Two things: foamy histiocytes, increased number of lepra bacilli, R C N N L L type. Whereas in T T type, you see only one thing, that is granuloma. है ना? ये देखो यहाँ पे देख सकते हो ना? All of you look at this. In pathology, this will be taught. ये देखो, एक granuloma है ना? This is the granuloma which you see. ये देखो यहाँ पे भी एक बड़ा सा granuloma, right? So this is the granuloma which you see. So what is the next test which you do? Lepromin test. Lepromin test क्या है? This is a skin test. Lepromin is a skin test. Simple. You take lepromin antigens and you inject it. Inject करने के बाद you will see if the induration is more than five mm, it means positive. Patient is having leprosy. But which type of leprosy? TT positive leprosy. Okay, so lepromin test will be positive in TT variant, but it will not be positive in LL variant. ये याद रखो. Okay, coming to the microscopic appearances, guys. Uh, I mean, we are done with this syphilis. Now we are discussing about the other part, the MCQ part, other than this. Okay, so not related with this. So let us discuss about all the different types of microscopic appearances. ये कैसे लग रहे देख के? Bamboo stick. Where do you see bamboo stick appearance? Bamboo stick appearance is seen in Bacillus anthracis. So B A B A B A, right? B A is for bamboo. B A is for Bacillus. Next important thing. What is this? I already told you. Streptococcus pneumonia, lanceolate diplococci. How do you remember? L A is L A. S T is S T. Lanceolate diplococci is streptococcus pneumonia. Third. ये देखो यर्सिनिया पेस्टिस यर्सिनिया पेस्टिस के अंदर विच फॉर्म यू सी सेफ्टी पिन अपीरेंस ये देखो ऑल ऑफ यू लुक हियर इज इट लुकिंग लाइक ए सेफ्टी पिन ऐसे इट इज लुकिंग लाइक सेफ्टी पिन अपीरेंस है ना हाउ विल यू टेल दिस सेफ्टी यू कैन आल्सो कॉल्ड एज सेफर 
सेफ यर और सेफर सेफ इज सेफ्टी पिन यर इज यर सीनिया पेस्टिस क्लियर नेक्स्ट हीमोफिलस डुक्रे इट लुक्स लाइक अ स्कूल ऑफ फिश ये देखो ऑल द फिशेस इट लुक्स लाइक ऑल द फिशेस जॉइन टूगेदर एंड इट इज लुकिंग लाइक अ स्कूल ऑफ फिश बट इंडिविजुअली यू सी स्मॉल स्मॉल बेसिला ओवर हियर है ना सो हाउ डू यू रिमेंबर यू हैड फिश इन द स्कूल हैड एच ए इज हिमोफिलस डी इज डुक्राई फिश इज स्कूल ऑफ फिश क्लियर नेक्स्ट फिशेस इन द स्ट्रीम वेन द फिशेस आर मूविंग इन द स्ट्रीम लाइक दिस दैट गिवस यू एन अपियरेंस विच इज सीन इन विब्रियो कोलरा फिश इन स्ट्रीम अपियरेंस इज सीन इन विब्रियो कोलरा अभी ये तो पता है कोची को स्टैंड फॉर कोरिनी बैक्टीरियम डिप्थीरियर ची स्टैंड फॉर चाइनीज लेटर ओके स्टैंड फॉर चाइनीज लेटर नेक्स्ट ड्रम्स नो वन कैन बीट द ड्रम्स ओनली ड्रम टेक्नीशियंस कैन बीट द ड्रम्स ड्रम टेक्नीशियंस ड्रम मतलब ड्रम स्टिक अपियरेंस टेक्नीशियंस मतलब टेटनी ड्रम स्टिक अपियरेंस यू सीन गेज ऑफ टेटनी थम प्रिंट साइन कहां पर देखते हैं ये देखो मुझे नहीं लगता ये थम प्रिंट जैसे है बट जस्ट रिमेंबर दिस एज थम प्रिंट साइन ये देखो When you put a thumbprint, you see all the lines which you see here, right? I don't know in forensic they call these lines. I forgot, but because of these lines, you know, you make this uh, forensic detection. So that you see in case of border detailer purchases. कैसे याद रखना है? When you want to cross the border, you have to put your thumb there. एक examination होगा, फिर your retina will be scanned and all these things. So thumbprint border cross. Okay, you put your thumbprint while you are crossing the border. Hope you are loving the mnemonics, guys. Next, gullwing. Gullwing appearance. You see, this type of appearance is called as gullwing appearance, seen in Campylobacter. So, how do you remember this? Wide angle camera. Why in the sense wing? Angle camera in the sense Campylobacter. Wide angle camera. ऐसे याद रखो. Okay. And guys, uh, these things I won't discuss here, because ये ने these things are seen in medicine. so i'm just i've just written it down over here so this is how you have to remember as it is hla hla 3 association where do you see in hemochromatosis you know hemochromatosis excess hemochromatosis excess uh, deposition of iron right so hla b08 you see in case of graves disease hla b27 remember it as pair pair P stands for psoriatic arthritis. A stands for ankylosing spondylitis. I B S stands for inflammatory bowel disease, and R stands for Reiter syndrome. Okay, Reiter syndrome. H L A D R one two three. H L A D R one two three. From my mouth. इसको हिंदी में कैसे बोलते हो? From my mouth. Okay. My mouth से. My mouth से. मेरे mouth से. Right. My mouth से. My मतलब myasthenia gravis, mu is multiple sclerosis, se is SLE. Clear all of you? A is SLE. So guys, uh, next we will discuss the different types of sores that are present. एक होगा school sore, oriental sore, hard sore, soft sore, cold sore. These questions can never be conceptual questions. They will they will only be um, uh, one mark questions. Uh, I mean, last minute revision questions. right one liner questions so they will be asked in that way only so school sore school sore is seen in streptococcus pyogenes oriental sore okay so o stand l o s t l o s t lost l matlab kya l matlab leishmania o matlab kya oriental sore s matlab kya sore t matlab kya tropica lost is mnemonic for oriental sore नेक्स्ट हार्ड सोर इज ट्रेपोनेमा पेलिडम यू नो पहाड़ पहाड़ मतलब माउंटेन है ना सो पा व्हाट इज पा पेलिडम पा हार्ड हार्ड इज व्हाट हार्ड सोर ओके नेक्स्ट ऑल ऑफ यू नो सोनू सुद सोनू सुद ओके आई आई एम सॉरी इफ द स्पेलिंग इज रॉन्ग सो सोनू एस वो स्टैंड फॉर सॉफ्ट सोर एस यू डी डी स्टैंड फॉर डुक्रे हिमोफिलस डुक्रे okay next cold source where do you see hhv1 humus herpes virus 1 and 2 you see cold source theek okay? hai so guys this is all uh, from this i i expect most of the bacteriology questions might be repeated from this agar bacteriology se repeat nahi hua from uh, micro they, they haven't asked they will definitely asked in other subjects also kyunki 
you understood we also discussed other subjects here let us take a break just for 3 minutes 3 minutes fir we will discuss about the virology mycology parasitology will be finished very fast okay so let us just take the break for 3 minutes guys will you all come back or will you go and sleep tell me this thing if uh, none none of you are here then i won't have an interest to teach isliye will you all come back right so we'll be back guys let us take break for 2 to 3 minutes hardly okay
हेलो गाइस सो वेलकम बैक ऑल ऑफ यू वेलकम बाइस वेलकम बैक वेलकम बैक थैंक यू सो मच थैंक यू सो मच फॉर बीइंग हियर राइट सो रिगार्डिंग द वायरसेस रिगार्डिंग द वायरसेस मोस्ट ऑफ द क्वेश्चंस विल बी आस्ड फ्रॉम द बैक्टीरियोलॉजी पार्ट नाउ फ्रॉम द वायरोलॉजी पार्ट व्हाट आर द थिंग्स दैट आर इंपॉर्टेंट वी शैल डिस्कस राइट नाउ so coming to the virus the first thing which we do is just traditionally we will classify the virus into two types okay a goga dna right based upon the genetic material we classify either dna or rna for example if we are discussing about dna okay there are two important things uh, some are called double stranded some are called as single stranded some are called as double stranded and some are called as single stranded okay now when it comes to double stranded dna viruses kuch double stranded dna viruses aise hoga ki some of them are enveloped and some of them are not enveloped you see enveloped and some of them are not enveloped now when it is enveloped what are the different viruses what is envelope enveloping is nothing but you are hugging someone you know so when you are hugging someone you will have their presence right so that's what i'm telling you that you had when you are when you are hugging someone you will have their presence so you had her presence you had her presence now what is had here h h stands for h stands for hepardinoviridae so this is one family over here ad ad stands for adenovirus her her stands for herpes viride okay now what is this hepa viride here within this hepa adeno viride we have got an organism we have got a virus by name hep b which is your hepatitis b okay which is your hepatitis b second important thing coming to herpes viride within this herpes viride we have got these organisms like herpes simplex virus 1 and 2 okay we have got herpes simplex virus 678 epstein bar virus cytomegalovirus and varicella zoster virus okay when it comes to single stranded where we have got non enveloped only one that is called as paro virus okay now coming to enveloped we are done we discussed about enveloped then the next important thing is non enveloped hello hi med booster coming to the non enveloped within non enveloped only two important things one is called as pox viride another one is called as papova viride now what is this pox viride how do you remember all these important things all these important things how you will remember is that just remember by mnemonic variety of vaccines kaise yaad karoge variety of vaccines variety is variola virus vaccines is vaccinia virus variety of vaccines kya kya variety se one is called cowpox virus that is one variety another one is called as monkeypox virus that is one variety so variety of vaccines that is pox viride and next important thing is papova viride in papova viride the first two letters are pa pa stands for what papilloma virus next two letters are po po stands for what polioma virus pa is papilloma right po stands for po stands for polioma virus okay in the starting it will be really difficult if you just practice it right we said one night it will be very easy trust me coming to the rna viruses coming to the rna viruses also we divide this rna viruses into two types same single stranded ho gaya double stranded ho gaya single stranded mein kya fir se enveloped non enveloped how do you how do you remember all the single stranded enveloped rna viruses the only mnemonic here is that only people take fun bike rides around the rivers creating really fantastic diaries okay diaries matlab memories only people take fun bike rides only matlab ortho mixo viride people take para mixo viride toga viride okay fun bike rides around fun in the sense flavi viride bike is bunya viride rides around around in the sense arena virus and rhabdo viride okay reverse creating really fantastic diaries creating is corona viride uh, really in the sense retro viride fantastic is filo viride and delta viruses okay so these are the things now 
Next important thing is coming to non-enveloped. Non-enveloped, we have got three important things, Pycnoviridae, Calciviridae, as well as Astroviridae. Okay. Now, I won't discuss about uh, these important things over here because all these are already written. I'll just tell you how to remember this. So, just look here. When it comes to Flaviviridae, how do you remember the mnemonic? What is your Flavi favorite flavor? Your favorite flavor is Jack Daniels, for example. Okay. All of you know Jack Daniels. So, Jack Daniels is your favorite flavor of whiskey. So, what Jack Daniels will do? It is going to damage your liver. How it will damage your liver? It will cause hepatitis C and damage your liver. Okay. So, whenever patient is having liver damage, his eyes look yellow in color. Yes or no? So, that is the reason why there is yellow fever over here. Okay. Jack in the sense Japanese. Daniels in the sense dengue virus. And that is your flavy in the sense favorite uh, cup of tea. Okay. Or favorite cup of whiskey. Whatever it is. So, this is how you remember this. When it comes to uh, Bunya Viride, remember you are busy hunting sand flies. How do you remember? Busy hunting sand flies. So, busy is Bunya Viride, hunting is hantavirus, sand fly is sand fly fever. Okay. And uh, arena virus is Lassa fever, right? Uh, rhabdo is rabies virus, RHA is rhabdo, RAB is rab uh, rabies virus. And retroviridae, you know better. Coronaviridae also, you know better. That is HIV. Clear all of you? Now, what we'll do is that we shall discuss. This is just an introduction, okay? We shall discuss the shapes of the different viruses which we have. For example, if you look at the brick-shaped virus, which is brick-shaped virus, guys? Anyone? Your pox virus is brick-shaped virus, okay? Next, bullet-shaped virus. Bullet shaped virus is just remember it as rub. Rub de banadi chodi, right? So just remember it as rub. Rub stands for rabies. Rub stands for rabies. So R, A, and B. B is bullet, rabies. Where will you see star? Star is nothing but astro, right? So astro virus, star shape of viruses is astro virus. Okay. Next, cup shape virus. In the cup, what do you take? In the cup, you take milk. Milk is loaded with what? Calcium. Calcium is nothing but called as Calvi virus. Calcium is nothing but called as Calvi virus. Sand sprinkled appearance. So, sand sprinkled appearance you see in case of Arena virus. You see in case of Arena virus. Okay. So, whatever mnemonic you want, you can keep. I am putting it as S A A R, SAR. You call it as SAR, you call it as SAR, whatever it is. Wheel shaped virus. What is a wheel shaped virus? Right? Now, what is the function of wheels? SAR ko wheels hota hai na. What is the function of wheels? Wheels are responsible for rotation. Rotation matlab kya? Rotavirus. Rotation in the sense rotavirus. Right? Next, filamentous shaped. Fill, fill. Fill is filamentous. Fill is. Filoviridae. Phil is filoviridae. Phil is filamentous. Phil also stands for filoviridae. And next, herring bone or zipper like. Herring bone or zipper like is seen in case of para mixoviridae. Para mixoviridae. Okay. So this is this is these are all the important things which you need to know. Right now, coming to the bodies, we have already discussed the bodies previously, inclusion bodies. Right? Yeah, in a virus virology, maybe we will discuss some more important bodies over here. Now, rabies is caused by what dog? When you hit the dog, what will happen? The dog will run away. So the dog ran away. R A here is standing for rabies, and N here stands for bodies called as negri bodies. Where do you see these negri bodies? These are the negri bodies which you see over here in case of rabies, right? Whenever you take a biopsy of a patient of hippocampus of cerebellum, there you will find this negri bodies. Clear all of you? There you find this negri bodies. Very good, Sharad, very good. Next, Tori's bodies, yellow fever, already we discussed kiya. Toy, Tivo is Tori's, Y is yellow fever, right? So these bodies over here which you can see are Taurus bodies. So these red color things are your Taurus bodies. 
नेक्स्ट इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग इज दैट यू हैव गॉट सम वेरी स्पेशल एसिनोफिलिक इंक्लूजन कहां पे न्यूक्लियस के अंदर सो दैट इज वाई यू कॉल्ड एज इंट्रा न्यूक्लियर इोसिनोफिलिक इंट्रा न्यूक्लियर इोसिनोफिलिक इंक्लूजन सो वे डू यू सी दिस इंट्रा न्यूक्लियर इोसिनोफिलिक इंक्लूजन सो देर आर टू टाइप्स वन इज कॉल्ड एज काउड्राई ए बॉडीज काउड्राई बी बॉडीज काउड्राई ए बॉडीज हैव गॉट फ्यू न्यूक्लियर काउड्राई बी बॉडीज हैव गॉट मेनी न्यूक्लियर यहां पर देखो काउड्राई ए बॉडी इज दिस एंड ये देखो काउड्राई बी बॉडी कंपेयर करके देखो कैसे है राइट सो काउड्राई ए एंड काउड्राई बी यू सी फ्यू न्यूक्लिया काउड्राई ए बॉडी वे डू यू सी दिस काउड्राई ए सो रिमेंबर निमोनिक है चिकन है चिकन सो वॉट इज दिस है चिकन हेच स्टैंड फॉर हेच स्टैंड फॉर हेरपीस राइट चिकन स्टैंड फॉर चिकन पॉक्स Yes or no? And A Y stands for yellow fever. A chicken, right? The the wording sounds A Y E. Y E stands for yellow fever. When it comes to cow drow B bodies, B stands for bap. Bap is father. A for adenovirus, P for polio virus. A for adeno and P for polio. So these are uh, two pictures over here. Again, yahan pe bhi same cow drow B bodies over here. You can see very clearly cow drow B bodies. Okay. Now, where do you see, sir? You see such beautiful appearance of the bodies over here. ये देखो, these bodies are called as Henderson-Peterson bodies, right? So, where do you see Henderson-Peterson bodies? You see in a patient called as Mohender. You see in a patient called as Mohender. M O मतलब क्या? M O is molluscum contagiosum. Hender मतलब क्या? Henderson-Peterson bodies. Mohender, Henderson-Peterson bodies. Okay? Next, where do you see this guarnery bodies or passion bodies? You see in case of variola. Okay, you see in case of variola. So all of you know, all of you know guava. You eat guava or you call it as guava, whatever it is. Guava, you know the fruit, right? Guava in the sense guarnery and wa in the sense variola. Okay, so you see in case of variola, you see these bodies. Clear? now all of you know that epstein bar virus is a very dangerous virus because this uh, associated with this virus there are many malignancies what are the malignancies which you can see in association with epstein bar virus one is burkitt lymphoma okay second is nasopharyngeal carcinoma third is hodgkin's lymphoma and next is nhl what is nhl anyone Hodgkin's HL hoga to NHL kya hoga? Non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Very, very good. Non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Next important thing is that all DNA viruses will replicate. DNA viruses jitne bhi hai, all the DNA viruses will replicate. Where do the DNA viruses replicate? In the nucleus. Except pox virus. Except pox virus. In the same way, all virus, all RNA viruses, where do they replicate? They replicate in the cytoplasm, except influenza and retroviruses. Except these two, remaining all RNA viruses, they replicate within the cytoplasm. In the same way, except pox virus, all the DNA viruses replicate in the nucleus. Right. Now, when it comes to that pox virus, pox virus is responsible for causing mollusca. Uh, sorry. Pox virus it mainly causes molluscum contagiosum. Okay, so molluscum contagiosum. If you see flesh colored papule, yeah, देखो papule देखे it is looking fleshy. Papule के center में देखो you don't you see a central umbilication? एक छोटा सा depression है center में. So fresh colored papule, fresh flesh colored papule with central umbilication. ये statement ना रख लो क्योंकि the same statement will be given in the exam. If they give clinical question, they will give you on examination the papules are flesh colored, right, with central umbilicated herniation. So these papules are nothing but called as a papules of molluscum contagiosum. They go away automatically by themselves. Okay. they automatically go away by themselves okay nothing to do now 
Uh, even in HIV patient also you see the same papules. How do you differentiate between uh, these papules located in children which are most common than the HIV patient? In HIV patient you see multiple papules all over the body which means he is a HIV patient. Okay. Next important thing <coughs> is polyoma virus. Next important thing is polyoma virus. Within this polyoma virus, there are two important viruses. One is called JC virus, BK virus. You need not to know, you need not to know what is the, uh, let us say, the abbreviation of these. J JC is the first patient uh, who was admitted with this virus and BK is also the patient who was admitted with that particular virus. It is the names of the patients, okay. Now, next important thing you need to know is that just remember the mnemonic project. Project. Pro matlab kya? Batao, within this project, PRO, PRO here stands for polyoma virus. JE stands for JC virus. Okay. And BK in the sense bat. Ye yaad rakho, BK virus is AT. What is AT? I will tell you in a minute. Now, JC virus will cause what? It will cause PML. PML means progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy. So this is what it is caused by the JC virus. When it comes to the BK virus, kaise yaad rakhna chahiye isko? BAT. B stands for BK virus. And what does AT stand for? Batao. AT stand for it targets transplant patients. Okay. AT stands for it targets mainly your transplant patients. For example, let us say a patient had a transplanted kidney. It will mainly go and affect the kidney. Clear? It will mainly go and affect the kidney. Everyone understood here? Perfectly clear with this? Head and neck anatomy. This is not anatomy session, Nora Hassan. So, look at the next important thing that is that is the herpes viruses. How many herpes viruses we have got over here? We have got herpes virus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay? Herpes virus 1 is transmitted through. How is it transmitted, guys? Who will tell me how it is transmitted? Respiratory secretions and saliva. Herpes uh, simplex virus 2 is transmitted through sexual contact. Okay? HHV3 is also called as varicella zoster virus and it is transmitted through respiratory secretions. Varicella zoster virus madlab, uh, varicella zoster virus madlab kya? Which will cause chicken pox. You know? Next, herpes virus number 4, which is Epstein Barr virus. Again, respiratory secretions. Cytomegalovirus is congenital transmission and sexual contact. Ye bas, ye cheeze na, you just have to remember it. Herpes human, herpes virus 6, 7, both of them salivary uh, transmission, 8 is sexual contact. Abhi, pe, the important thing is, which of the following are through sexual contact is very important. One is 8, okay. another one is 5 over here and next you have got 2. 258 is, 258 is what? 258 is sexual contact. So, after the transmission is done, now we will discuss what diseases is the, are the viruses causing in a single table in a nutshell. Very easy. Herpes simplex virus 1 causes two important things, keratoconjunctivitis and herpes labialis. Keratoconjunctivitis and herpes labialis. HSV2 causes herpes genitalis. Why? Why did I say that? Yeah, this is sexual contracted infection, so it would cause what? Herpes genitalis. Coming to herpes, human herpes virus 3, it, varicella zoster causes two important infections. For example, today varicella zoster infected me, I will get chicken pox. Chicken pox pura katam honi ke baad, once everything is done, sometimes still this varicella is residing within my body. Okay, later on again if you activate this virus inside your body, this time it will not cause chicken pox but this time it will cause what shingles so shingles is always a reactivated variant okay so chicken pox as well as shingles next epstein barr virus kissing disease epstein barr virus is also called as kissing disease which would cause was infectious mononucleosis infectious mononucleosis there is a triad that is given directly in uh, in uh, this uh, davidson textbook which i have taken a screenshot here Infectious mononucleosis ka triad kya hai? Triad is, if 
फेटिक फेरिंजाइटिस एंड जनरलाइज एडिनोपैथी बट हम टेक्स्ट बुक्स में वॉट डू वी रीड वी रीड देर इज पोस्टीरियर सर्वाइकल लिम्फर्डनोपैथी ओके यूजल इट इज पोस्टीरियर सर्वाइकल लिम्फर्डनोपैथी ओके जस्ट रिमेंबर दिस जनरलाइज लिम्फर्डनोपैथी एंड पोस्टीरियर सर्वाइकल लिम्फर्डनोपैथी गिव्स यू ए ट्रायड फॉर इन्फेक्शियस मोनोन्यूक्लियोसिस विच इज कॉल्ड एज ए किसिंग डिसीज याद रहेगा कि नहीं ऑल ऑफ यू सेकेंड इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग इज साइटोमेगालो वायरस रिमेंबर इट एज सी 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 C stands for cytomegalovirus. C is it is also it is also causing what congenital cytomegalovirus, right? It is also congenitally transmitted, and it will also cause what chorioretinitis. It will also cause what? It would also cause chorioretinitis. Your your choroid layer of the eyeball as well as the retina in the front, both of them are inflamed. Six and seven together causes roseola infantum. guys when you give rose to someone right you plug the rose and you don't keep it for yourself you give rose to the next person right so there must be two persons involved one is six another one is seven roseola infantum human herpes virus a it is associated with kaposi's sarcoma what is kaposi's sarcoma within the blood vessels you have got endothelial cells agar endothelial cells ka cancer ho gaya this is called as kaposi's sarcoma okay the remaining you will study in pathology one very important is cytomegalovirus cytomegalovirus very good someone is already telling here cytomegalovirus if you look uh, at the inclusions these cytomegalovirus will leave owl eye inclusion ye yaad rakho cyto is owl eye inclusions cyto is nothing but cells cells matlab write down two cells over here so these two cells looking like an owl okay so owl eye inclusions clear all of you all i inclusions see here uh, this is what i was telling you varicella zoster virus normally initial infection what it causes is chicken pox but agar ye reactivate hua then it would cause shingles matlab tab tak till then where is this varicella zoster virus sleeping this varicella zoster virus becomes dormant in the dorsal root ganglia dorsal root ganglia of spinal cord may it is dormant if you wake it up then it will cause shingles and this is called as herpes zoster this time so there are two different types of herpes zoster if it affects the eye you call it as herpes zoster uticus if it will affect the uh, sorry i'm i'm really sorry if it will affect your ear it is called as herpes zoster uticus if it will affect your eye you call it as herpes zoster ophthalmicus so herpes zoster uticus is also called as ramsay hunt syndrome now if patient should get this herpes zoster uticus where should this varicella zoster virus reside it should reside in the geniculate ganglion of which cranial nerves who will tell me geniculate ganglion of which cranial nerves does this reside basically jaldi batao fatafat who will tell me the answer only 7 sirf 7 3 mihir nahi remember this thing right now remember this thing uh, trigeminal is not this one it will reside in 7 very good 7 and 8th pair of cranial nerve 7 and 8th pair of cranial nerve when it will reside in the 7th pair of cranial nerve it is going to cause ipsilateral facial ipsilateral facial paralysis ipsilateral facial paralysis when it will uh, involve the eighth pair of cranial nerve it would cause vertigo as well as sensory neural hearing loss sensory neural hearing loss theek hai eighth pair of cranial nerve kya hai vestibulo cochlear nerve matlab vestibular nerve hai usme cochlear nerve is also there vestibular nerve is responsible for the balance and cochlear nerve is responsible for the hearing so balance out ho gaya matlab vertigo hearing is gone sensory neural hearing loss You understood this? ये याद रखो, okay? This is given in Davidson book itself. Most of the students you confuse only seventh, seventh and seventh. This is not seventh, seventh and eighth. Both of them. ठीक है? और David's I I will come to this. ठीक है? I will come to the vesicles. Uh, Shubang, I will come to the vesicles in a minute. Uh, coming to herpes zoster ophthalmicus. In herpes zoster ophthalmicus, reactivation of varicella zoster virus. which is located in the ophthalmic division of trigeminal nerve so tell me 
once you reactivate this, which nerves will be affected? Yaha pe to 7th, 8th effect hua. And here, which nerves will be affected? Anyone? Which nerves will be affected over here? There are two branches that are fifth nerve. I have already written it. In the trigeminal nerve, in the trigeminal nerve, this virus is residing. It is dormant in this trigeminal nerve. Especially in the ophthalmic division of trigeminal nerve, it is dormant. But it is going to affect two important nerves. One nerve, one nerve is called as ophthalmic nerve. Very good, Shubham. Ophthalmic nerve. And what is the other nerve, you know? Other nerve is nasociliary nerve. Naso ciliary nerve. So two important nerves it is going to affect. One nerve is called as ophthalmic nerve and the next nerve is called as nasociliary nerve. Clear all of you? Ye yaad rakna yaar, please. Okay? Now look at this thing. You see, this patient is having uh, yaar pe, this patient is having facial palsy, ipsilateral facial palsy. Right? Along with ipsilateral facial palsy, he is also having vesicles within the ear. So, this is called as Ramsey Hunt syndrome or yaha pe herpes zoster ophthalmicus, one part is affected. Sir, why is it not going on to the other side? This is the character of this particular rash. This rash will only be on to one side of the dermatome. This was a question that was asked previously. They directly give an image. You see any image up there, they go rash is only on one side, not crossing onto the other side of the dermatome. Yes, syphilis. Hoga. How do you diagnose this condition? You uh, Ramsey Hunt syndrome ko kaise diagnose karoge by tone audiometry. How do you diagnose herpes zoster ophthalmicus by slit lamp examination? This is very, 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 very important. Slit lamp examination is very important. Okay. Clear? So look at this. This is a unilateral vesicular lash that is located unilaterally on single dermatome and do not cross the dermatome. Ye three points yaad rakho ke? Single dermatome and it do not cross the dermatome. So PCR to you do for every disease you do PCR. But important thing you need to know is that you need to do a test called as Zank test. Right? Within this Zank test what you will find? Two important things you will find. Multinucleated giant cells and intranuclear eosinophilic cowdry A inclusions. Yeah, there. Cowdry A bodies are intranuclear eosinophilic bodies. Just now we discussed HSV 1, 2 and I told you hay chicken pox. You remember that? So H stands for herpes simplex virus 1, 2 and even in varicella zoster also. If you do the Zang test, you will see this cowdry A inclusions. Yaad rakna guys. This part, I am telling you, this is a highly, highly anticipated part. Very, very important for your exams. Okay. I told you in the starting, again I am telling you, again I am telling you, if you, if you just uh, remember all these things which I am telling you, not even missing a single point, more than 10 questions. If the ratio is around, let us say 16 to 17 that is asked from micro, more than 10 questions, 100% you will get it. Believe me. So I will also do a another session after the exam also and I want you guys to comment down once if you see the questions that are coming from this okay in your exam. So next important thing is HPV human papilloma. Papilloma matlab kya warts. Papilla. Papilla are like warts okay. So you see multiple warts in this patient. Kitne strain se? 1, 4, 6, 11, 16, 18 okay. 1, 4, 6, 11, 16, 18. 1,4 HPV will cause skin warts which are called Verruca vulgaris. I did not mention uh, the pictures here. You will study the pictures in Dermat. 6,11 cause genital warts. Okay. So, condylomata, uh, condylomata acuminata. And 16,18 will cause cervical or vaginal neoplasia. What kind of uh, neoplasia you will have? Cervical or vaginal neoplasia you will have in this patients. You know one thing, most common cause of febrile seizures, who will 
most common okay this is not the correct place to write i think i've already written it down yeah most common cause of febrile seizures is human herpes virus 6 keep this thing in mind okay most common cause of febrile seizures pata kaha pe dekhte ho febrile seizures in children in pediatrics also this point will come again most common cause of febrile seizures in children is because of human herpes virus 6 now I am going to teach you hepatitis B serology. I am writing here it is 100% because a question here. Definitely you will get one question from hepatitis B serology. The way I teach you learn the same way very easily the questions will be. What is the way? First rules. There are some rules. What are the rules? Whenever for example I got hepatitis B infection. Okay. If I get hepatitis B infection in acute phase or in chronic phase also the marker that is elevated within my blood is hbsag surface antigen hepatitis b surface antigen okay hepatitis b surface antigen right next the first marker to be elevated abhi to bola just now only i told you acute phase or chronic phase may hbsag so first marker to be abnormal matlab acute phase mein yoga that is again your hepatitis B surface antigen. Marker that is indicating high infectivity. Agar ye marker hai to pata lagega ki bahut jada infection hai. That is HB EAG. HB EAG. Marker indicating recent vaccination. Ye bandha recently vaccine liya. How will you know that? Anti- HBS. HBS is surface. Anti-HBS. Marker indicating the past infection. Past matlab jamane ka infection nahi. Past matlab it can be recent infection also. So past infection is anti-core. Mean HBC. If you remember these rules, I am telling you, every part will be really, really, really very easy. Just remember this. Okay. So what are this? Uh, any acute or uh, chronic infection, you see this elevated. Next important thing is, the first marker to become abnormal is HBSAG. High infectivity is HBEAG. Recent vaccination is anti-HBS. Past infection is anti-HBC. Now IgM, all of you know this. Acute infection, which antibodies are elevated? IgM. Okay. Now you will tell me, IgM anti-HBC matlab kya? IgM मतलब acute infection मैंने acute लिखा यहाँ पे anti HBC is positive मतलब क्या anti HBC is positive मतलब past infection past infection past मतलब recent infection so recent acute infection this is the diagnosis clear all of you recent acute infection this will be the diagnosis so whenever you see the questions in the exam whenever you see the questions in the exam first your concentration should completely go on Anti HBS. Ab me jo bol raun, suno. First, your concentration should go on anti HBS. Okay. If anti HBS is positive, ye dekho, anti HBS is positive, it means he is having immunity. Or case they aya wo immunity, it can come from an infection. Immunity infection se aata hai. Immunity can also come because of vaccination. Right? If anti HBS is positive, then immediately look for anti HBC. Agar ye positive hai, it means infect immunity due to natural infection. If anti-HBC is negative, it means patient is having immunity because of vaccination. Agar ye yaad kar liya aap log, then I am telling you every question you can solve. If you want, I will prove it right now. Ye dekho, yahan pe, just look at this. Mene kya bola tha? First, always look at anti-HBS AG. Uh, sorry, anti HBS. Uh, you have to look. Yeah, they go here. Anti HBS is positive. Agar anti HBS positive, hai, then you look for anti HBC. Wo positive hai ki negative. Hai. Anti HBC is also positive. It means patient is having immunity to what? Immunity to natural infection. So the diagnosis will be patient is having immunity to natural infection. Immunity to natural infection. Second important one. We we'll say anti-HBS is positive. After HBS is positive, look at HBC. 
एच पी सी इज पॉजिटिव और निगेटिव यहाँ पे निगेटिव है निगेटिव है मतलब पेशेंट इज हैविंग इम्यूनिटी बिकॉज ऑफ वैक्सीनेशन ये देखो इट इज नेगेटिव इट इज नेगेटिव इट मीन्स पेशेंट इज हैविंग इम्यूनिटी ड्यू टू वैक्सीनेशन वैक्सीनेशन की वजह उसको इम्यूनिटी मिला इजी ऑल ऑफ यू इज इट इजी थर्ड इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग थर्ड इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग इज दैट फिर से ये देखो एंटी एच बी एस क्या है एंटी एच बी एस इज नेगेटिव एंटी एच बी एस इज नेगेटिव अगर नेगेटिव है तो क्या करना चाहिए वी डिड नॉट डिस्कस ठीक है लेट इज लीव इट अड एच बी एस एज इज पॉजिटिव एच बी एस एज इज पॉजिटिव मतलब आइदर एक्यूट हो सकता है या क्रोनिक हो सकता है बिकॉज आई टोल्ड यू एक्यूट और क्रोनिक एच बी एस एज विल बी पॉजिटिव सो दिस पेशेंट इज हैविंग आइदर एक्यूट और क्रोनिक इन्फेक्शन नेक्स्ट लुक हियर पेशेंट इज हैविंग आईजीएम आईजीएम कौन सा इन्फेक्शन हो सकता है आईजीएम वेर एवर यू सी आईजीएम आईजीएम इज एक्यूट इन्फेक्शन सो कैन आई राइट हियर पेशेंट इज एक्यूटली इन्फेक्टेड पेशेंट इज एक्यूटली इन्फेक्टेड राइट पेशेंट इज एक्यूटली इन्फेक्टेड अभी क्रोनिकली का भी दिखाता हूं देखो एच बी एस इज नेगेटिव है ना तो ये वाला जो रूल है ना ये वाला जो टेबल मैंने ड्रॉ किया था ना दिस वॉन्ट अप्लाई नाउ लुक एट एच बी एस एजी एच बी एस एजी पॉजिटिव पॉजिटिव मतलब आइर एक्यूट हो सकता है नहीं तो क्रोनिक हो सकता है लुक एट आईजीएम आईजीएम पॉजिटिव है कि नेगेटिव है आईजीएम इज नेगेटिव आईजीएम नेगेटिव है विच मीन्स इट इज नॉट एक्यूटली इन्फेक्टेड इट इज क्रोनिकली इन्फेक्टेड chronically infected yeah very good so if you understood this one question is in your pocket right now guys believe me if you understood this all of you understood message very fastly we'll go on to the next part very good now next important thing next important thing ye dekho yahan pe all of you look at this yahan pe you can see some white color spots in the mouth in the mucosa these white color spots which you can see in the mouth these are called as very good very good sharad very good these are called as coplic spots where do you see coplic spots coplic spots are seen in measles measles is caused by what measles is caused by measles virus measles is caused by measles virus ek ho gaya okay next Look at this and tell. Pata hai, बहुत लोग ये बोलेंगे wrong. You will be telling wrong. Don't tell it is candida. ये candida हो ही नहीं सकता You see this particular appearance of the tongue over here is called as strawberry tongue. This is strawberry tongue. वे टू यू सी स्ट्रॉबेरी टंग हमने ऑलरेडी डिस्कस किया बैक्टीरियोलॉजी में यस स्कारलेट फीवर स्ट्रॉबेरी टंग यू सी इन केस ऑफ स्कारलेट फीवर एंड स्कारलेट फीवर कहां पे देखते हो दैट यू सी इन केस ऑफ स्ट्रेप्टोकोकस पायोजीनिस स्ट्रेप्टोकोकस पायोजीनिस ओके नेक्स्ट वॉट आर दीज स्पॉट दीज स्पॉट आर रेड कलर स्पॉट विच यू सी ऑन द सॉफ्ट पैलेट दीज रेड कलर स्पॉट विच यू सी इन द सॉफ्ट पैलेट आर कॉल्ड एज फॉर शाइमर साइन Okay, this is called as Forsheimer sign. Where do you see Forsheimer sign? Perfect, guys. You are really, really so beautiful. You are answering perfectly right. You see in case of rubella. Rubella is caused by what? Rubella virus. Rubella virus. Okay. Next, you see this appearance. This appearance of uh, where both the cheeks are red. This is called as slapped cheek appearance. What is this? This is called as slapped cheek appearance. So slapped cheek appearance, Shubang, perfect, very good. Slapped cheek appearance is parvo virus, parvo virus B nineteen, and another important thing you are forgetting. This is also called as a fifth disease if you remember. This is also called as a fifth disease if you remember, or you can also call it as sixth and fifth. You also call it as erythema infectiosum. Erythema infectiosum. Okay. 
So this is a lazy pattern of the rash over here. Parvovirus B19, parvovirus B19, fifth disease, uh, erythema infectious. Clear all of you? Now, roseola infant, I mean, Ebola, rose, only you share between two people, human herpes virus 6 and 7, but most commonly human herpes virus 6. Okay? Within this, you see Nagayama spots. Actually, guys, this question they won't ask in the exam. Don't worry. Because Nagayama spots and these Forsheimer signs, they both almost they are similar. Here, baby, you see uh, those um, red color dots on the palette. Okay? So, don't uh, worry about that. Mostly, they will ask you the name only. They won't give you the picture. So, hand, foot, mouth disease is Kokakzaki virus. Hand, foot, mouth disease is Kokakzaki virus. Next, most common viral cause of acute hemorrhagic cystitis is adenovirus. This is just a one-liner question which you need to know. That is, what is the most common viral cause of acute hemorrhagic cystitis? That is your adenovirus. Okay. Receptors that are used by virus. If a virus has to enter into your body, simply it cannot have a cakewalk and come. Hai na? Ek receptor mediated response. Hoga na. So what are the receptors? All of you look here. Cytomegalovirus uses a receptor called as heparan sulfate. Okay. Epstein Barr virus. B ke baad kya aega? C. C ke baad kya aega? D. B, C, D. B, C, D. B is Epstein Barr. C, D, 21. C, D, 21. HIV uses what receptors? 445 receptor. What is this? 445 receptor. 4 kya hai? CD4. Then say 4 kya hai? CR4. Again 5 kya hai? CR5. So CD4, CR4, CD5. Uh, CR5. Okay. This is the thing. Parvovirus B19. Parvovirus P stands for parvovirus. It uses P antigen on the RBC. Okay. Rabies. Rabies always remember rabies is like Rani. No, Rani, you know Rani? Rani is a queen. RA stands for rabies. NI stands for nicotinic receptor. Nicotinic receptor kya ho sakta hai? Nicotinic ACH receptor, acetylcholine receptor. Rhinovirus, remember it as RICE. R H I C E. RICE, R I C E, but I am writing it as R H I. R H I kya hoga? Oh, sorry. RH kya hoga yaha pe? RH is rhinovirus. ICE is ICAM. ICAM 1. ICE is your ICAM 1. <clears throat> here all of you. So, yaha se bhi ek question expect kar sakte hai. From here also you can expect one question over here. Okay. Next important thing is a genital lesions. 100% one question will come. 100% one question will come from the genital lesions. Whether it might come in micro, whether it might come in patho, whether it might come in dermatology, I don't know. But all those three things, I have covered it here itself in micro. So, pe padne ki nahi So, just look here. Good evening, Aniya, Anika. So, genital lesions are of two different types. One is called as painful lesions or painless lesions. Abhi ye painless lesions kya hai? Painless lesions ye hota hai ki, for example, when you don't have pain in your life, where will you go? You will go for trekking. So, how will you tell your friends, chalo, kal, trekking pe chalte hai, na? Chalo, kal, trekking pe chalte hai. Chalo is what? Chalo is chlamydia. Okay? Kal, kal is klebsiella. Trekking is treponema. So, these three have painless rashes along with HPV 6 and 11. Now, when it comes to painful rashes, painful means that pe pain is pain, the temperature jada hota hai, na? There, the temperature will be high. So, patient is going to have what? Patient is going to have high temperature. High means kya? Hemophilus ducrae. Temperature means kya? Trichomonas vaginalis. And also HSV 1 and 2. But most commonly 2. Most commonly 2. They cause painful lesions. I don't think so. It is difficult for you to remember these things. Okay? So what we will do is, abhi ek ke baad ek discuss karenge after one and one after hemophilus, ducrae, painful, Shubang is telling, ducrae, ducrae, painful, very good Shubang, perfect. So ek ke baad ek discuss karenge HPV 6 and uh, 11. First HPV 6 and 11, they cause 
टू इंपॉर्टेंट इन्फेक्शन वन इज कॉल्ड एज कॉन्डिलोमैटा एक्यूमिनेटा ये देखो ऑल द पैपुलर एरप्शन सेम प्लेस राइट अराउंड सो एक्यूमिनेटा सो वॉट एरप्शन आर दे दे आर कॉल्ड एज पैपुलर एरप्शन नेक्स्ट बोविनॉइड पैपुलोसिस वॉट इज बोविनॉइड पैपुलोसिस इज बोविनॉइड पैपुलोसिस में यू सी मल्टीपल पैप्यूल्स इयर ये देखो मल्टीपल पैप्यूल्स बट यहां पे भी देखो ऑल दिस पैप्यूल्स ज्वाइन टूगेदर देर इज क्वालिस ऑफ ऑल दीज पैप्यूल्स ये सो नो सो मल्टीपल पैप्यूल्स विच आर ज्वाइन टूगेदर एंड दीज पैप्यूल्स आर ऑल्सो पिगमेंटेड दीज आर कॉल्ड एज बोविनॉइड पैप्यूलोस ठीक है ये टर्म जो है ना ये यहां पर नहीं सुनोगे यू विल लिजन इट इन डर्माटोलॉजी ओके कीप दैट थिंग इन माइंड सिक्स एंड लेवन सिक्स लेवन टू वायरसेस कॉज टू डिजीजेस कॉन्डिलोमैक्यूमिनेट एंड बोविनॉइड पैप्यूलोस विच इज पेनलेस कोई पेन नहीं होगा क्लिप्सियला ग्रैन्युलोमैटस ग्रैन्युलोमैटस द नेम इटसेल्फ सेज ग्रैन्युलोमा इंग्विनेल द नेम इटसेल्फ सेज ग्रैन्युलोमा इंग्विनेल अब ये गाइस कंपेयर द फर्स्ट वन ये देखो कंपेयर दिस वन विद दिस वन डिफरेंस क्या है दिस इज बीफी रेड दिस इज बीफी रेड एंड इसको टच करने से भी ब्लीड हो जाता है सेम लाइक इन कोरिनी बैक्टीरियम डिप्टीरिए यू हैव गॉट द प्लेग्स इनसाइड that will be uh, bleeding easily when you touch yeah there right the tonsils the same thing here bleeds easily okay when you do a biopsy this is how you find what is this these are called as likely already dono van bodies these are called as dono van bodies next important one is chlamydo uh, chlamydia trachomatis l1 l2 and l3 forms so they cause lymphogranuloma venerum लिम्फोग्रैनुलोमा वेनरम नाउ व्हाट इज दिस लिम्फोग्रैनुलोमा वेनरम इज दैट ओनली द लिम्फ नोड्स विल बी एनलार्ज और एनलार्ज लिम्फ नोड्स क्या करेगा पस डिस्चार्ज करेगा पेनफुल इंग्वाइनल लिम्फ नोड ये देखो ये इंग्वाइनल रीजन है राइट पेनफुल इंग्वाइनल लिम्फ नोड्स एंड दीज इंग्वाइनल लिम्फ नोड्स विल हैव ड्रेनिंग साइनसेस दिस ड्रेनिंग साइनसेस इज कॉल्ड एज ग्रूव साइन ये याद रखना दिस ट्रेनिंग वेरी गुड मयूरी मयूरी इज टेलिंग ग्रे व्हाइट मेम्ब्रेन इन द डिप्टीरिया व्हिच ब्लीड्स on touch very good theek okay? hai uh, one yes yes definitely definitely you can do it ankita ankita anika uh ek cheez one point guys i won't write it here aap notes mein likh lo one point is that candida albicans pata hai you see on the tongue candida albicans a thick white plague is formed and you also see uh, corini bacterium diphtheria right so in both of these in diphtheria and uh, candida albicans dono mein you see white color deposition in diphtheria the white color deposition is on the tonsils when you try to scrape it off it will bleed but in candida albicans when you try to scrape it off it doesn't bleed ye bahut important difference hai okay keep this thing in mind What is groove sign? Draining sinuses of the painful inguinal lymph nodes is called as a groove sign. Next is treponema pallidum. I told you treponema already. Primary syphilis, secondary tertiary. Primary me mene kya bola tha? Canker. Canker is painless. You remember that? In bacteriology we spoke. So two important serum antibody test and um, dark field microscopy where you see the treponems giggling. Genital herpes. in this genital herpes if you look at the picture you see there are multiple vesicles which are grouped together that is why you call this as multiple grouped vesicles exact terminology will be used in the exam also multiple grouped vesicles but lymph nodes are painful painful inguinal lymphadenopathy so how do you diagnose genital herpes ye wala question if la previous to previous year they asked this question that how do you diagnose this so there are three ways one is called as one is the most accurate method most rapid method most confirmatory method accurate method kya hoga viral culture of the lesion accurate rapid is direct fluorescent antibody dfa testing एंड कंफर्मेटरी इज जैंगसमियर जैंगसमियर में हम क्या देखते हैं मल्टी न्यूक्लिएटेड गेन सेल्स आई थिंक अबाउट जैंगसमियर जस्ट नो वी डिस्कस्ड ओके जैंग टेस्ट एंड जैंगसमियर मल्टी न्यूक्लिएटेड गेन सेल्स आर सीन ओके 
Mayuri Jewel is asking, Candida albicans is due to steroid inhalation. Yes, Mayuri. So, in medicine, this point is given that whenever a patient who is having asthma, uh, he will be using spacer devices. I right? say spacer devices, puffers. So, after using puffs, puffers, what does it mean? Betamethasone, right? Clobetasone. So, there are steroids within that. So, you are taking a steroid inside. After taking a steroid, people forget to wash their mouth. So, steroids are immunosuppressant. So, oral region may immunity jo hai, suppress karega. When it will be suppressed, what will happen? Candida will develop. Okay. So, you should very well know how to use uh, spacer devices. So, these things you will be taught in medicine, not in micro. Okay. So, Haemophilus ducreyi is cancroid. The rash it gives is cancroid rash. You see, this picture shows as if there is some pus that is draining out. Yes or no? Uh, pustules, pustules with yellow grayish exudate. Okay. So that is what is painful inguinal lymphadenopathy is also present. Isko bas aise hi yaad rakho. You can't do anything to this. Next. Uh, trichomonas vaginalis strawberry cervix. Ye dekho. Ye cervix hai. Doesn't the cervix, uh, isn't the cervix look like a strawberry? You know? So whenever vaginoscopy jab bhi tum karte ho na, within this vaginoscope, uh, when you see, you can very clearly see that the uh, cervix is strawberry shape. So what you do is that you do a wet mount preparation. Usme kya dikega? Trichomonas ke andar na trichomonads honge. There are structures like trichomonads. They keep on moving. You would see met motile trichomonads on wet mount. Okay? You see, these are the trichomonads. See, these are the trichomonads. This is a trichomonad. This is a trichomonad. This is a trichomonad trichomonad like this. Clear everyone? Right. Now what we will do is that, you know, in some of the diseases, autoimmune diseases are also related with this. For example, group A streptococcus, I bola tha. What is the autoimmune disease that is related with this? Rheumatic fever. Right? So, in that way, we shall uh, discuss these things. For example, group A streptococcus, the uh, autoimmune disease that is associated is rheumatic fever. Rheumatic fever. Hepatitis B virus is associated with multiple sclerosis. Multiple sclerosis. Pokaxaki B3 is associated with viral myocarditis. Bohat important. Viral myocarditis. Chlamydia trachomatis is associated with. Ye batao. Ye to pakka pata hoga from your pathology. Chlamydia trachomatis is associated with Reiter's syndrome. Yade? I'm sorry if the spelling is wrong, but meaning is the same. Reiter's syndrome. Campylobacter jejuni is associated with gallien barri syndrome. gallien barri syndrome. Okay, gallien barri syndrome. Now, from your medicine neurology, neurology may gallien barri syndrome ke mein, you will study. What kind of paralysis you see? Ascending paralysis hoga ki descending paralysis hoga. Very good, Shubang. This you see ascending paralysis. Bohat important hai. The paralysis which you see over here is ascending paralysis. Okay. Ascending paralysis. Now, next important thing, cytomegalovirus is associated with scleroderma. Scleroderma. Okay. These associations uh, will repeat in every subject. Say, paper lo. Now, again, we were discussing inclusion bodies now. Abhi kuch aur inclusion bodies discuss karenge hum pe. Uh, Mishab, Mishab, very good. Symmetrical, very good. It is symmetrical ascending paralysis. Inclusion bodies, I told you, guanary bodies. Where do you see guanary bodies? Gua. What is guava? Guava is your guava, the fruit, right? So, this thing we have already discussed, but us time pe image nahi laga hai, pe image hai. So, these are guanary bodies here. Okay? Next, next bodies is Bollinger bodies. Next is Bollinger, thank you so much, FMG aspirant. Bollinger bodies. In Bollinger, where do you see Bollinger bodies? You see in foul pox. Okay? So, how do you remember this? BOL matlab kya? Bol. Kuch bol. Na? You tell something. Whenever you tell something, you have to open your mouth and talk. Kuch bolo. Na? When you open your mouth and talk, there is a foul smelling that is coming. That is called as foul pox. Aise 
foul smell that is coming that is false foul pox yeah right again we are repeating the same thing taurus bodies kahan pe dekhte ho where do you see taurus bodies you see in toys tivo matlab taurus body y matlab yellow fever yellow fever next important thing human herpes virus 1 and 2 has which bodies lipschultz bodies where do you see this where do you see this lipschultz bodies very simple human lips kahan pe dekhte ho human lips human lip l i p s human lips next rabies i told you dogs will run away right ran r a stands for rabies n stands for negri bodies negri bodies okay molluscum contagiosum henderson peterson body i have already told you about molluscum contagiosum already yaad hai right mohender you remember mohender not mahender it is mohender mohender matlab mo matlab kya molluscum contagiosum hender matlab henderson peterson bodies okay अब आएंगे यहाँ पे फर्स्ट डिसीज क्या है सेकंड डिसीज क्या है थर्ड डिसीज क्या है फोर्थ फिफ्थ सिक्स फर्स्ट डिसीज इज योर मीजल्स फर्स्ट डिसीज इज कॉल्ड एज योर मीजल्स राइट सेकंड डे डिसीज बताओ फटाफट आई नीड अ लिस्ट डाउन हियर सेकंड इज स्कारलेट फीवर सेकंड इज स्कारलेट फीवर थर्ड डिसीज इज वॉट थ्री इन थ्री आर इज Uh, sounding more r stands for rubella rubella theek hai four in uh, fourth disease kya hai duke's disease sir how, how to remember a b c d how many numbers four numbers four is d fourth disease fifth disease is erythema infectiosum erythema infectiosum erythema infectiosum yaad hai slap cheek appearance you remember that uh, kk yes you council men bodies you see in chronic hepatitis c also okay chronic hepatitis c mein bhi dekhoge ye council men bodies coming to the sixth disease sixth is roseola infantum very good roseola infantum shivam yes you are right parvo parvo in the sense parvo virus b19 parvo virus b19 your slap cheek appearance over here okay that is your slap cheek appearance over here everyone is clear uh cowdrey a and b bodies fmg aspirant i have already talked in uh, uh bacteriology part okay so in that it will be if when you recap the video you will find out that part okay so guys uh these are maximum right the most things i'm not telling you that i have covered complete virology but most important things which are repeated that is all we can do in the rapid revision sessions you know always remember something is better than nothing you know so kuch to kuch mil raha hai yahan pe you are really uh, sitting patiently here right so that is very good of you so now we shall discuss the next important part next important part that is your fungi okay so regarding this fungi mycology uh, fmg aspirant this will be enough and uh, i am confidently telling you that i have already told the students also more than 10 questions will definitely be repeated don't worry about that so so all of you just look here now coming to the fungi right how many different types of fungi uh, again i am telling a uh, pdf today sunday right christmas and all so office is not available so tomorrow in the office we will edit this i will give my team my team will edit it properly and then the pdf will be sent but tomorrow or mushkil se day after tomorrow you will get the pdf okay that is my responsibility so chalo yahan pe concentrate karte hai thodi der fungi what are the different types of fungi you have got yeast yeast ek fungi hai uh yeast like fungi is there molds or filamentous fungi or dimorphic fungi one example is cryptococcus yeast like fungus is candida molds or filamentous fungi these are the fungi that mostly are responsible for causing food poisoning coming to dimorphic fungi why are you calling it as dimorphic kyunki 
they are present in two different forms. One form is called yeast form at 37 degrees. Agar temperature thoda kam kar diya, then it will become a filamentous form at 25 degrees. So overall, let us get it directly into the matter. Two types of my, uh, two types of fungal infections are there. This will even cover your pediatrics. Okay, two types of fungal infections are uh, not pediatric. Sorry, uh, derma. One is called as cutaneous. Another one is called as subcutaneous mycosis. Cutaneous means skin. Uske niche subcutaneous. Cutaneous me do hi do infections hai. What are those two infections? One is called tinea, and another one is called as tinea versicolor. How do you remember that? How do you remember this is that? You see, there is a girl by name Tinia. There is a girl by name Tinia and she is very cute. Okay. Now, Tinia ka sister ka name is Tinia Versicolor. Sister of Tinia is Tinia Versicolor. Versicolor. Her name itself says V-E-R. Matlab, very cute. Very cute. Okay. Aise kabhi bhi mat jana. Okay. Don't attack two targets at a single time. Both ladai ho jayega, main bol raho. So, tinea is cute. Tinea versicolor is very cute. Clear all of you? Now, have you met tinea? So, you have to meet tinea. Why? Because tinea is having M-E-T. M stands for what? M stands for microsporum species. Within this, there is epidermophyton species. T stands for trichophyton species. Okay? T stands for trichophyton species. So, all these three species together, they will cause infection to the head, infection to the nails, infection to the legs, infection to the inguinal region and infection to the feet. If they are causing infection to the head, you call it as capitis. Counts are capitis, batauge, tinea capitis. Infection to the nail, tinea anguium. Infection to the torso, tinea corporis. Infection to the crural region, I mean inguinal region, tinea cruris, tinea pedis. Ho gaya? Done? You are clear till here? About tinea versicola, I will discuss it in a minute. Abhi pehle tinea ke bara mein discuss karenge. So, tinea capitis is this one. S pictures yaad rakho, the same pictures will be, uh, same pictures madlab, yaan se uta ke, they won't put in the exam. S same type of pictures might be asked. Tinea capitis, you see alopecia over here. Dusra, tinea corporis, instead of, instead of uh, uh, asking, instead of asking, directly telling you tinea corporis, pata ho kya they will be telling you, they will be telling you that erythematous annular lesions with a central clearing, matlab kya, erythematous is red, ye dekho, ye red hai, annular matlab circular hai, aur center beech mein kuch dikh rahe hai, ko, kuch nahi dikh rahe so central clearing, so that's what I'm telling you. Erythematous annular lesion with a central clearing. If you see this uh, thing in the question, see the tinea corporis. Okay? Next. Thank you so much. Tinea cruris. Cruris matlab mene kya bola tha? Inguinal region. Ek cheez, one thing you need to remember is that tinea cruris is always a symmetrical rash. Ye dekho. Symmetrical hai na? Rash inguinal region mein symmetrical hai. Tinea pedis is this one. Very easy to identify. Tinea anguium is nails. As a is type ka nails, I think you have seen many times. Okay. Now, what are the names that are given for this? Tinea corporis is called as a ringworm. Tinea corporis is called ringworm. Tinea cruris is called jock itch. The other name for this is jock itch. Tinea pedis. Pedis means foot. Counts of foot. Athletes foot. And tinea anguium is called as onychomycosis. Onychomycosis means infection of the nail. Fungal infection of the nail is called onychomycosis. So, this is all you need to remember regarding the tinea. Abhi tinea ka sister ke paas aayenge. So, tinea sister is called as tinea versicolor. So, it is also called as pithriasis. You know, pithriasis alba. You remember that? Pithriasis alba. Alba matlab white. So, this is pithriasis. So, tinea versicolor is caused by what? It is caused by malassezia furfur. What is this caused by? Malassezia furfur. This question, guys, I am telling you, bohot bar repeat ho chuka hai. Trust me, many times they have asked this question. They just give this picture only. And this, ye picture bhi as it is repeat hua bohot bar exam mein. Okay? They have given this picture. 
एंड यू कैन सी हियर बहुत सारे एरिया ऑफ हाइपो पिगमेंटेशन है देर आर एरिया ऑफ हाइपो पिगमेंटेशन वॉट आई विल डू इज दैट आई विल स्क्रैप दीज एरिया इसको स्क्रैप करूंगा एंड देन आई विल पुट इट अंडर के वो हिच प्रिपरेशन देन वॉट आई विल सी दिस इज वॉट आई विल सी ये देखो ये जो है ना दीज आर मीट बॉल्स दीज आर मीट बॉल्स और ये जो मैगी है ना मैगी नहीं बोलते इसको स्टाइलिश लैंग्वेज में स्पेगेटी बोलते हैं सो मीट बॉल्स अलोंग विथ स्पेगेटी ओके अब यहां पे देखो ये देखो मीट बॉल एंड यू सी स्पेगेटी सो फ्रॉम नाउ मीट बॉल एंड स्पेगेटी अपियरेंस कहां पे देखते हो वेर विल यू सी दिस मीट बॉल एंड स्पेगेटी वेरी गुड एफ एम जी एस प्रिंट यू सी इन टीनिया वर्सिकुलर सो मीट बॉल एंड Spaghetti appearance, meat ball and spaghetti appearance you see in uh, tinea versicola. Next important thing, our uh, patient is telling doctor, मुझे ऐसे scraping करना पसंद नहीं है. Uh, do any other test without touching me. So okay, come tomorrow to the room. Room के अंदर क्या है? Wood lamp. I will put a wood lamp onto the patient. ये देखो, this is a patient. When I'm putting a wood lamp onto the patient, this is how the lesions look. ये देखो. You see the lesions, right? so this is called as wood lamp examination even if they give this picture also it is very easy for you to answer it okay so first line kya karoge first line kya doge yahan pe which what is the first line you give here any fungal infection hai na ketoconazole fluconazole itriconazole yahi chalta rehta hai okay any fungal infection first line you give is ketoconazole topical ketoconazole second line is oral fluconazole first is topical ketoconazole and second is oral fluconazole clear all of you after after discussing cutaneous now let us dive on now let us dive on with subcutaneous mycosis right uh, now let us dive on subcutaneous mycosis now in subcutaneous mycosis one very important thing i want to tell you here subcutaneous mycosis is mainly caused by sporothrix thank you so much nawab sporothrix shenki okay Subcutaneous mycosis caused by sporothrix shenki, and this disease is called as sporotrichosis. What is this? Sporotrichosis. Sporotri. Very good. Very good. Shivam, FMG aspirant. It is also called as Rose Gardner's disease. Rose Gardner's disease. Okay. Rose Gardner's disease. Guys, if you look at the patient ka pair dekhe ko to, this is how. If you look at the patient's leg, all of you know that here you have got lymph nodes, है ना? Lymph nodes कैसे रहेगा? ऊपर नीचे ऐसे random और they are located in a line wise, है ना? ऐसे lymph nodes होंगे, you see? And this sporothrix shenki also spreads through the lymphatic way. मतलब it will infect this lymph node, उसके बाद next, उसके बाद next, उसके बाद next, then the next, then next. So it will pass the lymphatic pathway. So you see, patient will have nodules. okay you see patient will have nodules and this nodules are nodules are formed along the lymphatics nodules are formed along the lymphatics yahan pe ek bar photo ko dekh lo pata lagega you see the lymphatic appearance agar ye question diya exam mein then pakka i know you will put the answer as it is sporothrix shenki okay so nodules that are formed along the lymphatics clear all of you everyone is clear so two important things i do one is called as uh, saborad agar saborad agar uh, here kk is telling patient will uh, k patient will tell farmer's history yes rose thorn disease hai na farmer will have a prick of a thorn or something like that thank you so much nawab next is periodic acid skip or methinamine silver stain these are the two stains which we use now in methinamine silver stain if you look closely ye dekho chote chote buds dikh rahe na these uh, small buds are called as cigarette buds or you can also call this as daisy flowers okay daisy flowers ye dekho this appearance is called as cigarette shaped appearance or budding yeast 
cigarette shaped budding is or daisy flower appearance this is very very easy to identify i think in the exam okay right and uh, jodhkaur is telling it is uh, rosettes formation yes you are right jodhkaur you are right it is a rosette formation perfect now next important thing is systemic mycosis again i am telling you 100% question systemic mycosis se pakka aayega ek question dikhe de pakka one question will come and what the question is asked is they will tell you to identify what how does this plus, uh, how does this uh, uh, fungal infection basically look okay so whenever you are doing is uh, if you look at histoplasmosis right so whenever you look at uh, the organism that is causing the fungi that is causing how does the organism look and all that is what they are going to ask you okay so coming to systemic mycosis there are there are four important things what are those four important things histoplasmosis coccidiodomycosis 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 ke side mein kya hoga para hoga na para coccidiodomycosis ye dekho coccidiodomycosis yahan pe para coccidiodomycosis next blastohisto aise yaad rakho blastoplasmosis histoplasmosis okay blastomycosis histoplasmosis very easy to remember histo ho gaya blasto histo ho gaya next blasto ho gaya next fir se histo okay coccidiodo para coccidiodo i don't think so if you repeat it it would be easy so histoplasmosis histoplasmosis is caused by histoplasma capsulatum coccidiodomycosis is caused by coccidioids imitus blastomycosis is caused by blastomyces dermatitis Paracoccidiodomycosis is caused by Paracoccidiates brazilian. Sir, yeah, kya hai ye? How do I remember all these things? How do you remember these four important things? Very easy, very, very easy. Just remember it in this way. I, I am dermatologist from Brazil. Okay? I am a dermatologist from Brazil. Hi is hi. histoplasma capsulatum i am i am matlab imitus i am is what imitus uh, dermatologist is dermatitis brazilians is brazil i i am dermatologist from brazil bas khatam theek hai how does histoplasma look agar yaad rakhna hai rakh lo or else you have to remember this oval is with macrophages very very important oval is with macrophages here also you can see You see, these are oval is. ये देखो oval is cells और इसके अंदर छोटे छोटे macrophages है right? So oval is cells with macrophages is histoplasmosis. Histoplasmosis. Okay? Next, coccidiodomycosis. Coccidiodomycosis. The, the name itself is sounding coccidiodo. Something like something is circular. Yes? so you see that there is a circular structure called as a, a spherule spherule ke andar kya hoga chote chote endospores honge there are small small endospores spherules filled with endospores is always and always coccidiodomycosis spherules filled with endospores is coccidiodomycosis blastomycosis when anything will blast one structure will split into two same thing yahan pe hua blastomycosis you see two important things over here this looks like broad based budding yeast what is this broad based budding yeast abhi why am i telling you to mug it out i mean mug up these things is that this is a terminology they used in the exam okay this is the official terminology they use in the exam so blastomycosis is broad based budding yeast paracoccidiodomycosis is a captain wheel appearance ye dekho बोलने की जरूरत नहीं है बिकॉज यू नो दैट दिस इज ए कैप्टन व्हील अपीयरेंस ओवर हियर अपीयरेंस ओवर हियर फिर से वंस अगेन ओवल इज विथ मैक्रोफेजेस इज हिस्टो कॉक्सिडियो समथिंग लुकिंग लाइक ए ओवल स्ट्रक्चर विथ एंडोस्पोर्स इन इट अगर ब्रॉड बेस्ड बर्डिंग इज दो स्ट्रक्चर से ब्लास्ट हो गया होगा पैरा कॉक्सिडियो इज कैप्टन व्हील नाउ एक एग्जाम फॉर यू ये बताओ वॉट इज दिस वॉट इज दिस Anyone? 
शिवम हिस्टोस अच्छे से देखो ये हिस्टो है फिर से गलत मैंने क्या बोला था यू सी यू सी ए सर्कल विथ स्मॉल स्मॉल एंडोस्पोर्स इन इट है ना तो क्या अगर एंडोस्पोर्स ज्यादा हो गए तो ब्लास्ट हो जाएगा ना इट विल ब्लास्ट सी द सेम थिंग विथ ऑल एंडोस्पोर्स इन इट वॉट इज दिस वेरी गुड वॉट इज दिस दिस इज कॉल्ड एज कॉक्सीडियोडो माइकोसिस कॉक्सीडियो डो माइकोसिस अभी ये बताओ वॉट इज दिस वॉट इज दिस थिंग देन क्वेश्चन नंबर टू क्वेश्चन नंबर टू वेरी गुड के के वेरी गुड दिस इज ऑल्सो कॉक्सीडियोडो माइकोसिस दिस इज ऑल्सो कॉक्सीडियो डो माइकोसिस ऑक्सीडियोडो माइकोसिस हो गया वेरी गुड अभी ये बताओ हु विल टेल मी दिस पक्का आई नो एवरी वन ऑफ यू विल आंसर दिस वॉट इज दिस एशपाल बताओ एशपाल इज राइट एशपाल वेरी गुड एशपाल एशपाल इज आंसरिंग राइट ये वेरी गुड दिस इज ब्लास्टो माइकोसिस कैसे बोल रहे हो ब्लास्टो माइकोसिस क्योंकि इट ब्लास्टेड इनटू टू थिंग्स ब्रॉड बेस्ड बटिंग ईस्ट अभी ये बताओ व्हाट इज दिस देन अगर वो ब्लास्टो माइकोसिस है देन ये क्या होगा वट विल बी दिस वेरी गुड दिस इज ऑल्सो ब्लास्टो माइकोसिस वेरी गुड दिस इज ऑल्सो ब्लास्टो माइकोसिस वेरी गुड नाउ नेक्स्ट इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग ऑपरचुनिस्टिक माइकोसिस दिस विल बी द लास्ट टॉपिक हियर राइट ऑपरचुनिस्टिक माइकोसिस वॉट आर ऑपरचुनिस्टिक माइकोसिस वेरी इजी टू रिमेंबर रिमेंबर इट एज पोमा नो पोमा 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 और पोमा पोमा कैन क्राई पोमा कैन क्राई वॉट इज पोमा P stands for pneumocystis zerovaci, right? O stands for opportunistic mycosis. M stands for mucor mycosis. Can what is can? Can stands for candida. Cry cry stands for cryptococcus. Cry stands for cryptococcus. Now in this poma you see A here. A stands for aspergillus. So all these are opportunistic mycosis. Okay, opportunistic mycosis. You call them as opportunistic mycosis because जब उसको अपॉर्चुनिटी मिलेगा तभी इट विल एंटर इनटू यू इफ आई हैव एच आई वी माई इम्यून सिस्टम इज वीक इट इज ए वेरी गुड अपॉर्चुनिटी फॉर दिस फंगस टू एंटर इनटू मी सो दिस फंगस मेनली एंटर इनटू दोज इंडिविजुअल्स हुआ इम्यूनो कॉम्प्रोमाइज सो इट मीन्स क्वेश्चन में अगर पेशेंट को एच है ट्रांसप्लांट है वॉट इट इज देन यू कैन डिलीट सम ऑप्शन देर ओके कैंडिडा आल बी केन्स ईस्ट विथ बर्डिंग एंड सूडो हाइफे ओके ईस्ट विथ बर्डिंग एंड सूडो हाइफे ये देखो दिस इज ईस्ट बडिंग ईस्ट क्या है ये देखो ये बडिंग ईस्ट है सूडो हाइफे कहां पे ये देखो दीज आर योर सूडो हाइफे दिस व्हाइट एरोस आर इंडिकेटिंग सूडो हाइफे ओके नेक्स्ट 37 डिग्रीज जर्म ट्यूब इज फॉर्म ये देखो स्मॉल जर्म ट्यूब इज फॉर्म हियर एट हाउ मच डिग्रीज इट इज फॉर्म एट थर्टी सेवन डिग्रीज सो ईस्ट विथ बडिंग एंड सूडो हाइफे इफ यू लुक दिस टर्मिनोलॉजी दिस इंग्लिश इन द एग्जाम डायरेक्टली पुट इट एज कैंडिडा एल्पिकन्स Yeah, cryptococcus neoformans. Fir se you someone already told cryptococcus neoformans there. You see what is this uh, structure that is surrounding this cryptococcus neoformans? Ye dekho swollen structure hai na? Ye kya hai? Gol gol se. What is this? This is nothing but called as a capsule. For capsule, what is the stain which you use? I have already discussed in lot previously. Capsule you use negative Indian stain. Negative staining. नेगेटिव स्टेनिंग में दो स्टेन है नेग्रोसिन अनदर वन इज इंडियन इंक राइट यू रिमेंबर दैट राइट सो वॉट यू नीड टू नो हियर इन द एग्जाम हाउ दे वॉट इज अर्गेनिज्म विच इज हेज एनकेप्सुलेटेड ईस्ट विथ अ नैरो बटिंग ये देखो एनकेप्सुलेटेड है और बटिंग देखो नैरो है एनकेप्सुलेटेड है फिर से नैरो बटिंग गेटिंग इट सो एनकेप्सुलेटेड ईस्ट विथ अ नैरो बटिंग इज वॉट इस क्रिप्टोकोकस नियोफॉर्मेंस इस क्रिप्टोकोकस नियोफॉर्मेंस अभी यहां पे बताओ कितने लोगों को लगा कि ये देख के ब्लास्टोमाइकोसिस है करके हाउ मेनी ऑफ यू फेल्ट दैट दिस इज ब्लास्टोमाइकोसिस पता है एक डिफरेंस क्या है यू नो व्हाट इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन ब्लास्टोमाइकोसिस एंड हियर सराउंडिंग दिस यू सी अ स्वेलिंग देयर यू सी अ स्वेलिंग ए शेडेड एरिया सराउंडिंग दिस 
बट सराउंडिंग ब्लास्टोमाइकोसिस यू डोंट सी एनी शेडेड एरिया बस यही डिफरेंस है विल यू रिमेंबर दिस ऑल ऑफ यू वेरी गुड नेक्स्ट इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग मुझे पता है किसी को नहीं लगा राइट बट आई जस्ट वॉन्ट टू मेक दिस डिफरेंशियल पॉइंट ओवर हियर सो नेक्स्ट इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग इज एसपर जिलस वेन इट कम्स टू एसपर जिलस hyphae branching at acute angles this is the terminology that will be given in the exam hyphae branching at acute angles matlab 45 degrees ye picture dekh ke tumko pakka lagega ki ye aspergillus hai okay okay so whenever you look at such beautiful pictures over here put it as aspergillus mucor mycosis non septate hyphae with wide angle branching acute angle branching is acute angle branching is aspergillus a for aspergillus a for acute angle okay म्यूकॉर माइकोसिस इज वाइड एंगल ब्रांचिंग म्यूकॉर मतलब क्या म्यूकस वेन यू टेक ए म्यूकस आउट ऑफ यूर नोस विल यू थ्रो इट डाउन और विल यू थ्रो इट अवे ऑब्वियसली थ्रो इट अवे वाइड एंगल ब्रांचिंग ठीक है न्यूमोसिस्टिस जीरो वेसी राइट न्यूमोसिस्टिस जीरो वेसी ओवर हियर न्यूमोसिस्टिस जीरो वेसी न्यू मतलब क्या वॉट डू यू मीन बाय न्यू New is pneumocystis. So just remember it as new disc. New disc. Disc shaped yeast is pneumocystis. Zero B C. Okay. Next important thing. Next important thing. How do you remember this aspergillus over here? Okay. I have. I think I have written it over here. I will show it to you. I will write it. So what is the stain you use over here? Methanamine silver, diff or diff quick or right stain. ठीक है इसको याद करना पड़ेगा कोई निमोनिक विमोनिक नहीं है यहाँ पे जस्ट रिमेम्बर इट डिस्क शेप्ड ईस्ट इज अ न्यू डिस्क दैट इज न्यूमोसिस्ट इज जीरो वेसी यू सी यहाँ पे डिस्क शेप स्ट्रक्चर्स है ना क्लियर ऑल ऑफ यू राइट स्टेन और यू कॉल्स इट डिफ क्विक और मित्र सिल्वर ओके नाउ वॉट आर द क्वेश्चन विच आर आज इन द एग्जाम सेम थिंग कैंडिडा एल्बिकन्स को कैसे बोलते हो ईस्ट विथ बडिंग एंड सूडो हाइफे ठीक है सर ये एग्जाम में ठीक है अभी तो ठीक है बट लेटर ऑन आई वोट रिमेम्बर दिस हाईफे वाईफे क्या है ये रिमेम्बर इट एज बट कैन बट पता है ना बटवाइजर है ना बटवाइजर इज अ ब्रांड ठीक है उसके अंदर क्या है वोट टेल यू इन द वीडियो बट इट इज अ ब्रांड सो बटवाइजर बट वॉट इज बट बट इज बटिंग ईस्ट कैन क्या कैंडिडा एल्बिकन्स में देखोगे ओके नेक्स्ट क्रिप्टोकोकस नियो फॉर्मेंस ऑलवेज रिमेंबर थिंग्स वेन यू Any new things are there. Never ever cry for new things. You know, new people cry for small things. Everywhere, experienced one will be silent, but new people will cry will cry for small things. New, kya hai? What is new? New means new formants. Cry means what? Cryptococcus. For small things, small means what? Narrow. Ye dekho, narrow things. So never ever cry for small things. Clear? Aspergillus, how to remember? ये तो यही पे है A for Aspergillus, A for acute, very easy to remember. Mucor mycosis, I told you my wide angle camera, my wide angle camera, my wide angle camera. Okay? My मतलब क्या My in the sense mucor. Wide angle मतलब क्या Wide angle branching, wide angle branch. Okay? So pneumocyst is zero वैसे new disc. मैंने already लिखा हूँ वहाँ पे It is new disc. Clear all of you, right? So we are about to finish the parasitology part also. Uh, down here, I've included the parasitology. So this will be the last topic in uh, Candida. Uh, uh, this thing. So coming to Candida albicans. Candida albicans can affect two important people. One is immunocompetent people, मतलब like us. Another one is immunocompromised people, like the HIV people. Immunocompetent people. इम्यूनोकॉम्पिटेंट पीपल मतलब ओरल थ्रेश वल्वो वेजेनाइटिस दीज आर द टू इंपॉर्टेंट डिसीजेस विच यू सी इन इम्यूनोकॉम्पिटेंट वेर एज इन इम्यूनो कॉम्प्रोमाइज पीपल यू सी ईसोफेजाइटिस ये चीज याद रखो ओके नाउ नेक्स्ट इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग क्रिप्टोकोकस नियो फॉर्मेंस दिस क्रिप्टोकोकस नियो फॉर्मेंस वॉट डज इट डू इज दैट दिस विल एंटर इन टू द ब्रेन एंड इट विल कॉज लीजेंस इन द ब्रेन दीज लीजेंस आर कॉल्ड एज सो बबल लीजेंस Where do you see the soap ablutions on MRI? Actually, the part which I'm explaining you right now is the radiology part. So, in the radiology, you see soap ablutions. What is that on the MRI? Cryptococcus neoformans. So, cryptococcus neoformans. 
सोप बबल लीजें वॉट एल्स यू कैन टेल इंडियन इंक है ना कैप्स्यूल होगा उसको ऑल दिस थिंग्स नेक्स्ट इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग नेक्स्ट इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग होगा कि राइट सो वॉट इज अगर आई ऑलरेडी टोल यू सबोराड अगर राइट सो रिमेंबर हाउ डू यू रिमेंबर दैट यू रिमेंबर इट एज सैब इज क्राइंग फॉर इंक सैब इज क्राइंग फॉर इंक सैब क्या होगा यू विल ऑल्सो कल्चर दिस ऑन सबोराड अगर क्राइंग क्या होगा क्रिप्टोकोकस इंक क्या होगा इंडियन इंक वॉट इज इंक इंडियन इंक ओके नेक्स्ट इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग इज अबाउट एज पर जिलस फ्यूमिगेटस ओके सो एस्परजिलस फ्यूमिगेटस कॉजेस थ्री इंपॉर्टेंट डिसीजेस इनवेजिव एस्परजिलोसिस वन सेकेंड इज एस्पर जिलोमा थर्ड इज ए बी पी ए यू कॉल दिस एज ए बी ए बी पी ए एलर्जिक ब्रॉन्को पलमनरी एस्पर जिलोसिस ओके Now, as per jilloma, oma means some ball-like thing. It feels as if there is a ball-like thing. This ball is called as fungal ball. X-ray, me dekho. Look at the X-ray. Within the X-ray, you see this fungal ball in the form of a soap bubble. Yes or no? So this is a fungal ball. The same patient when he is dead, right? So in the autopsy, this is how the fungal ball that is seen in the upper segments of the lung. Clear all of you. Everyone is clear. Perfectly clear. Right now, let us look at this. Let us look at this. Histoplasmosis is called as Darling's disease. Okay, histoplasmosis is called as Darling's disease. Now, you can also call it as like this. Hi, Darling. Hi, Darling. Hi in the sense histoplasmosis. Darling is Darling's disease. Sporotrichosis. Sporo. The name itself says sporo. Spo is sporotrichosis. Ro is Rose Gardner's disease. Ro is what? Rose Gardner's disease. Coccidiodomycosis. Coccidiodomycosis is called as valley fever or desert fever. All of you know the sweet cova. Cova, right? Co stands for coccidiodomycosis. V A stands for valley fever. Okay. Paracoxidiodomycosis also called as South American blastomycosis. इसको याद रखना पड़ेगा यार. Blastomycosis, okay? Blastomycosis is also called as Gilchrist disease. Okay? Blastomycosis is also called as Gilchrist disease. Gilchrist disease. Clear all of you? So this is the. These are some of the few important things that are asked from your mycology part. ठीक है, these are the things that are asked from your mycology part. Now let us discuss about the parasitology. अभी ये parasitology में ना मैं एक ही चीज बता रहा हूँ, पहले ही बता रहा हूँ. Parasitology mostly they will ask you definitive host क्या है, intermediate host क्या है, what is the infective stage, what is the diagnostic stage, what is the ring form, what is the trophozytic stage, okay? These are the things only. Will be asked within uh, the exam. Okay, they won't ask you uh, explain the life cycle of Plasmodium vivax. All these things they won't ask you. Max to max they will ask incubation periods and all I think. Okay, so we shall uh, write down all the things which are basically asked over here. Okay, now all of you just look here. There are two different types of malaria. One is agar mosquito ake khata that is called as mosquito borne malaria. Another one is if you have malaria, okay. If if a patient is having malaria, if I am transfusing his blood into me, then also I will get malaria. That is called as transfusion transmitted malaria. So what is the mode of transmission here? Mode of transmission is mosquito bite. Mosquito bite. Mosquito, bolo, beta. Mosquito bite. Next one over here is transfusion of infected cells. Transfusion of Infected blood transmission of infected blood. Okay, now what is the infective stage here? Always remember in malaria the infective stage will be sporozoite. Sporozoites will enter into your body right when mosquito will bite through the mosquito salivary glands. What is entering? Sporozoites and here trophozoites are present. Trophozoites pre-erythrocytic stage. 
within this we have a pre erythrocytic stage but here pre erythrocytic stage is absent you are directly taking blood malaria blood from one person to another person you won't have pre erythrocytic stage hypnozoids what are hypnozoids hypnozoids are all the sleeping babies okay they are the dormant forms lazy forms usko hamesha sona hai where they will sleep they will find a very good organ and go sleep there they mainly sleep in the liver they mainly sleep in the liver so where do you see hypnozoids in case of malaria you see in case of plasmodium vivax and you see in case of plasmodium ovale but yahan pe you won't see any hypnozoids kyu kyunki this infection is right now in the blood hypnozoids kahan pe hoga hypnozoids will be on the liver not in the blood relapse do you see relapse here yes we see relapse and here there is no relapse relapse do not occur so just remember this point now the thing which i'm going to tell you again i'm telling 100% question will come from these things plasmodium vivax falciparum malarium as well as ovale pakka one question will come let us see what are the forms that are located in the plasmodium vivax the way exactly remember the same way as i'm telling you ring form to it is present in all of them see ye dekho ring form yahan pe bhi hai ring form is here ring form is everywhere apart from ring form the next form is gst all of you know gst tax you know g stands for gametocytes s stands for schizonts and t stands for trophocytes okay this same gst form this same gst form is also present in malaria is also present in ovale okay but in falciparum what do you have you have got only gametocyte form ring form as well as gametocyte form coming to the ring forms actually guys here ring forms ko na early trophocytes bolte hain and these trophocytes which i am showing it to you right now here these are called late trophocytes or mature trophocytes in the early trophocyte form just look at this how is this isn't it looking like this picture right so this is how many rings how many rings are there single ring hai yes or no can i call this as a ring form done look at the next picture this is plasmodium falciparum ek rbc ke andar how many rings are there more than one ring matlab multiple rings you see multiple rings are there multiple rings are present only and only where only and only they are present in plasmodium falciparum same when you come to malaria and ovale the rings are present same as plasmodium vivax only okay so uh, this is single ring over here and here it is same as vivax okay same as vivax here also uh, same as vivax i will talk about the band form shivam right now but till here ring to pata lage na now next late ones what is the late ones is the trophocytes okay now look at the trophocytes over here now tell me look at this picture look at this picture how is the trophocyte over here is it regular or irregular this irregular form ko main amoeboid form bhi bol sakta hu na you see this is an amoeboid form look at the real picture ye dekho yaha pe bhi amoeboid form mein hi hai you see here also you see amoeboid form clear next important thing look at these things over here ye dekho there are two rings over here it is looking like a compact structure yes or no look at the third form the third form from the ring from the ring it has transformed into a band form ye bahut important hai from the ring form it has transformed into a band form and finally the last one fir se same okay now look at the differences first one is irregularly amoeboid shape second one compact fourth one compact or beech mein ye jo hai band form all of you just look at this in a single rbc in a single rbc in a single rbc you see multiple rings yes or no ab yahan pe dekho don't you see a band form over here you see a band form over here so if such a picture comes in the exam so what will you put you will put it as p malaria you will put it as what you will put it as p malaria clear all of you everyone is clear right now what we will do is that we will look on to the second important stage that is gametocytes 
यू विल टेल मी द आंसर यहां पे ठीक है वॉट इज आंसर यूल टेल मी ये देखो गैमेटोसाइट दे आर स्पेरिकल और दे आर ट्रैंगुलर और दे आर लाइक ए रेक्टेंगल और स्क्वेर बताओ दे आर लाइक वॉट दे आर स्पेरिकल सो गैमेटोसाइट ओवर हियर आर स्पेरिकल ओके अभी ये देखो यहां पर गैमेटोसाइट कैसे कैन आई टेल दीज गैमेटोसाइट आर सिकल शेप्ड और बनाना लाइक और क्रिसेंट्रिक शेप्ड ये सो नो तो दीज गैमेटोसाइट ओवर हियर आर क्रिसेंट्रिक क्रिसेंट्रिक बोलते कि क्रिसेंटिक क्रिसेंटिक और सिकल शेप इफ आई एम सॉरी विद द स्पेलिंग सिकल शेप राइट द स्पेलिंग इज रॉन्ग आई एम सॉरी और बनाना शेप वॉट एवर इट इज नाउ वेन यू लुक एट वेन यू लुक एट malaria and ovale in both of them also in both of them also you will see spherical shape only you will see spherical shape only let me write it as it is similar to vivax it is similar to vivax but it is little bit small but small here also it is similar to vivax but it is small till here i hope you understood now after studying all this a guy by name sam a guy by name sam right what he is doing is that guy by name sam what is doing is that he made a zippy juice he made a zippy juice Z zippy matlab tasty juice okay sam who is sam who is sam over here batao sam matlab knuffner's dots s stands for knuffner's dots ठीक है नेक्स्ट मेड एम स्टैंड फॉर वॉट मॉरर्स डॉट्स एम स्टैंड फॉर मॉरर्स डॉट्स जिपी जेड वॉट इज जेड स्टैंड फॉर जेड स्टैंड फॉर जाइमेंट डॉट्स जेड स्टैंड फॉर जाइमेंट डॉट्स एंड जूस जे स्टैंड फॉर जेम्स डॉट्स जेम्स डॉट्स ये डॉट्स कोई नहीं पूछेगा ओके डोंट वरी बिकॉज ऑल द डॉट्स लुक सेम ओनली ये देखो ये स्नफनस डॉट्स है You you see the dots which you look, uh, which you see in the RBC. अभी ये देखो दीज आर मॉरल्स डॉट्स विच यू कैनॉट सी हियर एंड हियर दीज आर कॉल्ड जाइमन डॉट्स एंड हियर दे आर जेम्स डॉट्स ऑल ऑफ दम दे लुक सिमिलर बट मेनली कॉन्सेंट्रेट ऑन द रिंग फॉर्म्स ओके एज ऑफ द इन्फेक्टेड सेल वॉट इज वॉट इज द एज ऑफ द इन्फेक्टेड सेल ओवर हियर नाउ वेन इट कम्स टू द एज ऑफ द इन्फेक्टेड सेल this organism infects reticulocytes it mainly infects what reticulocytes here it infects all ages all ages matlab mature forms immature forms sab here it infects the old rbc old R old rbc matlab kya reticulocytes are what immature right old rbc or what mature rbc here again it will infect the reticulocytes okay hypnocytes hai yahan pe here we have got hypnozoites here we have got hypnozoites in the center we don't have hypnozoites if i ask what is the duration of erythrocytic schizogony the duration of erythrocytic schizogony is around 48 hours and here also it is 48 hours here it would be 72 hours and here again it is 48 hours 48 48 48 72 <laughs> clear so Uh, most of the questions will be repeated from this table guys i want you to just be perfect with this table okay instead of discussing about each and every virus hai na bahut lamba jayega session aise to and a lot of confusion will be there in parasitology kyunki you know parasitology mein kitna confusion hoga right so that is why everything i have put it in the form of a table so that it would be easy and now you even have got another important thing called as intestinal amoeba within intestinal amoeba you have got three important things one is called as entamoeba histolytica entamoeba coli entamoeba hartmani so if you look at the pseudopodia of entamoeba histolytica ye pseudopodia ka shape kya hai guys isn't it looking like a finger shape yes or no it is looking like which shape it is looking like a finger shaped finger shaped okay when you look entamoeba coli the entamoeba coli looks in this way okay what is this this looks like a blunt shaped blunt shape okay Ent entamoeba ha hartmani it is also looking like a finger shaped it's also looking like a finger shape 
If you look at the cytoplasm, very clearly in entamoeba histolytica, cytoplasm is divided into ectoplasm or dusra endoplasm. Okay, it is divided into ectoplasm and endoplasm. Same thing for entamoeba hartmani also, it is clearly differentiated into ectoplasm and endoplasm. But entamoeba coli is not differentiated into ectoplasm and endoplasm. Okay. Now, entamoeba histolytica will ingest what? It will ingest RBC. Entamoeba coli will not ingest RBC. Hartman also will not ingest the RBC. Why am I telling you is that whenever you look at sample, sample can like red color cell. That is called as here you cannot see I think. But yeah, if you look at entamoeba histolytica, you will see a red color thing that is the ingested RBC. Very important. This is a very important thing. Okay. So, cyst form ek hota hai, ek trophocyte form hoga, right? Now, in the cyst form, how many nuclei you have got? Yaha pe count karlo, ek, do, teen, char, how many nuclei you have got? Four. And in the second one, how many nuclei you have got? Eight. Phir se yaha pe kitne honge? Four. Four, eight, four. Okay? Four, eight, four. Next, glycogen mass. What is glycogen mass? Ye dekho, this cyst you see, within this cyst you see a mass in the center. This mass is called glycogen mass. So, important thing is that, where do you find glycogen mass in case of entamoeba histolytica? This is seen in uninucleate stage. Uninucleate stage, madlab, you know, uninucleate, later on the nuclei will divide into binucleate, that is called binucleate stage. Then it divide over uh, tetranucleate stage, two will divide into four, tetranucleate stage. Hai na? Uninucleate stage, mein hi, you will see glycogen mass. But here, you would see in quadrinucleate stage and here again back you will see in uninucleate stage 484 141 aise yaad rakho 484 44 cancel kiya matlab 11 one, one ho gaya 141 half of kar lo 8 ko 4 okay 141 one. chromatid bars this is not that important yaad rakhna hai rakh lo or else leave it coming to chromatid bars ye dekho glycogen mass ke right and left it bars and these are called chromatid bars. Here you have got one to four chromatid bars. Next, you will have splinter like chromatid bars. Matlab, aise rahega chromatid bars. Splinter like. And lastly, you have got here numerous chromatid bars. Okay. You have got what? Numerous chromatid bars. Right. So, the next important thing. Next important thing. Next important thing over here. Uh, yeah. So here we are, we are how many pages apart? Just nine pages guys, nine pages stay with me. We'll finish up the thing. So uh, next important thing, coming to cestodes. We have got three important uh, group here. Ek hoga cestode, dusra hoga trematode, tisra hoga nematodes. Cestodes, trematodes and nematodes. Cestodes, how will you remember? How will you remember is remember by a mnemonic, diet. Diet, all the diet organisms are called as cestodes. Di stands for kya? Diphilobotrium latum, which is called as fish uh, tapeworm. Next, E stands for Echinococcus granulosus, called as dog tapeworm. Okay, T stands for Tinea solium and Hi stands for Hymenolepsis nana. Clear all of you? What is the infective form, diagnostic form? This is the thing they will ask you. Bas ye cheese se yaad rakho, there is no mnemonic. Here we have got Pleurosarcoid larva. Pleurosarcoid larva. Here the diagnostic form is egg. The same diagnostic form he will be here. Egg. And this is what? Protoscolysis. Protoscolysis. Okay. Coming to tinea solium and tinea sejanata. I have differentiated both of them. Tension matlo. Tinea solium, you will have cysticercus larva. That is called as cysticercus cellulose cysticercus cellulose now when it comes to the diagnostic form over here when it comes to the diagnostic form over here diagnostic form ye hoga diagnostic form is egg in case of intestinal teniasis intestinal teniasis two types of teniasis hai na Intestinal teniasis, another one is cysticercosis. In case of cysticercosis, in case of cysticercosis, it is CC. CC matlab cysticercus cellulose. 
सो वॉट इज अ डायग्नोस्टिक फॉर्म इन केस ऑफ टीनिया सोलियम एक डायग्नोस्टिक फॉर्म होगा एग वेन द डायग्नोस्टिक फॉर्म इज एग वेन देर इज इंटेस्टाइनल टीनियासिस If it will cause cysticercosis, then the diagnostic form is called as cysticerca cellulosic. When it comes to the tinea segenata, within tinea segenata, you have got cysticercus bovis. Cysticercus bovis, or yah pe simply egg. And finally, hymenolepsis nana, egg and egg. Egg, egg. Okay. You just need to remember these things. So that will cover up. the different types here diphyllobothrium latum echinococcus granulosus instead of studying it separately ek box mein pad liya to thoda easy hoga now coming to uh, trematodes what are trematodes how do you remember these trematodes remember it as fast para commando para commandos are very fast right fast f a s t ye dekho f a f a instead of s t put it as s c फास्ट पैरा कमेंडो पैरा इन द सेंस पैरागोनमस वेस्टर मानी पैरागोनमस वेस्टर मानी अभी ये थोड़ा इजी है दिस इज लिटिल बिट इजी ओवर हियर यू नीड टू रिमेंबर सर्केरिया सर्केरिया का अपग्रेडेड वर्जन है मेटा सर्केरिया ओके सो यू नीड टू रिमेंबर सर्केरिए लार्वा सर्केरिया का अपग्रेडेड वर्जन क्या है मेटा सर्केरिया मेटा सर्केरिया In the same way, if I tell non-operculated eggs, non-operculated eggs, operculated eggs मतलब guys, अभी ये अंडा है ना? On the top there is a lid like this, है ना? When you open that lid, that is called operculum. ठीक है? Non-operculated eggs. Opposite क्या होगा non-operculated eggs का? What will be the opposite? You will have operculated eggs. Operculated X, right? So non-operculated X का opposite है operculated X. So I don't think so. This is very difficult for you to remember. Clear all of you? Right. Third important thing is nematode. Okay. So how do you remember the nematodes? Remember it as taste G D H F. So here T stands for trichuris, A stands for ascaries lumbricoids, S stands for strongyloids. T stands for again Trichinella spiralis. E stands for Entrobius. So taste हो गया. Taste what? DHF. D stands for Dracunculus. H stands for Hookworm and Filarial nematodes. Okay. Now if you look here, these are the infective forms and diagnostic forms. इसमें कुछ explain करने के लिए नहीं है. However, I will send you the PDF है ना ताकि from this PDF just रख लो. ठीक है? Whatever it is uh, needed, I am going to tell you. But यहाँ पे क्या बोलूँ मैं? There is nothing. You just need to know infective form, embryonated egg. Here, here, unembryonated egg. That's what I will say. So that is the only thing which you need to know. So coming to this part. Now this is very interesting part. First important thing is that Trichomonas vaginalis, Acanthamoeba, Nagularia, Favularia. Right. Now in this, what is the infective and diagnostic form? First of all, you have to remember that this is a tan organisms. Tan organisms means T A N. so the infective form here is trophozoites what is the infective form trophozoites okay so trophozoites are the infective form now look here the same trophozoites will also be the diagnostic form here okay the same trophozoites will also be the infective form to the next one the same trophozoites will also be the diagnostic form to the next one The same trophozoites will again be the infective and the diagnostic form, but difference क्या है इसमें? Difference only one difference you see here. Difference is that these are the trophozoites which you not find in the blood, rather you find in the CSF. Here also these are the trophozoites which you find in the CSF. बस ये याद रखना है इसमें. This is of you remember. बाकी सब trophozoite, trophozoite होते हैं. Okay, done. After this, three important thing. What are these three important things? All of you are understanding, guys. Thirty-nine students are with me, right? One and one. One very important thing I want to tell you is that Happy Christmas. है ना सबसे पहले मैंने विश किया याद रख लो Happy Christmas to all of you. ठीक है? बोलो Happy Christmas. Thank you. बोलो.
थैंक यू सो मच चलो विशेष हो गया अभी चलो बाकी वापस लेट एस कम बैक सो नेक्स्ट इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग नेक्स्ट इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग ओवर हियर विच यू सी इज फॉर एग्जाम्पल किड्स है ना गर्ल्स फॉर एग्जाम्पल दे आज देयर पपास फॉर ए साइकिल है ना वेन देर किड्स दे आज देर पपास फॉर ए साइकिल सो इफ यू हैवेंट गिवन ए साइकिल टू देम देन वॉट दे विल डू दे विल क्राई इस नो सो दे विल बेसिकली क्राई Why is she crying? She is crying because you haven't provided her cycle. Is in the sense isospora. Crying in the sense cryptospora. Why? Because of cycle in the sense cyclospora. Okay? Isospora, cryptosporidium, cyclospora. These three organisms. ऐसे याद रखो. ठीक है? So let us see what is the infective form. What is the diagnostic form? Infective form and diagnostic form over here. Okay? so all of you what is the infective forms and diagnostic forms over here ye dekho sporulated oocyst sporulated oocyst this is the infective form guys infective form matlab jo in anything which is entering into my body that is infective form diagnostic matlab jo blood mein uh, in the in the blood whatever you see in the stool sample whatever you see in the urine sample whatever you see और वो देख के यू विल टेल दैट पेशेंट इज हैविंग सो एंड सो डिसीज दैट इज डायग्नोस्टिक फॉर्म ठीक है सो व्हाट इज द डायग्नोस्टिक फॉर्म इन केस ऑफ क्रिप्टोस्पोरिडियम सेम स्पोरुलेटेड ओसिस्ट व्हाट इज द डायग्नोस्टिक फॉर्म इन्फेक्टिव फॉर्म इन केस ऑफ साइक्लोस्पोरा स्पोरुलेटेड ओसिस्ट व्हाट इज द इन्फेक्टिव फॉर्म इन केस ऑफ आइसोस्पोरा स्पोरुलेटेड ओसिस्ट व्हाट इज द डायग्नोस्टिक फॉर्म इन केस ऑफ साइक्लोस्पोरा एंड आइसोस्पोरा स्पोरुलेटेड का ऑपोजिट क्या होगा अनस्पोरुलेटेड सो अनस्पोरुलेटेड ओसिस्ट अनस्पोरुलेटेड ओसिस्ट और नीचे भी क्या होगा अनस्पोरुलेटेड ओसिस्ट बस ये याद रखो ठीक है अनस्पोरुलेटेड ओसिस्ट नेक्स्ट वी हैव गॉट टू इंपॉर्टेंट टाइप्स ऑफ ट्रिपेनाजोमा एक है क्रूजी एक है ब्रूजी ठीक है सो so, क्रूजी क्या होता है ब्रूजी क्या होता है दीज आर द टू डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ फ्लैजलेट्स दैट इज अ ट्रिपेनोजोमा सो वेरी गुड स्लीपिंग सिकनेस वी विल टॉक अबाउट इट ट्रिपेनोजोमा क्रूजी व्हाट इज द इन्फेक्टिव फॉर्म एंड व्हाट इज द डायग्नोस्टिक इन्फेक्टिव फॉर्म इज मेटासाइक्लिक ट्रिपोमैस्टिगोट वॉट इज दिस मेटासाइक्लिक ट्रिपोमैस्टिगोट The same metacyclic tripomastigot will be here. ठीक है मेटासाइक्लिक ट्रिपोमैस्टिकोट का पुराना वर्जन क्या है ट्रिपोमैस्टिकोट द ट्रिपोमैस्टिकोट विल बी द डायग्नोस्टिक फॉर्म और यहां पर भी द ट्रिपोमैस्टिकोट विल बी द डायग्नोस्टिक फॉर्म इजी पीजी ऑल ऑफ यू अंडरस्टूड क्लियर एवरी वन राइट नाउ अगर पैरासाइटोलॉजी से इमेज बेस्ड क्वेश्चन आया इफ द इमेज बेस्ड क्वेश्चन आर आज डेफिनेटली दे विल आस्क यू वन क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम द एग्स हाउ डू यू रिमेंबर दीज एग्स ठीक है कीप दिस थिंग इन माइंड देर इज एन ऑर्गेनिज्म देर इज अ पैरासाइट बाय नेम शिस्टोसोमा हेमाटोबियम हेमाटोबियम में फर्स्ट टू लेटर्स क्या है एच ए एच ए टी टी मतलब क्या एच ए टी मतलब क्या हैट इन हैट एच ए इज हेमेटोबियम टी स्टैंड फॉर टर्मिनल स्पाइन यहां पर देखो स्पाइन कहां पर है स्पाइन इज टू वन एंड और नो सो दैट इज कॉल्ड एज टर्मिनल स्पाइन दैट इज कॉल्ड एज टर्मिनल स्पाइन सो वे डू यू सी टर्मिनल स्पाइन हिस्टोजोमा हेमेटोबियम ओके नेक्स्ट इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग मैं शोनी एम ए एल ए एम ए एल ए माला इन रशियन यू कॉल माला मतलब छोटा स्मॉल इन रशियन यू कॉल माला एज स्मॉल सो मा स्टैंड फॉर मैंसोनी ला स्टैंड फॉर लैटरल ला स्टैंड फॉर लैटरल लैटरल स्पाइन सो यू सी ए लैटरल स्पाइन इन अगर एग्जाम में ऐसे लैटरल स्पाइन का क्वेश्चन आया वॉट विल यू पुट यू विल पुट इट एज हिस्टोजोमा मैंसोनी इन द सेम वे इन द सेम वे देर इज अ गाय बाई नेम जैक जैक जे ये क्या होता है जे इज जेपोनिकम शिस्टोजोमा जेपोनिकम एंड के K K K K K K K K K K K K K K K K K K K K K K K K K K K K K K K K K K K K K K K K K K K K K K K K K K K K K K K K K K K K K K K K K K K K K K K K K K K K K K K K K K K K K K K K K K K K K K K K K K K K
कैन यू सी ए स्मॉल नॉब ओवर हियर कैन यू सी ए स्मॉल नॉब है ना सो इफ यू सी ए नॉब दैट इज जेपोनिकम ऐसे याद रखो ठीक है नेक्स्ट फाइनली वी हैव गॉड ट्रिचुरिस ट्रिचुरिया कितने बार ये रिपीट हुआ हाउ मेनी टाइम्स डिड दिस वर्ड रिपीटेड ट्रिचुरिस ट्रिचुरिया ट्रिचु ट्रिचु टू टाइम्स एक ट्रिचु होगा सामने एक ट्रिचु होगा पीछे सो बैरल शेप स्ट्रक्चर म्यूकस प्लग ऑन बोथ द साइड वन ऑन द फ्रंट वन ऑन द बैक सो रिमेंबर लाइक दैट इफ यू सी दिस देन इट इज ट्रिचुरिस ट्रिचुरिया क्लियर ऑल ऑफ यू राइट सो एग्स दैट फ्लोट इन सॉल्ट सोल्यूशन यहां से क्वेश्चन आया था लास्ट टाइम वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग यू नीड टू रिमेंबर वॉट आर द एग्स दैट फ्लोट इन सॉल्ट सोल्यूशन Which eggs float in salt solution? Eggs, fertilized eggs of Ascaris lumbricoides, Ensilostoma duodenale, which will reside in the duodenum, Trichuris trichura. Just now we discussed barrel shaped structure, Hymenolepsis nana, Enterobius vermicularis, and Necator americanus. These are the structures. So, कैसे याद रखना है? Remember it as father. ये देखो, first letter देखो सबका. F A T H E R. Okay. So father. Father is a mnemonic for the eggs that float in the salt solution. Clear all of you? Now three more pages left. We are discussing about tinea solium, tinea segenata. Kya questions aayenge yahan se? Tinea solium, tinea solium is called tinea solium is called as very good. Uh, Lydia has given another mnemonic, the fan. okay you can also write it as the fan i think okay tinea solium is called as pork tapeworm pork tapeworm pork khane se ye aayega agar beef khane se jo aaye what is that is called as tinea segenata that is called as beef tapeworm beef tapeworm definitive host kya hai definitive host always human hi hoga at the end isko lagega human ko hi lagega ह्यूमन इज अ डेफिनेटिव होस्ट इंटरमीडिएट होस्ट क्या है यहां पे विच वट आर द थिंग दैट यू आर ईटिंग पिग इज अ इंटरमीडिएट होस्ट हियर काउ इज अ इंटरमीडिएट होस्ट वॉट आर द डिसीज दैट आर कॉज बाई टीनिया टीनिया कॉजेस टीनिया कॉजेस टू इंपॉर्टेंट डिसीजेस आइदर यू कॉल इट एज अ टीनियासिस और यू कैन कॉल इट एज सिस्टी सर्कोसिस सिस्टी सर्कोसिस तभी आई वॉज टेलिंग यू सिस्टी सर्कस लार्वा यू रिमेंबर right so here it causes teniasis only teniasis only how is it transmitted undercooked undercooked pork aur yahan pe how it is transmitted undercooked beef undercooked beef theek hai what are the questions that are asked what are the questions that are asked is that if you look at this particular picture over here what is the first thing that is coming into your mind ये टीनिया सोलियम का स्कोलेक्स है इसको बोलते हैं स्कोलेक्स द हेड पार्ट इज कॉल्ड स्कोलेक्स दिस इज लाइक ए क्वाड्रेट शेप और लाइक ए ग्लोबलार शेप ये है ग्लोबलार शेप ग्लोबलार शेप एंड व्हाट अबाउट टीनिया सेजेनाटा इट इज क्वाड्रेट शेप क्वाड्रेट शेप ठीक है और इसके ऊपर डू यू सी दम स्मॉल हेयर्स लाइक आईब्रो लाइक हेयर्स दीज आर कॉल्ड एज हुक्स सो हुक्स आर प्रेजेंट ओवर हियर Here hooks are absent. Hooks are absent. Okay. When you go down to the body, that body is called as proglottid. Okay. ये pro ये देखो ये proglottid है. In this proglottid, you see some structures laterally, right? So these structures over here are called as lateral branches. How many lateral branches are here? Five to thirteen lateral branches are here. Five to thirteen lateral branches. And यहाँ पे फाइव के सामने एड वन राइट इन फ्रंट ऑफ फाइव एड वन लेटर दैट इज फिफ्टीन राइट आफ्टर आफ्टर थ्री पुट जीरो दैट विल बी थर्टी सो फिफ्टीन टू थर्टी हियर क्लियर ऑल ऑफ यू दिस इज एन अदर इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग कमिंग टू द स्किन टेस्ट गाइस कमिंग टू द स्किन टेस्ट इन दिस यू ऑलरेडी लर्न द स्किन टेस्ट प्रीवियसली when i was teaching you syphilis when i was teaching you uh, all these things there also i have already talked lepromin test jo hai for leprosy we use right and for tb what is the test you use what is the skin test you use for tb batao jaldi tb 
टीबी के लिए एक फेमस स्किन टेस्ट है ना वॉट इज दैट वेरी गुड शराद दैट इज ट्यूबर क्यूलिन टेस्ट ओके दैट इज ट्यूबर क्यूलिन टेस्ट Now, Kesonis test. Where do we use Kesonis test? We, it is a skin test we do for hydatid disease. It is a skin test we do for hydatid disease. Sir, कैसे याद रखना है? How will you remember this is? You casually say hi to someone. You casually say hi to someone. Casually क्या होता है? Kesoni. Hi क्या होता है? Hydatid disease. Next, Backman's test. Backman is B A T bat. B A is Backman's test. T stands for T stands for trichinellosis. Trichinellosis or trichinellosis, however you spell it. Okay. Next important thing is Fairley's test. Fairley's test is FOSH. F A S C H. FOSH. F A is a uh, Fairley test. S C H is Schistosomiasis. You know, cystosoma mansoni, cystosoma hematobium. Yaad hai na? Terminal spine, ek hai lateral spine. Next, we come across Frenkel test. Okay? Remember it as Frento. FRE is Frenkel. To is Toxoplasmosis. Toxoplasmosis. Okay? Now, if anyone is black, you call them as Kale. Right? Ka matlab Kalazar. Kalazar. And le matlab leishmania. Kalazar and le stands for leishmania. Le stands for leishmania. Clear all of you guys? Right? So, uh, these are the maximum uh, things which I could discuss from the microbiology point of view. Baki, baki jitne bhi topics hai, right? जितने भी टॉपिक्स मतलब द इन्फेक्टिव होस्ट हो गया द डेफिनेटिव होस्ट इंटरमीडिएट होस्ट वॉट एवर इट इज और रिगार्डिंग द रिसेप्टर्स एंड और वॉट एवर वॉट एवर आई फील दैट इज इम्पॉर्टेंट राइट आई होप ऑल ऑफ यू आर इन द टेलीग्राम ग्रुप ओके सो वॉट एवर इज इम्पॉर्टेंट वॉट आई विल बी डूइंग इज दैट आई विल मेक ए शीट ठीक है जैसे आई विल मेक ए शीट लाइक दिस ये देखो आई विल मेक ए शीट लाइक दिस और आई विल मेक ए शीट इन दिस वे डिस्कसिंग ओनली द एक्स डिस्कसिंग ओनली द इन्फेक्टिव फॉर्म्स एंड डायग्नोस्टिक फॉर्म्स and then i will put the notes regularly whatever i feel that is important for microbiology okay so this is all the maximum things which we could discuss uh, over here okay so if we keep on discussing the list keeps on going 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 it is just a brain fatigue which you have so ye pura memory part hai i hope you understood the difference bacteriology mein kitna conceptual part tha and this is all memory part so so whatever the things are notes mostly tomorrow right um in the office i will edit these notes i will tell them to edit the notes my team and then i will send these uh, notes to you agar nahi kal nahi hua to parso pakka i will send the notes and in the notes also i will put some extra information okay regarding the parasitology ho gaya regarding types of hypersensitivity which you already have studied in pathology and all but still i will put some extra information and then i will send you the notes completely okay so guys honestly tell me all of you understood all of you understood was it easy was it easy a little bit i know it is difficult but all the things you have understood or not just let me know before we straight away go and jump on the bed right so again and again i'm telling you guys the only thing which you need to remember is that concentrate on four subjects ak obgy surgery medicine and psm maximum questions will come from that if you are 80% confident in these three in these four subjects 100% right now i'm telling you you will pass the exam theek hai aisa nahi hai ki anatomy chhod do micro chhod do no i'm not telling you to leave all this chote chote cheeze what small things whatever are there you study them also but again every day one hour in the night purely dedicate for images only one hour images perfectly okay right so thank you so much thank you so much for all of you guys uh, thank you so much for attending the session and uh, goodbye take care happy christmas and love you all